Well, John, the stakes tonight are higher than they've ever been in the Collegiate Championship circuit. We've got the matchup, the rematch of Collegiate R6. We just saw this past week tonight Converse have an opportunity to reset the expectations going into the UCC. And on the other side, Akron looking to prove their consistency, looking to prove that they are that fearsome roster we once known them as. Yeah, this is going to be probably one of the more, I would say, probably the more exciting matches we've had in quite some time recent. Like you had mentioned, both these two teams, Akron and Converse, they have played against one another in the past. And for at least one of these two teams, that being Converse, they looked a little upsetting. We know they could be a powerhouse team. They almost had the three-peat success in all of Season 7. But at the final moment, at the finish line, they got beat by Akron. And now they are looking like a brand new dynasty here in the collegiate scene. Yeah, and I think a lot of us are asking, are Converse going to trip up again tonight? Are they going to make it two losses in a row? Coming out of CR6 for Season 7, their run in Stage 3 was almost flawless. All they had to do was win the very last match. They couldn't. They choked, and Akron dispatched them there. And so the question becomes, does it happen again tonight? Things are relatively the same. We're kind of playing on an even playing field tonight. The map bands are the very same. The rosters are going to be sort of similar, but now you have a question that comes in, John. We had Fozo playing for Akron in Collegiate R6. He will be replaced by Arv tonight, and we've been going back and forth on this subject the whole time. How does the roster look with Arv? What are the main differences that we compare and contrast? Because if Akron can play consistently with a substitute when they're playing with Arv, there should be no trouble. I wouldn't say so, especially considering Fozo's more or less that sub because he hasn't had a lot of time to play with Akron. So it's going to be more or less comfort, I feel, for Akron. If they can play to their strengths, be in a very stable position most of the night, they should be fine to beat Converse for a second time. But you talked about the rosters, talked about Matt Benz. Let's bring up Akron's roster here for a couple moments just to go and see uh, what else they've got for the main lineup. We did talk about Arv will be that sub, essentially, but the rest is still the same. I, Matt, Jetcon, Hennessy, Jobu, all people we have come to know and love in this collegiate scene. Yeah, this Akron roster has got so many good components on it. Hennessy has been proving to us his value tenfold through the massive clutches that he's been rendering lately, through his consistency in the way that he plays his role. But also for Akron, it, it's not just Hennessy in the back line. It's also Jobu, one of the new players on this roster, who has been filling out that support starting position and has been accomplishing a lot of the intangibles that I think Akron kind of were missing as they began to go on that downslope through season, season 7 of CR6, you know, the reason why people were like, man, it seems like it's been forever since Akron have managed to claim this trophy. But let's transition to the other side. Let's talk about Converse. To me, John, I think this is the most important part of tonight because it's Converse I'm looking to, to show me that, okay, the Stage 3 Finals, that was one hiccup. Maybe we weren't feeling at our best then. And I did get to talk too ice cold. He said the roster was tired. I'm not sure what they mean by tired. Maybe they were overwhelmed with schoolwork. Maybe they had tried to scrim too much and they had just run out of steam. But Converse, they've got all the right pieces they can put together. It's just about being on top of that mental game and realizing it's time to reset. Yeah, absolutely. And one person in particular, Ice Cold, he was in a very underwhelming position last time I got to see him play in a grand finals matchup. He was very much non-existent, even in comparison to Lokiro, who had constant crashes throughout the night. So there were a lot of major issues that we did see both internally and externally by Converse. And funny enough, I did see Ice Cold actually playing a bit of rank before this matchup. So hopefully he's more than warmed up to play here in this grand final race. Yeah, you would expect that, and I think we're going to get the game that delivers on what CR6's finals was supposed to be. Maybe we get a full five map, or maybe we get some overtimes thrust into this one as well. But finally, we did sort of briefly touch on it. Let's take an actual full view at the map bands, give you kind of a deeper picture onto what these are going to be and how things will play out. You look first as we go kind of back and forth there. Chalet and Bank get picked. Both of these two maps have been kind of strong fundamentally for Converse, but Akron have started to sneak in and introduce their own system. The Coastline ban for Converse, it makes plenty of sense, right? That's important to talk about as well. We haven't transitioned from the old map pool. We're still working on that seven maps that we've got in comparison to the nine you see currently running in Pro League. Yeah, and for Coastline in particular, a lot of teams have just kind of upped and stopped scrimming them, so yeah. it makes sense to not have that in play. Cafe, 
I generally don't think I have seen either Akron or Converse play Cafe in either a very long time, if ever. So that's almost a confirmed ban in the best of five series. Everybody knows Oregon, hence it being that decider. And yeah, I think the only time we have seen Akron lose Villa as well, funny enough, was actually the matchup against Converse. But that ended out, I believe, seven to five, if not all the way in overtime. So it was down to the wire. And that was probably one of the only close matches we saw throughout that entire grand final race. Yeah, and the one thing we did mention, same maps, but a different order. It's a little bit swapped around. Oregon is the decider, I think, helps to make this a little easier for Converse. It's just such a good map for Akron. The way that they play on it is just demonstrably better than the Converse system, and they can kind of introduce a faster style of Siege, and that's for the defense as well as the offense. You don't think of Akron as this roster that's, you know, deploying a huge strat book, you know, no kind of NCSU level of tomfoolery with what strat are coming here or there but Akron are really flexible in their defaults and it's one of the strongest pillars of their roster yeah well I think we uh still waiting on a couple but we should be in the matchup fairly shortly heading into chalet but yeah defaults that was a big thing the core fundamentals in general for converse again that just also seemed very lacking there were some rounds of course especially on chalet i'll play devil's advocate where they did not have a full five man we had a couple of PC issues we had up in the game they had a couple of connection issues. I don't think that's going to be a ride tonight here. So we should have the full five man stacked up. But even when they had all five players, they were still losing the entry. A lot of instant 5v3 situations. They had problems with the roam clear. Their general coordination and communication just seemed off. And you talked about the fact that they were a little bit tired, perhaps. That could have been the main reason for it. So maybe today, when they're a bit more awake, a bit more lively, that could change. And we might see a very strong presence by them all the way I'm at number one. I'm really looking forward to this and the fact that Converse are not going to be sort of bogged down by all those disconnections. It was hard to watch. It's really, it's not a fun thing to see a roster get plagued by issues that they have no control over at all. Like disconnections, power turning off, all of that stuff. We get a real match between Akron and Converse on this chalet map to kick off the most important game of the entire circuit so far that these two rosters have played. We did sort of glance over the fact about the Unified Collegiate Championship points. It's important to talk. Both of these two rosters are already rock solid. They're locked in, and they're going to be in that competition. You're going to look to them as one of the two key rosters that kind of sets the pace. Another interesting element about the UCC, John, is we potentially got rosters coming in from the junior college scene as well, which isn't something that we've really seen, kind of that intramural clash of the college university teams versus the JUCO rosters. Well, now taking a look at the operator bands we just saw a moment ago, Zero, Thatcher, Valkyrie, and Wamai here for map number one. Now, all of these bands, but the Zero, seem pretty default. And the one specific point to make about the Zero is more or less kind of a target ban, especially for Avian. He loves to bring up the Zero, especially on this map of Chalet. So not having him in the board, it could definitely change the dynamic of how exactly Converse are going to be playing. But funny enough, I think the Zero was actually banned as well in their previous best of five when both these two teams played on chalet so we should have avian be a bit more reliable on this nomad pick probably anticipating the fact that zero will be banned tonight yeah that is something you have to be ready for it's a big way that akron have kind of tried to handicap converse and in the chalet match they played last time not having the zero did have some evidence it, it did have some evidential impact you could look to converse kind of let down their flank watch a couple of times and they didn't have the proper drones in position sometimes that would come down to them running into things like the mozzie and the mute they would get all their drones wasted early and then when they would try to execute of course imat would come and shoot them in the back whether he's playing on the mozzie whether he's playing on somebody like the oryx or the vigil imat will come for you well, starting out here for round number one, we've got Converse going for a pretty direct take. A lot of teams nowadays actually want to start out over on the library balcony to immediately remove that instant presence. A lot of teams will like to have somebody stacked up inside a library. R will be that person on the mute here with the MP5K. He'll have to immediately drop down. That's a bit of map control already granted here for Converse. They still need to worry about the pressure at the top of blue stairs and also someone near Mezzanine, that being both Jack Con and Hennessy. But now that no one's directly challenged them inside a library, they can get this hard destruction down on the back mezzanine wall once that jammer gets destroyed and that leaves only one person left on this top floor to remove and that of course is the jaeger stacked up near the top of blue 
There's your ex-Kairos. It'll be the job of the Jaeger to go and shoot these out, and he does it so easily. Oh, but Hennessy had walked into library, takes a battle with Lokirio. No remaining hard breach. Habana, the first casualty of the best of five. And this one not going so hot for CV as they continue to waste utility, waste time, and now dropping even more bodies. You still got these two players left up top, and so I kind of wonder, maybe it's going to be ice cold on the sledge. We've seen sort of on that far balcony. If he can do something, maybe the roster will be able to recover because from CV right now, the top take has been ineffectual, and they're going to need to call a rotate. Um, what? Thunder was just looking at this person's Thunder. legs. Uh, that's Arv, my friend. <laughs> will he recheck? He sees him again, and there it is. Oh Arv gosh. out in the open. There's the trade for Thunder, at least. The case fully recovered by BDA as well, up near that library balcony. And I believe the hop-in is now going to be confirmed sooner rather than later, out by the Finca. Hennessy still here, though. Almost oh. wins the fight against BDA, but the Ayana will outduel them, now putting us in a four versus three, a minute left to go. Somehow CV has sort of made this look a little bit more possible, but I'm at hopes to shut things down in his own special way as he's removed the IGL and the Finca. Vertical pressure coming in from Converse, seeing if they might be able to just force the rest of the defense back into a few distinct nooks and crannies. You got Mozzie just kind of playing inside the bar. Avian creeping down from main. Mozzie forced to rotate as the nook begins to take more and more damage in time, running rather slim here. Converse hoping they can pursue the last of the vertical. They need to realize the defense is playing entirely from safe positions, and they're just going to have to hit the site and try to go quick here. I'm at beginning to flank up the blue stairs. Could be what saves them ultimately. But the shield prevents them from advancing any further. A C4 up top. It's set. No damage done. Converse are still just sort of waiting for something to open up, and with 12 seconds to go, they realize, guys, we need to hit the site. Jobu out of toxic gas, but we're into red time. Ice Cold claims the first pick. It's a crucial one on the entrance here. No C4 from IMAT to deny things. Jaeger rotates down the hall. He's caught by IMAT, and BDA, no! He can't complete the plant in time. IMAT through the rotate will save things for the defense. And... Barely able to scrape that round away still for Akron, but they just played much better in comparison to conference. We did see adaptation, though, by the offense. They didn't want to completely set themselves up on that top floor. After the clear leading through library was not successful, they only had BDA try to creep his way up near that top floor. Everyone else began to move their way downward and start applying pressure more horizontally, which for a moment did seem favorable, but just having to worry about so many different angles with such little time, it deemed too much to handle for Converse, and they managed to let IMAT slip through their fingertips. He stopped the plant from happening and still gave the round, favoring the defense. That one was really close, and I imagine you're going to get a lot of rounds that are very similar to that. IMAT has this crazy late round presence that he's able to sort of summon up a big wave of energy to stop whatever you might have planned there. And CV, you just sort of see the, uh, the punishment for them wasting too much time for them being kind of slow converse eventually they run out of resources and when you got that bomb down you're typing away there's nothing else you know that you care about in the world than completing that plant and i might just rip that right away from the offense so we'll go over to office and master now we'll see if converse are again going to struggle in the early round and then be forced to call into what was kind of a lackluster rotation I'm at here with the power play of the Oryx. It was an operator that was very challenging for Converse to actually deal with a lot of the time. And hopefully this time around, it could potentially be fixed. But we are having some slight issues, I believe, on our side here. So I think we will have to uh, just sit here on the cams for a little while. Uh, but that's okay. Wouldn't be the first time, I suppose. Yeah, we get to discuss more in depth <laughs> round number one. And we're uh, back in the booth to discuss things a little bit further I feel like round number one, I, I like the converse almost made it happen, but I'm just worried that this IMAT, you know, problem of him just being able to walk around, you know, he's going up the stairs, he's going down the stairs, he's going through the halls, through the rotates, is there somebody that's going to stop him? Because if you don't, if you continue to let him run amok, I mean, it, it's just going to be living in IMAT's world. 
And especially in terms of the normal roam clear that is sometimes just not accomplished by Converse. One person to note a lot was Avian. You know, their last matchup they played against Akron, he wasn't doing that good of a job on Lion, not only for having a lack of usage on his primary, but also secondary gadgetry as well. Never really popped a lot of his flashbangs, would wait until the very last moment to start popping out those e E1Ds, and it just didn't accomplish a lot in terms of general reconnaissance work. If we maybe had Avian be a bit more aggressive with that Utah, we saw him on the nook so he was trying to maybe go for more gunfights have that kind of upper hand in terms of the the sneak attack i suppose but he wasn't very proactive at all in round number one as well so i'm seeing that more of as a recurring pattern that we might have tonight but hopefully i will be uh, proven wrong and we can have converse begin to uh, slowly remedy the issues we saw from them last time yeah, i almost wonder if it would maybe be worth just taking the lion out and replacing him with someone else maybe you bring in Capital, or I don't know, you've got Especially Nomad no available mind. here. You know, bring something else because it just seems like the Lion has not really done enough. The way that the defense is played is really strong. Fundamentally, got a lot of crossfires, got a lot of deployable shields. You're not going to be able to move past. And if the Lion isn't helping you enough, I get that he's got burnt and he's got a gone six, which makes him a great operator, right? But there are plenty others who can fit that same category. Yeah, I think funny enough, uh, well, with Zero being banned, we cannot discuss him, unfortunately. But like you mentioned, yeah, plenty of other ops that you can select through. And we're just jumping right back into the middle of the round. There are only 20 seconds left, apparently, Reese. It's a three versus three, and Converse are still struggling to hop in through the office breach. They had somebody on main balcony. I believe that to be BDA. But yeah, still no headway here Ooh. in this round. Great nade by BDA to at least equalize, but still only 10 seconds left to go. Now that nade will hope to relieve some pressure, but the situation's still rather rough. BDA comes in for a third. They've isolated I'm at. The Yana might have the angle here. They're not going to plant. They're going to force the gunfight. And Avian will win it out with the pistol. A surprise jump into the back end of this office attack, but one in which Converse persevere despite a fouled breach and not many strong defending positions that they had to overcome. Well, at least we saw a lot of great isolation there in the final 20 seconds. Although the range was a bit of a problem for Converse, they just kind of ignored it and they went for more of the close quarter engagements. They started flashing out and nading out the person, I believe, inside a piano. They got that one for one. Things were equalized two versus two. And they still were able to hop into the site, attempt that plan, or at least if they wanted to, they could have went for the plant and just realized it probably wouldn't be a good position to have just one person being avian, that one versus two having to hold off, but only a couple seconds up to spare they got aggressive they won those gunfights so they are at least able to equalize and now the question might lie in potentially for a pause as we might be having some technical issues arise once again sadly yeah I'm, I'm not sure i think one of the players is the person pausing the game so hopefully they'll let us continue on with the match <laughs> and uh Things not looking the best in the world for akron on the top floor obviously we didn't get the full context of that round and uh we should be getting back into things. It looks like we're going to continue on. We're going to go next to master bedroom and office. We'll repeat the top floor site, and we'll see how it goes again. You notice the lion. He's still being brought here. Oh, never mind. He's not. He's actually been replaced on the converse side. I tripped up by the Finca. So we've got the rotation, and we're not running that same operator. I guess your prayers are answered, John. Thankfully so. Not too sure if the airdrops were required last round, which is maybe why Avian had him in his uh, had them in his back pocket, perhaps. Uh, but I guess we'll never know since we didn't get to see much of that round. What I do want to mention, though, is the lack of anything being done by IMAT, funny enough, on round number two. He had three kills in the first round, came in through round two, absolutely nothing. So maybe here on this Rome game, once again, with the Oryx having a repeat now of Master Bedroom, we could see that change, especially since we didn't see Avian popping any of his air jabs, which, again, could maybe allow for a flank to happen later on, especially if Converse don't have any drones or, again, those Nomad gadgets to actually stop him from going on that flank. You know, if Converse continue to shut down IMAT early, they're not going to have to worry about him stopping plants or flanking or shooting utility in the late round. And that could be a great way to kind of inject some new form to the rhythm. Try to isolate him, try to shut him down early, make sure that we're on top of the entries rather than sort of letting things develop, which you could say that's part of Converse's play style. They also are an aggressive team. They know that if something needs to be done, they've got the talent in order to make it happen. And seeing the strategy, they should realize what's happening below. All the defense not stocked up just for the top floor. Playing some of that vertical extension below, and chiefly, it's going to be IMAT down there. 
Well, having the Nomad, at least, and Avian hopping them out can make sure no one's going to go on that run out, especially leading in from someone from Big Garage, and Thunder still on top of the roof is going to get that opening duel as a win against JetCon. They'll care now going for the hop-up to start out with the hard breach, but it's actually not required. The wall is soft. They could potentially enter in the site much earlier than expected. Avian still that cutoff now puts us in the 5v3, and Converse are just exclu or exuding out a bunch of aggression, pardon, and it's just it's working off brilliantly for them. Yeah, they've just sort of played their own game so far this round. Locurio moving in for the bomb plant. Arv has been downed in piano, executed by Thunder. Hennessy will try for a C4 toss. It's unfortunately too late and off the position. And so the Cade now in a one versus five is rotate back being covered. He finds the first, but not the second. Converse picking up two in a row, already showing us that they can be that dominant team with some authority here on the attacking side of Chalet. And having the, I suppose, the, the hindsight slash foresight there for Converse, both, I would assume, knowing how exactly Akron are going to want to defend on that site. They just played it a moment ago. They played it a few days ago as well against Akron. They know there's going to be some sort of roam game, that default extension in play as well. So they can kind of stack bodies at the problem here and simply win because of that. They just had the standard angles of Thunder watching all the way down from the roof leading into both the bathroom window and the piano window as well to get that first kill. And we just had a bunch of pressure applied by Converse immediately after that. They had the default angle, someone watching trophy room to make sure nobody could flank. That was the Twitch doing so. And also Avian on the master window too. I mean, everything was just guarded so well by Converse. It was only a matter of time before they hit the site and just went for that plant raise. It'd be a little worrying for Akron if they're losing those fights early and if they're not trading them most importantly. We know that the top floor for them on this objective is such a comfortable spot. The chemistry they have in this extended hold is unlike anything other. And Converse have kind of done the same thing each time that I've seen them try to attack this. They'll just have Locurio shoot the X-Kairos at the wall and then the player top blue will shoot it. And then it's just like, like, why shoot it there in the first place when you know that it's going to get, it's going to get killed by the player top blue. I mean, maybe if you had somebody trying to peek while he was doing that, like simultaneously apply pressure from piano. But I think it is a little fruitless for Locurio to send that utility when you know that it's going to get shot. Well, one thing I'm hoping here for Converse is their adaptation. We have seen them change a couple of subjects here when they go in for the attack a few times beforehand. So maybe this time they will have somebody on the West Main balcony able to start burning through utility, forcing away the Jaeger. Oof. That way he can't get aggressive, break those Skyros charges. And once they detonate, that removes the person potentially from mezzanine. And by then you'd probably have all removed from library as well. So that could be almost the entire top floor cleared out in a very timely manner, but still needing to worry about Arv. A lot of seconds will be consumed, but only the first minute. Nothing to harp about just yet, but eventually they got to deal with this mute. I think what's more sizable here is the wasted utility. Arv, oh no, caught with the nade before he could fall down the hatch. He did waste a considerable amount of utility, but ultimately fails to escape with his life. So I suppose it's up to you, the viewer, to decide who comes out ahead in the utility arms race. CV now having gotten the entry pick, things look much better for them this time. They'll go ahead and send in the X Kairos. We've been through this before. The Jaeger shoots it every time, and it should really be no trouble at all. I don't know if Jetcon actually got the bottom few. He won't need to. The Mute Jammer is still up. I don't know why that hasn't been cleared by Converse. Eventually, they're going to realize, hey, guys, we've got this utility here. Instead of clearing the utility, we're just going to have BDA run in and try to shoot the player. Well, C4 gets ripped by IMAT, not going to connect on a BDA. He will still remain in library, relatively comfortable position, until we see a crossfire potentially being attempted. No intel being gathered because of the mute jammer denying that Gemini. So, still the five versus four, but for the most part, Converse are kind of at a standstill. They need to force Akron out of these comfort zones, but right now they're not in the position to really do so besides maybe BDA. When you don't have those resources, sometimes things do kind of go a little bit pear-shaped. Hennessy still waiting in this very same position he's held for the majority of the round, Ice Cold trying to see if he can get that pincer angle. Thunder is going to be the X Factor here, has the nade, unfortunately captured by an ADS. So what better to do than just simply hop on in, blasted out by the Jaeger, now quickly stimmed back up by the Adrenal Surge. Jetcon is forced to fall off of this. CV may have just fought their way into control of the top floor. They only have 30 seconds to come to terms with the Execute, though. 
Well, Jobu still having a toxic smoke that could be big depending on his position. Avian just watching the blue stairs on pushing from that direction. So we can just have this cutoff established, essentially putting us in a four versus two. IMAC gets a big one, but the smoke now falls. They can go for the plant. Jetcon is able to secure one onto Avian. He can now get aggressive, but Ice Cold and BDA clean things up. They get the final two kills of the round and Converse take a third on their attack. TV look really impressive to start us out here in the grand finals. They have got some serious energy. There, no more is the tired converse that happened in the Collegiate R6 finals versus Akron. This is a fully energized and powered up team who is really performing at their best. And, and the energy shows to you the most in the rotation in some of the calls there. The think of Mr. Nade. It got captured by the ADS. Boo hoo. You're not going to have time to fix that. You're just going to have to say, I'm jumping in. I'm going to get this kill. I'm going to make the situation right. And Converse really did that. Their power in late 30, 40, 20 second executes will be so important on this map, on Bank, on Villa. All the maps that we've got in the lineup tonight, if you can execute in low time environments, when you've set yourself up well, when you've got entry picks that haven't been traded, CV are going to be profitable. The last second playmaking has been big. Already a good chunk of rounds have come down to those final 30 to 20 seconds, yet we still have Converse actually prevail. But one site we haven't seen in play just yet has been Dining Room and Kitchen. And this one tends to be a bit of a, uh, I would say a slippery slope here for Converse, especially again, if IMAT is able to either self-enable himself or be enabled by the rest of his utils stacked up on the top floor. If he can just continue to run around, find those isolated kills, able to shut down people as important as that hard reach like Lokiro because he's the only one who can actually open up that back dining wall. That could be such a valuable round for Akron just to still hold on in this first half. Something's got to give for Akron right now. They haven't had as much success. Jetcon. It's not had his power in entry. Hennessy has been one of the main players that we see get involved, but other than that, at least silent on the Zips' side so far. Not something we traditionally expect from them. First is the Replicator to come on top. Converse are going to need to clear out this extension before they can move on forward. A grenade! Ooh, why, Matt? Maybe if that was cooked a mere second longer, it might have been a surefire kill against the Oryx, who now faces pressure. The pinch coming towards Piano could be sizable here. Gone six in towards deep. Doesn't look like it really did anything yet. They're going to call the rotation, have the therm go below. He can open up in the wall, but in the meanwhile, you still have quite a number of players up above. In Converse, not taking a win on the entry yet. Leaf having the twitch run of Ice Cold able to break that Electro Claw can now open up the dining wall and theoretically speaking if you have this cutoff angle established on the top floor to somebody watching through offices that could be all that you need but you have to worry about that tag team both IMAT and the Echo of Jetcom are still playing above they go for a multi swing and end up killing that only person watching the top floor then you have to re worry about the vertical and then probably reapproach the site with or not even just the site but the top floor part and with only about a minute to spare because the timer is still going down. And at the moment, with only 70 seconds left to kill, if IMAC goes big or just has backup by Jetcon, this could be all but over for Converse. I almost wonder if maybe CV might try to overpower the defense and go deep. Jobu gets rid of Ice Cold, but BDA in the same element does shut down IMAC. That was your main player inside office. A grenade, a huge one onto Jobu. Makes this a little bit more possible. The Echo rotated off. He had tried to rat over by Ivy for so long, but was entirely unsuccessful. Flashbangs begin to move forward. And this should be the signal for the Execute. Wow, what a kill for the Thermite to pick up on his way forward. And Jetcon, slow to get on the Yokais, won't be able to put them into effect. Locurio, a surefire thing, he'll get the bomb down. BDA has eliminated the Echo. And Arv tries to walk in. He's good for two. But ultimately, the Cade and the Iana will trade to finish this off here and give over another Converse attacking round. And still fantastic team play by Converse. And... Again, denying these power players that we saw really shine in their last matchup, just being almost non-existent. That was the first kill by Jobu. Instant trade somewhere across the map, basically nullifying that one thing Akron had going for them. They were managed, or they managed to get basically no headway against Converse on that top floor. They couldn't play for vertical. They couldn't find any entry kills immediately. There was just no slowing down Converse, and they really had the almost pitch-perfect lineup to stop everything, especially with that Twitch 
as well to get the wall opened up instantaneously for the rest of Converse and immediately started to apply pressure and not really have to worry about that time frame because 70 seconds and already thinking about the execute is a fantastic stat line for Converse. And the Twitch was, she was like a multi-tool, right? She did a lot of different yeah. things there for Converse, helped to unlock the site. I think another part maybe that was missing from Akron, they didn't try to impact Trick. They didn't try to, you know, stop those exothermics. It's not a hard thing to get rid of those. It's just about having the right player in the right position because as soon as that wall went down, that was just a huge point for Converse to flood through. Well, starting out here, round number six, first time... Or not the first time. I thought we had base for a second, but it might have been actually a, a different, a change of heart for Akron. They want to actually go to bar, which did favor them round number one, but that had a lot to do with Converse more or less just self-funneling. They were very tunnel visioned on only getting control of library, and, and they didn't even properly clear out that top floor altogether. They had to begrudgingly work their way down a floor lower and try to go for the site execute, but even then they didn't even have enough manpower as is. But off the bat, they're already going to have the entry. Arv is going to fall basically in the first few moments of the sixth round, and now we have BDA stepping up in a library quite early as well. This is a great change of pace for Converse. Things are moving rapidly. Grenade comes forward. This will be to clear the mute jammer. It might have actually been off target, though. We'll have to fix that throw up and go for another one. Because that Mute Jammer still stands, and it still blocks out some of the X Kairos. Converse, if they continue to play with this ferocity, Akron are going to be shut out of the game early. Not only did you lose Arv, you've also gotten rid of Imat, who has been so silent in this first half. And we have the Expire Show just finally detonating as well. Avian's out on the double doorway, too. So Ooh. once Hennessy has to fall back, if he even can be allowed to, that could oh. be all but over. Hennessy finds at least one and a second before being dropped, but still a man advantage for Converse nonetheless. Jetcom will try to reclaim this top floor, gets rid of Ice Cold. Things equalize, but still plenty of time left to adjust once again for Converse, and they'll do so once again. Thunder gets rid of Jobu, now leaving just the Jaeger, who's already tagged in a one versus two. Tricky spot for the Jaeger. So much time for Converse to think about. So much utility for them to operate with. Jaeger Z pinged out now inside the bar, making the rotation, trying to see if he might be able to pick this player in the lobby. He inches his way forward, but Converse are playing so entirely reserved. Avian steps up. He had the Z ping, but he still lost the engagement. Ice cold. Oh, wow, thunder just from the hallway through the wall, fellow. He doesn't even need to get vision because he's got the player. He's got the game sense. In Converse, a 5-1 half just looks extraordinary. In comparison to last time, too, I mean, I keep mentioning the last matchup we had, but it was literally the exact same thing we're witnessing right now, except the story that's being built up. Converse were at a tremendous deficit. I think it was 5-1 to one actually favoring Akron last time, so having a complete turnaround in the span of less than a week, that is impressive for Converse. And depending on how effective they can be on just their default site picks here of barring gaming, potentially dining room or master as well, they could end out map number one in a very quick fashion. Not sure what the uh, one, two buckle my shoe is by the Converse side, but uh, anyway, CV are onto the defense now and Akron need IMAT to step up because the rest of the roster hasn't. I'm at, I did sort of talk about this. We didn't really mention in our pregame. I touched about it when we were chilling in the green room. The fact that I'm at can kind of be an inconsistent player. And if he goes huge, he really goes huge. And you see highlights from him all across Twitter. But every once in a while, he does have that kind of stinker of a game where you don't see him very often. He had impact in what? one or two of those first rounds because he yep. had a triple kill he saved the first round and it, it's it's not great for i'm at to sit there and say you know the only round we won was because of me in the first half which is kind of it's a false way of thinking you know though every round one is a team victory unless you 1v5 ace but i'm at saved that round from what looked like an otherwise pure victory and i'm at is the first one to get started here now you've lost avian Things look pretty much like a carbon copy of how the round proceeded earlier on gaming. Being very lively, almost uh, off the rip, essentially. 
Having to worry about both the ADSs and, of course, the Surya Gates could still prolong the level push throughout the rest of the map instead of just library. We have one person a bit overextended. That's Arv as he gets down, but could be revived with relative ease unless Lokuria wants to extend himself once again to maybe find a 2k. But it's a very high risk. And, you know, worst case scenario here for Converse, they could lose Lokuria on that actual Frost play. And that could be a 5 versus 3. But no, he'll make the call to get even more aggressive. Finishes off Arv and now puts us in now oh. 4v3. He will get immediately traded out. So that position and the top of main balcony will still be held by Akron. Maybe getting just a touch too greedy there as he swung for the second kill and he really didn't have a license to be fighting for that one. So things settle in the favor of Akron in a much needed transitional point of the game in a round that they really must win. Otherwise, Converse are going to be pretty much the kingmakers for the rest of map number one. Jetcon pouring on the utility. IMAT has the entry. They know one's inside box, and it's an easy pressure kill by Jobu. Ice Cold is still lingering up top here. He's trying to fight the Finca. Not really a smart call. Thunder will rotate up. He gets one with the FMG9, and the Nomad will walk in against him. Thunder drops down the hatch, quickly getting out of dodge on the rotate immediately. Jobu will try to lock off the rotation. Oh, he manages to sneak past the air jet. No, he doesn't. Still snapped up by the flank watch utility. And Jobu will be the finisher here in this round. Despite the best efforts of Converse, a little too aggressive and a mismatch, a mismatch in the pace on the top floor. Thunder with an immediate call for a pause. Well, they did just lose Okirio. Probably want to get him back. Don't blame him. Don't want to start out the next round in a 4v5 and slowly oh, no. lose that round advantage. Yeah, we have seen what happens uh, in those predicaments beforehand, of course, Reese. But having a general lack of utility definitely did beg the question as to why you still wanted somebody inside of library. Because if someone just drones in the library and sees, oh, no ADSs, no magnets because of course my is banned, no Surya gates. It's going to take one grenade, perfectly timed, and that's somebody already dead. And you have to for forgive up that, uh, or actually take away that position almost off the bat with really no sweat being done by the attack. They can immediately apply pressure in those other positions like main balk, like we saw done by Jobu on the Nomad. They can have somebody just hop into library, of course, to help out with both blue stairs and also the uh, area in mezzanine. That's exactly what happened. We just saw a very fast paced round by Akron and they really... They basically gave no room for Converse to breathe throughout that entire round, starting at the very beginning of it. And if you continue to tighten that, you know, metaphorical chokehold, you start to work your way back into this. It's not match point. The 5 one half is never where you want to be. You know, I mean, you could talk about Chalet being attacker-sided, but it's it's not 5-1. It's, it's not that crazy. There are ways to mitigate that. Akron didn't have them when they were on the defense. Now they swapped up. They've got on the attack, and they've got the right idea in mind. CV, though, with the fact that Locurio disconnected, which... Honestly, to me, fellow, I don't mean to be superstitious here, but that is kind of a bad omen that he was the player who was disconnecting last time. Now he's disconnecting again. Pardon my superstition. But on Converse's side, they need to realize, okay, Akron have just kind of switched the ball game up on us. Say so maybe dining room could be a whole new level of extension here for Converse. They've got a lot more of the map to play with in, in a comfortable way. And still having pretty much the exact same lineup besides, I guess, the Kaid then Castle pick here on this round. It does give them a lot more opportunities to just stall for time. Although Akron, we did see a lot of early extensions by them and a lot cleared out by that attacking side. They can be a team that is well known for stalling in a couple of instances. And because both Converse and Akron know each other like the back of their own hands, I mean, there is a good chance we see Converse go some sort of power play. And that could be enough to completely shut out Akron and maybe guarantee match point. Yeah, it would be kind of a risky call. Nice electro claw down in the basement. I love those little trick claws. You've got them hidden somewhere. There's so many of those, especially on Chalet as well. We've already got kind of cutoffs going in the basement. The Twitch drone probably down there to look for that very electro claw, and it's already got it. That was quick. I can't, okay. Well, uh, sorry, Locurio. I guess that's sort of the punishment. We did see that Twitch actually being very effective last time we were on Dining John. Yeah, so we can see that uh, immediate uh, hard destruction go down for Akron, depending on where the Thermite's positioned at right now. I think Hennessy is just still in a bit of a drone game, but in a moment, he'll <laughs> locate over to Fireplace once the call's been given, and he can get that dining wall opened up. You still need to worry, though, about this top floor extension, and with the office walls reinforced, too, this is still going to buy a lot of time here for Converse in order to readjust and potentially make sure they could still play for vertical and actually stop a plant from going down if that's the main objective here for Akron. 
Well, you've already got a couple of your different entry points having been made despite the uh, best efforts of the bulletproof camera to EMP said breaching charges. Hennessy on the cut through the site, looking to maybe sum up a couple different angles here. The one thing is, you don't have the entry pick. You don't have that immediate advantage. There isn't an echo coming through from this composition, though. The main form of your denial is going to be out of the toxic canisters of Avian, combined with the C4 that Locurio could put to work, and you know that he's in that position now that you've got your Iana. Arv for the grenade. Could be a good toss here. We'll see it go through. Red indicator. Locurio trying to sprint, but that three armor operator holding him down like a two ton anchor to the kitchen hallway. One of your many long angles now forfeit because of that Kaid gone. I think we've eventually seen the Electro Claw destroy too. Hennessy can now open up the office wall as well, but still a lot of pressure here for Converse. They've got multiple angles to try to slow anybody down or maybe just get that great equalizer. Still though, two attackers up here as well, waiting for that perfect moment where someone gets a bit too aggressive and that could potentially tie things in that five on three, but Akron, they cannot get ahead of themselves. There's only 30 seconds left to go and there is still a ton of utility to stall them out completely from entering the site itself. Toxic Babes, we all know they grow valuable the more time you let slip, and now Arv suffering big league damage. Ice cold, he steps up for two, huge in the clutch, and he's looking for the vert as well. Resorts to the pistol. He doesn't see Hennessy, though. The Therm is going to be able to complete the plant, and in the meanwhile, Arv is practically running amok through the site. A triple kill for the Iana. Thunder and Ice Cold are left, and finally the Jaeger will complete on that vert kill. It's a great retake there by Converse. Talk about a power play for the Jaeger. Yeah, I mean, getting aggressive when needed most, I suppose. There were very few options left, and that is, at the end of the day, the whole purpose of trying to hold that top floor. You got to work those kills, and then you get to play the vertical as your reward in case a plant goes down. Although the Jaeger did kind of spot the Thermite, he couldn't get a proper angle to stop the plant, but it didn't matter. Their retake position was still incredibly strong because Hennessy couldn't really give up the exact position he was playing at due to the toxic smoke, and Arv was already well known because he had gone up against several different players in the first floor and he was rather low in hp so it only took a matter of time for ice cold to fall back in the site and also the frost who was going on the flank near front lobby to just cause complete chaos in that 2v2 and now guarantee map point for converse and i think a big reason for that was because how much they were able to get away with simply on that top floor and how strong their retake position was as well that was a fantastic retake you don't see many like that and Akron, I, I, I think it was utility. It was also their maybe a little bit slowness in taking control of that top floor. A lot of times, kind of the way that we talk about that dining attack, you don't really need to be inside office, but you do need to be in control of office, John. Like there, there mm -hmm. is kind of a difference there. And they were not in control of office. Let me be the first to tell you. They were not in control of office. The Jaeger was jumping. He was side-stepping. He was shooting. And he was doing everything there for Converse. And the fact that they don't shut that Jaeger down, they don't force him out of the office. I don't know where the nade was. I don't know where the flashes were. They didn't push him out. And ultimately, he came back to bite them here. Converse are on match point now. And we'll go to the basement for the very first time. Well, having no Sonic's plant strategy, it's going to be more of a normal lineup here. Akron still wants to get the back wall leading in a snowmobile opened up immediately as more and more teams don't want to go through the hassle of clearing out every single floor on Chalet. Instead, they want to get that snowmobile wall opened up immediately. That allows for an immediate angle to be held inside of the actual site to make sure nobody can properly transition from the blue stairs, from fireplace stairs, across the other side of the objective room. And then they can begin to lightly clear out this roam game, maybe go for vertical if they want to. But if not, they could go for a complete horizontal take. Although despite the lack of a sledge or a buck, they will still try to go for this full top to bottom with Arv starting things out with, again, a beautiful opening dual win against Locurio this time. Cutting out these players would be so crucial. Thunder almost kind of overstaying his welcome with that stairwell as well as Jetcon had just dropped down the breach. BDA being droned and kind of chased after. Ice cold. Keep an eye on the Goyo. He might be able to work something here. Jetcon is a little worried about the angle. He hasn't checked the close corner yet, and ice cold let slip through. Now you've lost one. Ooh, the recoil getting a little tough to control there for Ice Cold, but he gets the pick. He gets the trade. Jobu not able to set down all of those air jabs, and so the flank maybe now a tad bit exposed. Though, okay, Ice Cold gets through the rotate. I don't know how he ran past that player. A crucial failing 
Arv had tried to go down to the drone hole, I guess, but if you let that Goyo slip past, things become so problematic. And now Thunder gets one onto IMAT, a failure to convert on that opening kill. So much to worry about here in this final minute, Reese. You've lost a man advantage. Don't have much more left for Vert. You spent almost all your breaching charges just on this top floor to push back the defense, but they're still holding that top and middle floor quite strongly. Ice Cold has not given up his position near the dining hallway, and now we have to see a fallback by Akron as if they're almost trying to swallow their pride here, but I can't really blame them. There isn't much time left, and at some point, they've got to push the site to go for a plan. They're just hoping they can hold a couple of key angles and at least have enough coverage to let that post plant position reign true. It's going to be sort of one of those rounds where you just get into it and you have to press go. I don't think they know about this player tucked left, though. BDA has well and truly snuck in. Clocks of gas, obscures the vision. Jetcon pins down ice cold. Still applying the pressure here. BDA, got to be careful when you time that reload. You don't want to have that be heard. The flashbangs pour in. The Therm is ready on the other side of the breach. It's Iana to step forward first. She's gone. The Therm unable to get the trade. Jetcon steps into the 1v2. He's pressured from blue. Shotgun comes out. The Zoe doesn't really have much of a chance here. Jetcon hunting, searching, trying to find the last defenders. He's denied by Thunder. And Converse come on to Chalet. And they deliver a 7-2 result. Already starting off the R6CC Grand Finals with a fiery aspect. And everything about Converse there looked so much better from the last time we had seen them play on Chalet. Their timing was good. Their coordination was top-notch. If a play didn't work out completely, they were willing to adapt and change that style to at least have an attempt at something different to still get that round. The only time where, where the adaptation did not work, Reese, was round number one, in all honesty, and that was it. They only tossed away two rounds in total, and they just they looked like their old selves again. And that is definitely a big red flag here for Akron as they move into mat number two. Yeah, and, and things are going to have to kind of calm down for that Akron roster, especially just the way that things played out in the first half. Converse looked much different today. And the way that they were able to control themselves on the offense was leagues better than the way we saw them play in CR6 only a few nights ago. And Akron really need to use this break in between maps to settle down and think of how do we get IMAT to maybe be a little bit more proficient on the defense. Maybe you need JetCon to kind of slow down and close the distance because those two roamers, they weren't ever really working together to make things happen. They were isolated. They would maybe get a few picks here or there, but it was almost always traded out. And when you lose that entry kill on the refrag, it just feels soul crushing because that advantage withers away. We're going to head to a break. We'll be right back. You'll want to see Bank. We've got it on the other side of the intermission.
We're back here with the R6 Collegiate Championship Grand Finals matchup with Converse actually winning the map pick of Akron there on Chalet. A night and day comparison to what we've seen in the past. Reese, what are you expecting as we move into Bank shortly? I really don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to call it. I don't want to jinx it. But uh, I think Converse Fair. certainly look like the team that won back-to-back -back stages in the CR6. Not the roster that showed up and played tired, played super slow in Stage 3's finals over in Collegiate R6. So, going into Bank, it's a map that I know Converse can play. They showed that against Purdue in the earlier stages of that very competition. And can they convert it here in R6CC is the question, I suppose. It's a good potential of that. I believe it was not that much of a, of a close encounter. We actually saw a lot of attacking round wins for Akron, when they played against Commerce on Bank, they were demolishing these defensive extensions, these basically pieces of artistic work done by Commerce on their bank defense that just completely smashed around by Akron. But we have seen a drastic difference in how Commerce have been playing. They seem more robust, more like a team than what we did have. And funny enough, we did talk about the potential tiredness of them. They definitely seem alive and awake today, so maybe that has something to do with it. But also, some of the major issues that Akron normally have as a team are kind of reigning true in an even bigger light than what we normally would have anticipated going this matchup, Reese. Yeah, and as much as there is, you know, a lot of energy on the Converse side, it seems like some elements on Akron's roster are still not really up to where we expect them to be, notably on the map number one. It was IMAT who, you know, we expect to be in double-digit territory, racing to get to double digits. He was being shut down. He was not being allowed to self-enable as we usually expect him to do, and the rest of the roster wasn't really assisting him as much as it needed to be. And you mentioned a stat while we were just talking during the break, the fact that Arv had more entry involvement than, than IMAT did, that could not be allowed to happen on bank. It was either that or tied because we don't know. Actually, no, it can't be tied because IMAT didn't get the entry on round two because he still had three kills. So, yeah, that is a confirmed stat that I did whip out there earlier. Yeah, that was always one of the big things that IMAT was so good at was just self-enabling. But again, with Converse having a bunch of experience against Akron, they're already aware of that. And they know the perfect thing to counteract that, which is basically just dogpiling on IMAT or just forcing him to fall back early on so he can't get aggressive to work those immediate picks part and we did see that a lot either IMAT would die at a bad time or he would be put in a in a very um I would say a weak spot he was just kind of in the background he wasn't on the main stage wasn't in the theater he was just doing all the tech work in the background which shouldn't be the role for your main entry player or your main frag player that should be for your supports and again with the self-enabling role that does leave your actual I guess support players not a lot to do for work and maybe that stylization will get changed going into bank. I'm hopeful that that's the case because on bank, you need a lot of good team play because it's such a big map. But when these two rosters met on Friday, bank was the most decisive map by far. It was a 7-3, even in front of Chalet having been a 7-4. Akron looked in tip-top shape. Bank looked to be the map where they sat CV on the chopping block and were ready to make their move. We got on Villa in that series, and Converse managed to pull it back. They won it 7-5. But we're looking to bank now. Converse are fully energized, are looking to have actually worked together. They managed to get a good night's sleep, and they're ready to race into this map. Again, we'll have the conversation about the lack of the intel. Zero band here by Akron in this context. I don't know about you, John. I didn't feel like the zero band really did as much on the first map as compared to last time for Converse. Yeah, we had Avon being much more proactive and willing to just play his role. And that was it. He held a lot of late angles to make sure no one could retake the site as the defense. He was utilizing his air jabs for flank watch, popping flashes when required to. He was just doing his job. That simple. Didn't need the 0-4, did not need the crutch pick at all. And besides that zero pick, really, everything else is still normal. But for another second, we'll talk about the zero. We didn't actually have Akron ban that operator when we were on bank last time between these two teams at CR6. Yet, for some reason, they deem it necessary this time around. And funny enough, I don't even think Converse brought the zero a lot last time either. So it really does beg the question why they feel it's so required here going into map two. 
Well, moving into the bottom floor, we've got the warden sneaking in here for the basement. And I do imagine you're going to see him kind of play over by that server side. The main thing that we saw Akron doing when they played here on the bottom floor was sit somebody behind the server rack. And often, Converse would bring a Monty. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Akron wouldn't ban a Monty, given how effectual he was in that match. If you got the shield operator, really helps to just push somebody out of things. And Converse, they haven't swapped over to him yet. You do see the Finca come away in the Habana show forward. So Converse not electing to bring the Monty in this first composition. I wonder if it, this is part of, you know, a different way that they're playing today. Seems like it. We've got another nook so that can allow for a late garage play if required by converse you've got that sneak factor a lot of the intel if it is placed in garage cannot actually detect thunder if he has his hell device activated and also the ability to have the hard breach as well both the thermite and habana so you can get the hatches opened up go play for default clearing out blue opening up the back wall leading in a cctv getting the plant down and having that late flank with thunder all while also having the lion scanners pop two for that last second information it does look to be a recipe for success but that's if everything goes according to plan if they can clear out the roam game early on if they can actually get the hatches opened up without any you know bite back by akron and if they can clear out blue because there is a lot expended in that one simple area to make sure it takes a lot of effort by converse to clear it out Get a new record for the efficiency of Converse in that Nook pick. Just getting in and moving quickly. Not allowing any time for Akron to shut it down on the prospective roam. What's Simat up to right now? Is he just playing from that server position or is he working on something else? Do have quite a multitude of shields. To see three on the bottom floor is a little bit atypical. But you're going to have a lot of very solid cover. We'll still need to burn out the majority of the youth till you're facing at the top of the blue stairs here. X Kairos coming. Arv, maybe he thought about shooting those X Kairos. He will reconsider it. Swinging that door is a very easy way to lose your life. And if you lose blue control, you're giving Converse a lot of time to work with. Arv now being forced to play to die, essentially. You've got Vert up above, and now Arv is dead. He tried getting aggressive, didn't want to play for the util immediately, and that seems to be a bit of an error done for Akron. They already have blue control without burning through any of their utilities. Still multiple flash grenades, about eight in total. All grenades are on the board, and we might have that late rotate occur at some point as well, with the hatch coverage still being phenomenal. And with that man advantage as well, Converse, they have even less angles to worry about. This is really looking to be a pristine condition all they need to do is get the back wall open up and just start attempting to go for that plant and burning through the defender util. Things are really looking to be on a sour note for the defense here. Got a little bit of utility to work with. They've got the yokais on C4 for Jetcon. All the toxic gas left. Converse are kind of lingering right now. BDA just having dropped the hatch. IMAT seems prepared for it. The thing is, that's one less defender really actively holding over by the bomb chassis. They're going to rotate, it seems like, pushing down towards blue and servers wasn't the call they decided to make. Here go the flashbangs. It's a hot drop down. The Iana not actively in the fight here against the Jaeger. I don't know what the call is there. He's able to isolate one and I'm at for two. The call to rotate going completely awry. Jobu shuts down Avian. It's a race for the Therm to even make it inside the objective. The cutoff for the Nook has to be flawless here. A C4 thought of for a moment. Thunder goes down. Ice Cold is forced to stick to plant there. And Akron somehow win that round. John, I, I wonder what caused them to call that rotate. I'm not too sure. Maybe it was the fact that the wall was actually soft in CCTV. They were too afraid to maybe get shot while putting on the thermite charge. But even then, they could maybe have the Habana attempt that there's still a couple of Skyrish charges. Or even then, just walk around it or go for a, a deeper plant, perhaps, and just have somebody watching for that eventual play near gold, especially with the hatch pressure. You can, if you really need to, you can drop down and have somebody to back you up from either marble stairs or garage. Again, you have the nook for that late rotate, yet we saw Thunder playing more with the team, if anything, and only rotated in about the final 10 to 20 seconds when it was a full confirmation they wanted to go for a vault drop. And out of all the players you want dropping the vault hatch, I would suspect the Thermite to be probably in the lower end of that tier list. So it was a very risky decision, 
and it definitely showed because it was honestly more or less a blunder for Converse, giving Akron a very good opening round in this first half. It wasn't very well organized either. The fact that the Jaeger was just allowed to kind of sit in that vault door, there wasn't the Iana immediately with her gun up trying to fight him. They didn't try to put utility on the Jaeger as well. I, I just really, <clears throat> sorry, I, I, I really don't see the um, idea behind that attack. I got you wanted to rotate, but it really was poorly executed and kind of a throw of a round almost to call that. Either way, Akron having locked off the basement are now headed to CEO. See what they might be able to make happen here. From their position so far, it seems like we should be in for a front take. Nice cold in a rather dangerous position as it's your only hard reach once again. So being on that window rappel, if someone does try to get aggressive, that could be your thermite dead. But he'll go on the drone instead, enabling Thunder to maybe get aggressive instead in the Zofia. A much safer call indeed. And I believe having someone ATM as well, that way no one can go for that like spawn peek through the metal grating to kill anybody on the window rappel. Again, it's that safety net so far for Converse, but at some point, they got to have to have Ice Cold fully rotate around, get that back hole opened up, and go for the standard take. And also having no range hard breach definitely does improve the position near the top of Gold Stairs. Maybe someone in Elevator can hold those long angles for a very long time, unless BDA can land this grenade perfectly. They might have some trouble as well. You can see there is a defender below, Jaeger hiding inside of Tellers. And I'm at waiting almost for his opportunity to strike. I don't think it's really been put, up, put in a ton of pressure. You do have Therm over by top square. They have called a couple of members into the rotate. The main lobby pressure wasn't going so well. It makes perfect sense to try this different style of take. You do have IMAT creeping in below. He could sort of step up those stairs and try to shut this push down before it can really materialize. And if they don't have a flank on him, I'm going to start to be a little worried that maybe that zero ban is starting to cause a little bit more teething issues. Defender over by front of Trump. Converse don't have a lot of openings right now. They're going to have to make some of their own. And that's an incredibly challenging situation, especially to do it in under 60 seconds. Jetcon taking a bit of a beating as well. The Doka B call and BDA has the entry. Nice call now trying to go for this plant. Jobu is still alive, but is he in a good position to stop this plant from going down? No, he's not, but here's the flank. We were so worried about it. Does deny the planter, but at least Lokirio is there to refrag. 50 seconds left on the board. Converse still have that advantage, but they need to recover the case. Final Lokirio will be the one to make that eventual call, and now the plant will be reattempted once again, but can Jobu stop from going down? Looks like the answer oh. could be yes. There it is. The spray is clean. Hennessy finds one as well. Two versus two now. BDA finishes off one as well, and Thunder removing Hennessy puts us in a one versus two with Jobu's position well-known but very entrenched in janitor it'll be a very daunting task in these final few moments you have got quite the power of the guns here the lmg the rifle but jobu isolates the mid-range capability not the best in the smg 11 but jobu will make do from what he's got right now 12 seconds to go the smoke is going to try to stand and fight and he'll win it out again akron are able to capitalize off of some late round errors and decision making from converse and they now lead bank 2-0. A major lack of intel Reese, allowing the Jaeger to at least kill the planter before being eventually traded out. It bought a lot of time for Akron to at the very least reposition and have somebody but the smoke of Jobu to stop the plant. Although that was sufficient enough to deny the plant for two times in a row, essentially, it's still nice to have those long angles and deny anybody else from entering that part of the map. It was a complete adaptation by Converse once again, but the damage had already been done. Again, lack of drones. They did know Jobu at one point was in Janitor, but as he left it, it was a completely new ball game for Converse, and they basically just isolated themselves because they just didn't know exactly where he was playing at, giving Akron now a second round win off some semi-basic issues being revealed by Converse now. Yeah, I, I really want to say Converse have kind of lost themselves these first two rounds. That was such a close thing there. The first gas canister used in stopping the second attempt of at the plant just wasn't even effective. It wasn't doing any damage to the lion. The fact that you just allow a player to walk up bottom square, I mean, this, these are basic things here, people. This is not, you know, any complex level strat. You have to watch the flank. You need to cover that up. And unfortunately, Akron executed on that, and CV were not really prepared for it. We're going to go to open area. This objective, it can be more complex than the top floor in the basement. It's all about the way that you approach it here for the offense. If you're going to try to clear through the main lobby and execute horizontally, if you're going to try to go up from the vertical, big goals are about isolating individual players on the extension. 
Converse definitely would love to have a round win at some point, but there is a lot they have to deal with, especially on this mid-floor site of open area. Again, the extensions on bank are almost a necessity, and it's very easy to go for those fallbacks as well. A couple C forwards in the pocket of Akron, too. They have both the Valkyrie and Pulse on the board, which gives tons of early game information depending on where those black guy cameras are placed and where exactly Arv is playing at. And currently, he's in the middle of archives, one of the best spots to be at for anti-vert denial because the entire ceiling is soft, so that leaves a lot of free real estate for Arv to go for that nitro sell and depending on the placement of converse that could actually be a first opening death for them and that could once again slow themselves down and force a bit of a sell stall essentially the rotate action from the valkyrie bda on a really tight angle locuria looking down on above got some damage under r the finca will try to get action here as well they failed to catch the players coming through the rotate big mistake there in the play by thunder he has at least Gotten to claim the fact that the defenders have fallen off of the extension now. Pulse play is not one we see entirely too commonly here on this objective. Maestro inching his way back forward. Jetcon down, suffering damage. Maestro is forced to retreat. Avian opens up on a Jetcon, and it certainly makes things look a little bit more possible here. Well, still not having a lot of pressure for at least the vertical here on this top floor. It's going to be a full horizontal take. No grenades in sight just yet, but eventually Thunder and BDA could relocate. And yeah, it'll be the call by the Finca to break those mute jammers. But I believe it got caught by an ADS. No, I was incorrect on that. At least the mute jammers now gone. Opens up another avenue of approach in these final 45 seconds for Converse. Arv is really trying to go for a bit of a chintzy move here. He's playing on the open breach and he's got Locario guns down one. Thermite has gone all the way outside the building over by Electrical. Time running low. Still a four versus four, and Akron have less health than they want to. They've also got one less player than they might want to. Arv goes down. The Maestro going to have to sum up a big clutch here. Toxic Babe Utility. Jobu has managed to hold on for two Babes. Might be ready to send out one more. I'm at attempting a flank through the basement. A big test of Converse's cutoff potential. You see Thunder steps in. He knew what the Valkyrie was trying, and he shuts it down with no impedance. Avian on the Hennessy now. Surely this round in the bag, but Jobu pops up for one. One versus three. The smoke able to isolate a second. The bomb is down, but Avian will save things before we get a Kansan-esque moment here on the open area bomb site. Close call still, though, just because of that lack of time. And to think if we had either ADSs for the grenade, of course, because there was no Jaeger in play at all for Akron, or if we had someone proactively impact tricking that wall, things could have went rather bad for Converse. They had only five seconds left to just kill Jobu because he was in a very bad spot. It was only, uh, only a few short moments before he eventually got traded out after finding, I believe, it was one, if not two, huge kills that could have changed the entire dynamic of that round but i think in general just the slight overextension done by akron and maybe getting a bit ahead of themselves on that round was the final thing that cost them that round entirely but still having two rounds so far in their defense is definitely nothing to scoff at and now they get to go back to the site of cctv where they did a good job of holding down on the inevitable execute that converse went for but i feel like that still had to do a lot with the errors that converse made not so much the bonuses or the great plays made by akron there in that first round yeah, the uh, initial start of the round was actually kind of poor. Arv overpeaked on his blue extension. He didn't play for his utility. He just kind of tried to tussle with the players in in the um, bottom of the square. And they had somebody on the vertical, as you would usually expect. And so that was a brazen call. It was not one that really worked out, and we'll hope to see Arv correct that. It is interesting that he chooses to play this top blue hold with the MPX rather than choose the shotguns. I mean, John, there's so many moments of this blue stairwell, a shotgun, one kill, two kills, three kills, sometimes an entire push coming down those stairs, and the buckshot just brings it to a halt. Maybe to allow for better aggression, perhaps, if someone's holding a longer angle, kind of like a, uh, I would assume like a, a double, I suppose a double bait perhaps, because you're expecting someone to play with the shotgun there, so it's kind of you want to play more range in case they overextend, but now it's actually a 1.5 optic MPX that can click on your head immediately, perhaps, but it definitely does seem a very high-risk, high-reward play once again, which we have seen a lot so far by Akron, and it's worked out for them two out of the three times, but that could slowly change once again, especially if Converse just continue to clean up their act. do like the fact that Akron have not much skimped on their plant denial. They've got the tools to stop it if it does come to that. However, they are still focused on trying to maybe shut it down before it really gets to that point. You know, it's not like they've got 
you know, 10 C4s and a whole satchel full of gas canisters, right? They've just got enough to stop it if it does become a bit of a problem. But in the end game here, if Converse are quick, which uh, so far it hasn't really been that speedy, they should be able to overcome what utility lies ahead of them. Arv is again playing from the shielded position. A flashbang goes in. They're going to try to burn him out. And the nade from Thunder is there eventually. Hennessy down and killed out by BDA. So many times Converse leading in this entry and R peeks right into Locurio, giving away his life. A prime position to be in now for Converse. BDA as well with the cross. Doesn't need to get overtly aggressive. And they're now clearing out the Jaeger as well. Tons of flashbangs and a grenade to follow too. He gets blown up sky high. Now only a five versus two with both defenders actually targeting out BDA. This could be a prime ult to go for that plant. There's a nade forcing out Jetcon. BDA finds out on Jobu. It won't be a flawless round to end it. But it's only the Valkyrie left. And they're currently trapped in Garage. No control of the bomb either. No mandate for Jetcon really to do anything other than suffer in the garage. Finally, Converse starting to realize on some of their mistakes, shutting down any attempt by Akron to try to get a little bit hyperactive. And unfortunately, some callous decision making there for Akron, costing them, losing the early pressure, not being careful enough about monitoring the walk in from the garage, ultimately costing them losing Hennessy, losing Arv. The casualties stacked higher and higher. Akron not being able to trade. And though the scores are tied, fellow, I think we've got a storyline painted here that Converse look like a better prepared bank team. Definitely seems like it so far. Again, a lot of the issues that gave Akron the round win were based off of, like I mentioned, the mistakes made by Converse, not so much them outplaying their opponents, that being Akron, of course. Heading back to CCTV, it's going to be the same lineup once again for Akron. It's kind of a necessity, though, to, to do what they have been so far. Having a, a general emphasis on that util game for the eventual post plan, having a bunch of util stacked up as well in blue to have somebody waste a lot of time in that position, almost playing there to die. And there has been a lot of death on the board for Akron. They haven't really gotten away with any of those heroics that we would tend to coin them to have a lot of times and again i think it's just converse having that past experience in a previous best of five against their opponents and just having a, a general understanding of what's about to happen in these next few seconds and they're just positioning themselves in a way where they can deny those heroics from actually being a pain in the back yeah and, and we've never seen akron really fundamentally control the round from the get-go it's been converse losing in the late game if it has been a loss at all in the round two, well, split the difference here to see if CV will take the lead or if Akron will try to affirm anything else. They sure don't in the entry category, marking now the third time that Arv has found himself as the entry death and really just been a rough spot for him. In the CR6 Grand Finals, the rematch or the first match of these two rosters, Arv was actually one of the more powerful players. However, on Oregon in that series, Arv was playing Sledge, and he had an exponential amount of opening deaths. He was getting absolutely punished, and he was not allowed to play his own game. Something similar happening right now in map number two. At this point, it definitely begs the question for Akron if they want to have somebody actually move up into blue or completely give that up. Looks like they will opt for the latter. That is a ton of map control at the basically beginning portions, the infancy of this round. And I think because of that, IMAT will still want to get relatively aggressive, but they can just sit comfortably in the site still. But if no one checks for his position near, near that bomb chassis, it could be potentially a refrag for Akron. But still having a good emphasis inside of the hatch play and also marble stairs, it definitely looks like Converse trying to change something up once again this final minute 20. I wouldn't hate the idea of trying to go for more of a vault push as long as it's better coordinated. However, from what we've got right now, CV are still, I think, settled on trying to push into the CCTV area. The one thing is, they'll need some sort of soft destruction. They'll use Locurio to easily go ahead. However, he gets, well, not close enough to the wall. I don't know why he stopped early. It doesn't look like we've got a mute jammer in close proximity. The mute himself now being DBNO'd. A second Flores drone rolls in. Finally, this will create the opening that they needed. And Jetcon, look at how frantically he's running around the lockers room. DDA 
gathering tons of information still. He's got to get proactive though in a few short moments because there are still a lot of crossfires being held by Akron. Although they have the disadvantage, they still have again tons of util and just enough of player base to have this shutdown actually work. Here come the flash grenades. Jobu still throws out one canister, keeping Ice Cold at bay, but Avian finally gets rid of Hennessy and two defenders low on HP. This could be still a great breaking point moment for Converse, but they still need to actually kill Jobu despite the fact he is in a very vulnerable position. Going to be a very electrifying moment. Time running low, and Ice Cold has managed to send it deep. The gas canister is unsuccessful, and Locurio on the drop. He's iced out by IMAP. However, the plant fails to be stopped. Thunder will put in the bucket the final kill. Converse now having the lead against an Akron team who look nothing like the roster we saw win CR6 so recently, and a team that also claimed a victory in CEA as well. Something is off tonight for the Zips, and... I can't really place my finger on it. Well, it just seems to be, again, the better team play and adaptation by Converse. Just their late round coordination has been phenomenal. A majority of these rounds, at least after round number two, I would say. You can maybe even argue round number two was not horrible for them, but we had immediately blue control established by Converse. Hatch play as well. They still had a player, BDA, that being near Marble Stairs. Just everything went according to plan. And even when they couldn't immediately kill Jobu, we still had a slight change. Ice Cold planted a little deeper in the site, and that allowed the smoke grenades to not find anything because there was no information giving that Ice Cold change his plant spot, allowing it to be a post position and a very high man advantage. But Converse still getting hyper aggressive because they had the advantage. They knew they'd get away with a lot of that trickery. And it's been Akron now. Kind of on the downhill position once again as they have not been able to find their stride after round number one and two. Well, the Valkyrie tries, she might, she will not find the drone hiding in the bushes. It's camouflaged. He's, I thought maybe he was going to look for it again. It's a lot of cameras in the lobby area. Akron have not been able to really get much of a trade game built up. I think it's probably one of the most important factors of how you know, this game has gone and, and why things are as they are for Akron. The fact that they die and die and die and just suffer on the objective and don't play for trades, don't talk to each other, don't work for a pick is one of the biggest reasons why things are how this has been so far. Three players out from Repel. Avian, watch to see if he's going to Pull that Candela into his hand. I almost sort of think maybe they might consider kind of a dry rush into CEO. It's odd to have two players out on the repel. The third will rotate away, and I think that does eliminate the possibility that they would just simply run in here. But Converse, we know them as a very aggressive and explosive team. They might just do as they please. Well, here comes the eventual utility push out. Castle Barricade now gone. Maybe we can see that aggressive play. The back wall gets opened up as well by Ice Cold. Everything going according to plan so far. And with those Candelas, you can make a lot of space immediately. That does force back Akron by a ton. And although they have both the ADSs and well, my Magnus, I believe a lot of that util has already been expended. So really, it is only a matter of time before Converse to make that first move. Well, we are still waiting for that move to eventuate. Things are going pretty slow so far, but they're doing their due diligence, clearing the utility. You'll remember last time this smoke was able to just kind of prone out in that janitor area. And he really got some action into it. Flashbang comes in as well. Could signal the start of things here. Oh, no! Jetcon has two kills! Shuts down Locurio and Ice Cold. Thunder forced to come in on the repel. Avian trying to clean things up here. And BDA has one as well. We're back to an equal footing. This almost looked good. Jetcon tried to get it started, and he really did well, but the rest of his roster needs to try to contribute here as well. Thunder tagged up for a single shot, but now the Ying comes racing in through Trump. One Candela on the deep angle. Oh, but the Wamai is caught before he can make it through the rotate. Time might be low. The Diffuser might be in an awkward position. It's going to be a battle. Jetcon and Jobu just have to outlast these players, keep them at a distance, and try to reach out and touch them with what weapons they've got. But Thunder starts to wrap around. Avian collects for a third with the LMG, and all of a sudden, it's just the smoke left. He's trapped and isolated. He tried the clutch last time, and he did make it successfully in the CEO. One-on-two situation. Oh no, but he's all flash. He's full white. And Jobu somehow still has another one here. Avian needs to win this. He will. Converse get the last round. They will go for the two. But Jobu almost with a marquee moment inside of Janitor. 
and by the skin of Converse's teeth, they will still win that against Jobu. And honestly, that had more or less to do with them still having some proper team play at the end. Three different people pushing in from essentially three different directions. And although they had a Candela popped on him as well, the timing was slightly off, giving Jobu a couple of kills, but still three versus one. And they really wanted this man dead. So they finally got their wish granted and they get a four to two split after quickly changing up the errors they had early in that first half. And they get to reap the rewards by not only having the round advantage, but now also going in the second half with a very good moral or at least a, a very good high note in terms of their morality. And I'm sure it's going to be a big boost for them moving on. And unlike the heavy Yutzel composition, we did see by Akron when they were holding this basement floor. It looks to be the polar opposite for Converse where they want to play into that hyper aggression and go for more of a, uh, I guess, a full double down here on this Rome play, Reese. And you did talk about this during the pregame. When Converse tried their extensions, their roams last time, they just got pieced apart by Akron. Mm -hmm. And I think this first round will tell you a lot about is that going to change? Have Converse realized some of their mistakes from that finals game that we keep referencing? Or is this going to be an outright success? And are Akron going to fail to get the momentum here? Because the way I see it, you look back to Chalet, coming into the second half when Akron got over to the offense, they really started to pick up steam. They got that first round, and they looked electric. They really looked like they had realized some of their potential. They couldn't convert on it. Eventually, they lost out. And Akron, it's a more doable situation here. It's 2-4. to four. Realistically, you think about this one. You try to go quick again. You shut down Converse. You get in their faces. There's a chance. Always a chance as well for Akron to maybe redeem themselves. on is a very, very big hill. To climb up, I would suppose, and they are just starting now to trudge their way up. They've got the drone game established. I don't think they're aware of Ice Cold's position, though. He gets aggressive for maybe a potential peak. Both Jobu and Jetcon are on cameras, and they did not hear the audio call. There's Ice Cold for one. The Ying is very close, can maybe trade, but Lokirio is there onto IMAT, and Jobu only now on prones and has no idea where the Vigil has fallen back to. An instant five versus three, and now tons of problems are stacking up for Akron because they've lost a bunch of their brute force capabilities. A lot of their LMGs are now gone. At least don't have to worry about Ice Cold, but there is still plenty of these roamers in the middle floor not just the top floor position oh nearly had a second there hennessy good to shut down locurio converse the roam the rat race begins to rotate back down they will get away from things here but akron losing out on some crucial parts of the composition oh what a late c4 bda from all the way in the basement calls it up against jobu who knew how long he had that prepped now it's only Hennessy, the clutch master. Can he win out of 1v3? We haven't seen Hennessy win a clutch so far. It's really been kind of more so on Jobu, who has been the top performer for Akron on this map. Not really on the last. It was more so Arv, and well, I suppose Jobu did have some moments, but he's leading the charge right now. And Gen yeah, Hennessy's not even going to try this. The time is too low. There's no entry point. It's going to be attack timeout. If you're in the call right now for Akron, you have to be talking about not getting ahead of the drones, not walking into your opponents, not going astray from the plan because Akron's inability to trade is killing them. And at the beginning of that round, things did seem to be working out correctly for Akron. They were taking their time. They had multiple people droning out that top floor because they knew... Converse were going to go for a heavy roam game. Again, these two teams played against each other recently. Bank was one of the first couple of early maps. It was also the second map, funny enough, not just in the grand finals here at the Collegiate Championship. But we had Ice Cold actually slip through the fingertips of Akron. And although we haven't seen Akron get a lot of kills, especially in the first half, map one, he did great. And on map two, at least in the beginning of the second half, he went for a very aggressive kill and it paid dividends. It slowed down Akron completely. And it really did seem like that Rome game was almost uh, impenetrable to a certain degree because a lot was not accomplished there for Akron in that last round. Yeah, that round really did. Not, that's not a promising first round in the, in the half where you need to come back here. Because it's going to quickly become 
pretty much this is like the opposite of what we had on CR6. It's Akron that yeah. are the team that are just languishing, that are so slow, that have no ability to refrag, that their coordination has fallen into a pit of despair. And Converse are, you know, they lost a couple of rounds in the first half to themselves. They made some mistakes. They tried to overthink it. They've calmed down since then. They're really playing to their own advantages. And you look on this Akron side, they need this pause. They need to fix what is going wrong. Say, I thought it was Converse for a second there that wanted to go for the pause. Maybe I was wrong. Uh, might have might have mislooked at the at the text there, but still a pause in general does slow down the momentum of really either team. So still a good call nonetheless. And there is a lot that needs to get fixed for Akron at the very least. It is a new half, potentially new team now, but already starting out with a very weak set of, of general clear on the presence of that Rome game. The droning immediately did not look bad, but after they lost two people, they got very sloppy. They wanted to get hyper aggressive, but they just did not have the uh, actual components to do so in a proper manner. And once again, they just got punished by Converse. And it really seems like bank is their playing ground, just like it was over in chalet. And I, I really can't tell you if this is going to be, you know, if it's just Bank and Chalet, because you look at Akron, you know, they won these two maps. They look really good on them last time. Now what's gone wrong today? It's really hard to nail down beyond that basic concept that we keep going back to. You know, I, I think when you see these rosters unable to trade, it really tells you that they're uncomfortable. And something we always used to draw to is when you see these teams, when they go in and they just die to the Rome, and they can't trade each other out, right? It's usually going to be a comms issue. They're not talking to each other. There's not that consistent kind of plan that's being called out. And if you don't have that, it's going to be a quick finals. It's going to be a 3-0 if you don't get that under control. Because let me tell you, Villa, we already saw a weak, really weak converse dispatch Akron on the map. Now that they've got that it factor, Villa could be the, the end of this tournament especially since we might actually see converse take map number two it is their pick but all these maps in a way are, are really good for both teams i feel like the only map that was a giveaway that akron could take that was villa and then that was the actual upset map that had brought us to clubhouse in the cr6 final so even then that is not uncharted territory for either one of these two teams. So I agree with you. There is a, a huge chance we don't even see Clubhouse here tonight. It might just be a quick 3-0, especially if we don't have Akron change up how they approach this dynamic of Converse. I mean, again, their general team play has been phenomenal. We have everybody getting active here for Converse, whereas you look at the side of Akron, it just... It looks like a shell of their former self, similar to the point that I made about Converse. The other time we casted them was they just look like a husk and just uh, not like the same team at all, really. Such a weird thing to witness. IQ pick from R. If you've got Capita coming in the lineup as well, two operators definitely on the rarer side. With Locurio running the Echo, though, there is substantial reason to choose that IQ. Find those drones early, shut down the intel gathering capability. As well, if you had... Um, Worried about the Valkyrie, who is available. If you had worried about the Vigil, it's kind of a more nuanced thing using the IQ gadget to track after the Vigil. But, uh, man, I've seen a lot of Vigil matches where he's just one of the biggest defensive frustrators. You use that gadget, you track him, you lock him in. It's a little bit more doable here. Akron moving in through main lobby. Here we're kind of going a little quick with this one. Trying to put maybe some more direct pressure. We saw... Converse really operated from the repels. Besides from one player, it's four taking through ATMs, and BDA has been downed. No grenades left, though, to finish BDA. Could maybe get revived, depending on how well Converse can keep Akron at bay. But the aggression, it's still there. So he's bolt deployed. Now Lokiro cannot fall back, but he still finds one. Ice Cold here to tag team as well. And we have a complete three-on-three -three with BDA still being down. If revived, that could be the four versus three. But all this effort built up to shut down the players near elevator and also aggressing out in the front desk, it's been completely halted. And now Akron might have to change up their dynamic once again, because so far this gold stair play has not worked out in the slightest. Well, look at the team play there. Now you've got a player res back into the fight. D. Jaeger is 
Just a tiny bit of chip damage. These two players sharing such close quarters. Here comes the Finca stepping in. IMAT's got a second. He's finally down. Avian comes in clutch with another. Arv still out from the windows. EDA might be on low health, but that's almost the IQ, and the time is so low here. The bomb in a crippling position. Going to be so tough for Arv to recover this, especially with the time. Probably got some yokais left as well. Maybe some late intel to operate from. And there's simply no way you're going to be able to check for PDA. He's prone. He's hiding. Avian is the distraction as well. Arv has to come in. He think, I think he predicted the castle was prone there, but unfortunately he just does not win out the gun duel. The castle will have it. And Converse, yet another round added. They are on a roll. And the big problem of that position really was just general force for Akron and kind of kind of a funnel. We'll start with the general pressure. They never got the actual, I suppose, the, the ranged wall opened up near elevator until Locurio already had did too much damage near elevator. Even a Capital Bolt cannot keep this man at bay, and he had backup by Ice Cold. If we had that wall already opened up and the grenades used to actually break the Mute Jammer and not try to kill BDA, that would have been a very different story, and we would have seen a much more reserved Converse as they were trying to slow down Akron walking up gold from longer angles and not immediate aggression also the funneling only did we see arv do something for his team on that window play in the in about the final 40 seconds of that round having everybody basically just trying to walk up gold and just hope they would only have to worry about one person at a time and could just play for the main advantage but converse did not allow it to happen and now because of that poor play by akron we're going to be on map point seven to two once again reese yeah converse have just been Kind of closing in on the result we were expecting. 7-2 on the first map, looking like the same thing. It's about to happen here, John, and I, I just, I don't know what to prescribe to Akron right now. They, it's, it's, it's so reminiscent of last Friday where we just looked at Converse and we said, what a lopsided series we've got here. What is this Converse roster? You know, I suppose it goes back to the storyline we were talking about earlier. That today is an opportunity for Converse to say last time in the Stage 3 Finals, that was just a, a flaw. It was a one-time thing. It's not representative of who we are as a whole. And I think there is another side to, you know, that story. But for Akron, who need a victory here to say, bam, not only do we have CEA, do we have CR6, we got Face It as well. We should be feared really i mean but you're not getting here by playing this style that we've seen wonder how well the uh wild card play will go for them too but sticking into the round as of now there goes the nade locurio can evade it for the time being and still play inside a janitor for a decent amount of time still nitro cell as well could maybe prolong the inevitable fall back as well by the mute so plenty of seconds already burned off locurio oh! wow what a shot through the wall connects on the head of jetcon <laughs> that's the opening kill once again for converse and mute has still not given up this position wow locurio just steps out into the hallway there's no player that can stop this smoke right now excuse me the mute a nade comes in it misses it's like locurio has got some kind of supernatural protection in janitor and he steps out for a third kill akron get a hold of yourselves you just let the smg 11 on a roam kill you for three an lmg and two of the best rifles in the game fail to coordinate to kill a, a, a submachine gun a machine pistol even that really does not have that range potential. Locurio, what an awesome spectacle from him. And Akron are going to leap down. They're going to try to collect against Ice Cold, who's sneaking here. Just spotted the Finca. Eliminates IMAT. It's only to throw him left. And Ice Cold, he is hungry. He is chasing. Hennessy will put him down. 45 to go. There's three targets here needed by the Clutch Master, who we have not seen really getting active tonight. And he's got Thunder. The explosive... IGL in his path. Hennessy will take forward. Oh, he gets the Maestro. Things look possible now. It looked like he had intel, but the shots don't connect against the castle in the back of Tellers. Time running low. Hennessy, he's got the bomb. He should know where these final two players are. It's about isolating the targets, and Converse have sort of done that for him. He's going to bait for this player, and Tellers, Converse aren't ready to give it up, though. They aren't going to try to just sell away this fight. They're going to play it safe. They're going to do what they know they can do. 
The Thermites just spotted another player in the backside. Thunder will put him down. Converse, 7 2. They are now on series point here in the R6CC Grand Finals. And accurate after that play in the top floor definitely seems shaken and just not in a good position to, to continue on in a good way. Bewildered. Going, yeah, bewildered. That's a great way to describe it. They seem completely shocked that Locario was able to not only survive the entourage of grenades, but the massive amount of players thrown at his way. But it was just constant isolation after isolation. And they weren't expecting him to double down or even triple down, but he did. He proved them wrong and he won his gunfights. And at that point, it was a dead giveaway that that round was just irredeemable for the offensive Akron. And now we're going in round number three. Series point already established here. For Converse, we already saw them beat Akron in the past here on Villa. I mean, like you and I were kind of predicting, we're not too sure what can really stop them from just ending out the series 3-0 to at this point, Reese. Akron are going to need to channel their old form on Villa if they want to survive in the grand finals. They're going to have to go back to that team that we know. They're going to need all of their players to contribute. The entry game from Jetcon and IMAT has to skyrocket because right now it's looking like a pea shooter. Losing three players to an SMG 11 is unacceptable. And on Villa, it will become more apparent than ever. Before we get to the Italian map, though, we're going to take a short break, allow the players to prepare for what might be the final map in the best of five.
Welcome back, everyone, to the R6CC Grand Finals. My name is Sikula. I'm joined here by John. We've got uh, a little thing going on here. We just wanted to clear up some confusion after the break. We are not going to Villa. That'll be later. We've got Clubhouse. That's up next. And th does that really change anything for you here, fellow? Slightly, but also not so much. We had Converse almost winning this matchup against Akron the last time we saw them play against each other, but they didn't outright win it. Statistically speaking, though, they are a bit of a better team on Clubhouse in comparison to Villa, so take it with a grain of salt. And also, another mistake that we had here was uh, we actually did see zero ban in bank last time at CR6, not just here, but still, I felt like it was a little bit of a, uh, a bit of a, weak ban not a required ban and uh, i'm hoping going into the third map i said hope a lot been very hopeful here tonight reese uh that we don't see him banned because it's just it's not a requirement well speaking of what uh was banned in that championship game for cr6 akron chose to remove habana and mira converse elected to destroy thasher and wamai so it didn't really get too crazy we'll see if things are paralleled here I am honestly kind of sad that they have banned the Zero so much because I like Zero. He's a cool operator. It's fun to watch him. I feel like he uh, allows you, he activates you to be a little bit more, you know, easy on the flank watch. However, for Clubhouse, I feel like you don't really ever see Zero because your flank watch, they can be managed by drones if you do it right. If you do it right, that's true. Haven't seen the drone game be all that swell for Akron. They haven't had a lot of attacking rounds. So I guess we can poke holes at some of the argument there, but in general, they've let a lot happen that just frankly should not, especially since they have uh, understood the regiment that Converse goes through, likewise, or vice versa for Converse on Akron. So it, it definitely seems a bit odd that we have had Akron really fail at a lot of the basics here tonight in this grand final. But in terms of basicness, the band so far, they are everything in terms of basic. We've got the Maverick, the Habana. Thatcher is allowed, but still the two hard reach bands make a load of sense. So does Mira. And I'm guessing finally, not Valkyrie instead of Wamai, but still a default band essentially and still a good one to have nonetheless. Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to see how this will pan out. As you've got Valk up, you've got Thatcher up. Things are going to play out a little bit differently. You do have that relationship between a possible bandit trick it has been a forever bit of an off-topic point here, but it is relevant to the operator. Vito's, it's been a long time since I've seen Cali play. And, you know, with the attacker repick now, I feel like you can kind of justify Cali, you know, with the ability to use that lance and not have to worry about choosing a sniper operator when you're attacking the bottom floor close quarters basement, right? I would say so as well. A lot of long ranges you can play with that sniper, especially when attacking CCTV. But in general, the Thatcher is still going to be a pretty good op just in general. Gets rid of a lot of util, can stop a lot from happening. Besides potentially Bandit and kai -E tricking depending on how good you are at either one of those two things. So maybe moving to CCTV, we actually get to see that trick go down. Maybe here as well, depending on how Thunder wants to place his kai -E claws as well. So a lot on the drawing board for both Converse and Akron. But especially having multiple hard breach and those EMPs and what it looks to be really no big emphasis on the roam game for commerce around one. They could have a very fast setup here in this attacking round race. They need a fast setup as well because bank was painfully slow. So was Chalet as well. If they don't have this huge roam to deal with, that means you're not going to have, you know, the likes of Locario hiding somewhere and shooting three people with an SMG 11. You're not going to have to deal with any craziness going on from somebody like Ice Cold or BDA hosing you down in the early game. Locario trying to start out from top blue. He's already taken a bit of punishment as well, but he'll recoil back to that blue Jenny position and uh, not try to hold off there. It is nice to see the Tachanka get played out here. He can be so valuable when you're trying this more turtled up site. It does depend, though, which route Akron are going to take into the bomb site. I've seen them lately operate more so from a blue take position. They don't really like to go for that kitchen drop. 
Now, blue tank isn't all that bad, but if you solely focus on blue and not even in a rush position, that gives plenty of time for Converse just to put a lot of their prioritization just on this one part of the map and completely stop this play from actually happening. Maybe Akron could think a little better of that. Might be trying to go for also some moto pressure too, leading into church perhaps, but still having a majority of their player base stacked up now in the blue hatch as well gets opened up from stock, forces ice cold away. Everything still looks to be hyper-focused on this one portion of the map, but as now Hennessy opens up the moto hatch, things could change sooner rather than later. Surprisingly, oh, the Cade, it activated! I was gonna say, surprisingly, the Cade trick was unsuccessful. No, it wasn't. It was successful. However, uh, as much bounty as that might have gotten you. Oh, Jetcon! Oh, okay, he does survive, he does back off. And so Akron will hold on to that advantage. Another gas canister is launched out there. It'll be unsuccessful. Still, we'll have to rotate somebody to go get Jetcon back up. The Thatcher is the one who accomplishes that. The Zoe is back in the fight. A little bit of a slowdown facing there, but Akron starting off, they've got the entry. All they've got, though, is two smokes and a couple of evil eyes here for the side of Converse because of that strong entry game done by Akron so far. But again... Only stacked up near blue. We could have a couple of few crossfires, and that could be enough to still get Converse this win. But someone slowly creeping their way through dirt. That's going to be I'm at. No information on the lone sledge. That could be big. Arv as well, getting droned out by Jobu too. If Thunder does not check for this, which thankfully he does, that could be a huge issue, but it's going to be IMAT to lead the charge from Dirt. Down goes Avian, five on two, only Thunder and BDA. And again, their position's well known. Arv cuts down yet another, leaving just the Maestro here. In this one versus four, 20 seconds to go. The plant at this point is imminent. Hennessy is in such a great spot to put ourselves in this post. It's really got to be a miracle play by BDA to stop this one. He finds a second, three versus one. Hyper extends forward, another one down for the Maestro. Three in total, just needs two more. Jetcon's already low. If he can isolate the Zofia, this could definitely be winnable for sure by BDA. He's still in full health. The only thing that would immediately kill him would be a headshot in his position being well known. Currently, though, not a heavy watch here so far in by Moto. BDA is just waiting for somebody to overextend, but doesn't look like Akron will try to contest him from a very close angle, more or less medium to long range engagements. He tries to outdo Hennessy, but cannot. Akron hold on and still get the first round as a win. That was a scary situation there. BDA almost being able to make it happen as he came alive in the one versus five. But eventually, Akron will close things down in the first round offense. Their blue take looking good, despite a nice pocket strat coming out there from Converse. I love the way they set up blue with the evil eyes, watching that pressure with the Tachanka constantly sending fire out as well. You think maybe if that Shumika had eliminated Jetcon, that situation could have gone to the favor of the Maestro. 1v1 looks a lot more doable than when you've got two attacker guns holding you off. And ultimately, Akron prevailed. They started off well as well. Excuse me. I think that's the most important note. The way that they began the round, they had the entry. They didn't suffer any kind of catastrophic failure. And largely, that's because Converse played pretty well reserved. They kind of played that more turtled up strategy. We saw on Bank. We saw on Chalet. They did extend quite often. And that was the majority of the problem. They gave Akron too much to fight for. One nice thing, though, about having only Thatcher to worry about is you can actually go for a bandit trick. The one counter argument, though, is with Noah Mai, this can A, allow for maybe Capitao in play, perhaps, to help with Raptors, but also a lot of nade potential, too, to actually throw over from CCTV window and actually kill Avon as he's trying to bandit trick, depending on the placement of general util of course and also where akron want to set up too because they could honestly ignore trying to go for cc balk if they want to just have zofia play for vertical converse should understand that's a big option for akron though especially since they have been bringing up the zofia a lot so in theory they should have somebody playing underneath near lobby but at the moment that does not look to be the case bda is on that first floor going for a heavy roam but at the moment it looks like he's more located towards strip but speaking of that bandit trick it's already being attempted and so far it works on one of the two walls but the second one will prevail. That's the trouble with the ace. It's really hard to bandit trick when you've got, you know, EMP grenades and you just throw those summits. It's no, you know, long two second deployment time like with, with your thermite. You just chuck them on there. The wall gets open and the bandit's job is unfortunately done for the day. 
You also did manage to save up on some of your EMPs as well, so you will have one to go ahead and open the wall into Garage as well. So the anti-breaching from Converse, relatively unsuccessful in this endeavor. However, another thing to note, Arv has already used up his three EMPs. He won't have any to try to potentially disable some of the ADS, making burning the player on rafters that much easier. And when your only burn is three flashes from Hennessy, that is a consideration. That defender might be a little too difficult to pince out here. I am at trying to apply a little bit of a cutoff from the West Main area. He's got Avian and BDA in close proximity. And now in terms of util, that hasn't been a big stable for Akron. What has been, though, is the ability to actually win those opening gunfights here, at least on Clubhouse so far. Now that Arb doesn't have to worry about any util to save up to help the hard reach, he can actually get very aggressive, try to go for those swings, maybe work a pick, and that's exactly what happens. He steps in a secret, catches Avian off guard, and now it's another five versus three. Arb finds two, just running at the defense. And now IMAT joins in on the fun, immediate five on two. It doesn't matter that right now we have Raptors still in the pocket of combat. They don't have a lot of other positions besides Lokira going for a hero play, and so far it works out. Both the SAS operators are gone, but still, a man advantage to find here for Akron, and now that Ice Cold is gone, it's only Lokirio on this Rome game. Things don't get much prettier in the end round there. Akron execute on their plan. The utility was flawless, and the clear pretty much the same. CV unable to put anything in their way, and their hold below inside lounge, it crumbled quickly. We're going to see them reattempt CCTV, try this one more time, and see if they might be able to implement a couple of changes. Avian, thinking about what operator he wants, he'll end up on the bandit as Ice Cold brings the Cade. Things are pretty much the same as the last composition. Not many notable changes. And so, the defense, are they going to be able to take this round when they haven't really done anything different and they're repeating the same bomb site? Not too sure. Maybe they will have, perhaps, I'm not even too sure what they would be able to change, at least in terms of hard destruction. Maybe just acknowledging that is going to be gone immediately could be something to dawn on here for Converse and then seeing what they can do to actually slow down Akron the rest of the way. Because again, I mentioned already did his job, so he can get aggressive and work for picks. Maybe having better team play to allow trades to be fluid for Converse, that could be something to change up. Or I don't even know after that point, maybe just better aggression in the early game, maybe killing one of those hard breaches to weaken that early presence by Akron. Uh, besides that, it most likely will be the exact same song and dance here for Converse, and we could potentially see a 3-0 and already for Akron. That just really spells doom when you're starting off so fundamentally strong on the attacking side of Clubhouse. And now you're again facing the same thing as last time. A simple CCTV hold with not much that can get complicated. Ice Cold playing with one claw in his back pocket. He's going to attempt the trick here. Might be a little bit more difficult now. First comes the EMP. Hennessy will... Try to go for it here. Ice Cold quickly tosses down the Electro Claw. Let's look for the second EMP. It's not there. Arv tried to save it. He tried to play economically here. Unfortunately, it's going to cost them one of the exothermics. And again, Ice Cold will continue to attempt the trick. But this time, there's only the one EMP. You don't have two to toss a second down and to stop the redeployment of the Electro Claw. This is going to become so challenging for Ice Cold. And it's a simple change like this, which is kind of upset the dynamic of the round. And we don't even have the Selmas deploying either. Ice Cold might be able to get the wall stopped, and he does, barely, oh. but it still works. Only a singular Selma charge left, but no EMPs. They've got to go for Vert. Akron understand this, so they have to get aggressive once again, but this time, they don't have that looming sense of pressure. We don't have Garage opened up. We don't have the main wall from Platt Balcony opened up either. Everything is looking much better for Converse. And honestly, if they can burn for a little bit more utility and not die, unfortunately, Thunder will actually fall first. This could be a very doable round for them. But at least IMAT is able to find some sort of opening. But there's the great trade as Ice Cold will get rid of Jetcon, one of your main and your only LMG player, now gone for the final 70 seconds. Well, Converse having slowed down Akron considerably. They're going to have to change the plan here. And R of stepping into a fragging role once again. He's done well from the Thatcher. I'm at rotating out of the dirt tunnel, getting back to the rest of the plan. Locurio still playing from top blue. This is going to be really challenging to execute on. Not having control of rafters yet ultimately may be the death knell. How are you going to clear this? You've got the four versus three. 
that might be kind of what you need to think about here. Maybe you're just going to sort of rush in from construction, try to go quick here, and that'll be the plan. However, BDA cuts down IMAT. The forced vault on that opening, unfortunately, makes things rather difficult and uncomfortable for IMAT. Three versus three. Back to an even situation with 30 seconds to go. Jobu has just rejoined Hennessy with Arv still sort of lurking below. Honestly, I don't know if the Thatcher is going to be able to accomplish anything here. And he's one of your most powerful players. He's the top fragger right now, still lurking around with the possibility of maybe coming up late towards red. I don't think Arv really knows what he wants to do. He's going to meet a grisly demise against Lokirio. And Hennessy and Jobu just have to walk into gas. And of course, they're going to die. What a great defense by Converse. And it was some of that early aggression that was able to be halted. That is what gave such an upper hand by Converse. Both walls being denied quite well via the Kaid trick and also the general bandit trick as well. Stopped R from having any major impact on that round. It came down to pure gun skill and general information, which at the beginning Akron looked okay in, but it was a trade by Ice Cold. Four versus four, Jack Con, one of your main staples to find those kills with the LMG now gone. It did come down to just that Intel game that I briefly mentioned, and that was very lackluster by Akron. They were running in blind, and we saw Converse completely punish them by cutting off key choke points, allowing a lot of bottlenecking, and also plenty of crossfire established by Converse as well. And it seems like we had that two-round head start by Akron, and now we've got Converse quickly to catch up so far. Sort of a similar situation, I think, to Bank with the way that had ended up playing out. But ultimately, this is kind of more dominant by Akron. You know, the, the first two rounds of Bank were very... They were kind of trolls by Converse. They were, you know, rounds that should have been close where they had an advantage of some sort and they couldn't close out. Akron in the first two of club, they were the one with the advantage, and they just simply ran until there were no more Commerce members. Now you've got that CCTV in the pocket. Converse have claimed a victory on the top floor, and they look to the basement now to kind of reinforce their position on a map that they didn't pick that they look sort of unsettled on. If they show us that they can defend Church, if they can make some adaptations, it shouldn't be too hard. Got the same realm by... Or not the same realm... Although they are a very Rome heavy team, they actually went for an anchor game first time on basement. And now they have, once again, adapted after getting a read on Akron in the first two feeler rounds. And they're going for a Rome this time. We've got IMAT already locating, I think it was Ice Cold's position, but he has now fallen back. Can rotate later on. No immediate aggression just yet, except for Secret Window, but Thunder isn't going to die. So not that big of a concern here. The first minute looks to be about the same by Akron, except they have more of a presence to deal with here on this top middle floor because now it's on an anchor presence. It's more of a Rome extension implemented by Converse this time around. A couple different things happening. Converse have Locurio. Of roaming with the shotgun. It is sort of a weirder thing to see for a roaming shotgun to be used by Converse. We saw what Locurio did on bank, though, and so I really don't have many reservations about his capabilities as he's feeling on fire right now, and his stats certainly back that up. Converse are going to need to do their due diligence in clearing this. They're going to be forced to kind of eventually choke down on what's happening here, and Locurio, if he wins any picks here, that's a win for the defense. However, he loses to IMAT, and so the advantage will drop. Second entry for Akron now. Continue to tread their way forward, at least for IMAT in general. Two in a row now, both three and four. Ice Cold is in kind of a make-or-break spot, though. Nobody's pushed around from the freezer door. So if anyone wants to open up this kitchen hatch, this could be a lot of damage dealt by Ice Cold. And especially with Akron having a relatively weak emphasis on this Intel game without the Jackal Inox scanners, this could actually be a huge power play done by Converse. But so far for Akron, looks like they'll go for another blue take and not put all that much heading in towards the side of Kitchen. So Ice Cold's sneak play here might not really get you as much value. And look at IMAT, look at his body language. I think they're aware of the vigil now. Yep, certainly yep. are. They've got the jackal mark on him. This is really, what do you do here for Ice Cold? You're going to rotate out, run back in through dirt? You can't really do that. But the time being as it is, this is one player that can't do anything, and Thunder comes up to support him, eliminates IMAT, now allowing the free rotation of Ice Cold. It's up to the defenders. They just need to hold off for a few moments here, allow the rest of the squad to rejoin. Plant being attempted by R, but Thunder down on the crotch pressure, and Jobu coming in as well. No more player inside of dirt, and BDA finally finished out. Ice Cold trying to go for the late drop. He dives down. Down blue, but gets killed out by Jetcon. And that time, at least, we 
Still had some sort of change up by Converse, but not enough to do anything. Still not able to really stop Akron on their slightly different play style of getting more pressure in blue. We had the same regular clear. This time, Lokirio could not go on an insane 3K. He was immediately dealt with by IMAT, a second entry for him. And then we just had a slow wither effect on by Converse, a lot of heavy isolation. There was some good team play, but having two people from both main stairs and also near the kitchen area, that did give a lot of information for Akron that they could get a bit more aggressive and try to charge their way into sight and only have to worry about a handful of people, especially the kitchen hatch not being opened up. We could only see that reposition happen from main, and I think with uh, Akron knowing that, they were able to set themselves up to have perfect coverage on the plant, and the only thing that caught them off guard was maybe just having Ice Cold drop the hatch, but it was a, a pretty much second trade once we saw the kill happen by Ice Cold as he dropped down, so really it was just a solid play outright by Akron in that last round. I honestly thought that was going to go to Converse, and they would be able to win it out, being that they had eliminated the Jackal. The time was rather low. But Akron, they just had like 5,000 people sitting in the back of Arsenal, and there was no way you were going to stop the plan. I think the one thing that probably would have won that round is if the, I think it was the Mozzie that was playing the bomb chassis of back Arsenal, if he had a C4, that probably would have gone to the defenders because there were so many players. They were all bunched up in that back corner by dummies, and a single explosive could have probably taken that one out of things here. Avian is sitting on cams? <laughs> inside server? I don't know what he was doing there, but uh, eventually he will rotate off as the Selma has created the opening. Not a lot of util placed up near cash room, but at least the wall was reinforced to buy some time. Akron, though, are already getting their eyes looked towards the uh, the wall of jacuzzi. Everything's looking pretty normal. Only having to worry about the mute as well. The heart destruction is going to go down with relative ease. So that's one nice thing to note here for Akron. And now they, they have a lot of time to maybe rotate onto the middle floor, walking up through main stairs. They could apply even more people to actually move around from cash room, perhaps, if they want to go for more of a default take inside of cons. And the one thing to note here is... We've got pretty much a standard stack up here by Converse near the site, except for BDA, who's currently going on a very heavy roam. If not checked properly, this could be big. Jobu's by himself. That could be one free kill if he has his back turned against the Valkyrie. And that could maybe the, the only thing that could allow Converse to actually take the edge against Akron right now, because they are looking very good in that first minute 30. Well, you do need we... to get kind of... I feel like the way that Akron have played is so free in the start of the round. When Converse don't have anyone that tries to stop that, you do kind of get a situation like this, which it does mutate. I'm out of shutdown, though. You've re removed him. They're going to try to just run in here. Look, here it doesn't have a rotate, which is kind of a strange choice for him. Hennessy is worried about the plant. You do have Thunder kind of running amok below. BDA is down there, too, and now they spotted out the plant, so the Thermite gets away. Locario with one on the shotgun. Hennessy is just trying to barely survive if he might. 50 seconds to go. Things are so chaotic. Hennessy's forced back, but Locario now eliminated. What is going on for BDA? So aggressive from the main stairs. Jetcon and Jobu can't do anything to trade this out right now. Despite the fact it's in a two versus two, and arguably the gun power is so much weaker on the defensive side. With 30 to go, Thunder's position now revealed it's really going to be on BDA to stop up the pressure. 20 seconds to go. Jetcon hops in, breaks the frost. Man, that won't be a problem, but what is a problem is BDA in the middle of bathroom. One versus two now. Jewish position. Known quite well for Converse here. 15 seconds to go. They've got the crossfire attempted, and Thunder lands a crisp free fire on the lone ace giving converse their second round on the defense so far and despite the aggressive setup by akron at least converse are able to hold on stop the plant from going down and just keep themselves in a stable position for the final 20 seconds so the question begins to dawn on you you know if converse have this third is this you know what you're looking out for on your opponent's map pick on you know something like clubhouse which is Kind of, it does go to the attackers in, in some fashions. I think on a, you know, team level, Akron have certainly played better. That last round was chaotic. Akron should have shut it down. It's a surprise that they didn't. But I think just given the general bedlam, the entire execute was under, it's hard to ask for that. 
and Converse, as they went on gym, they go back to CCTV. And you think, okay, lessons learned. Last time that Cade Claw was such a problem. How are we going to move past that knowing that we only had the three EMPs? That was not even near enough last time, fella. I think focusing solely with your EMPs is not a good option here for Akron. But with their lineup, it definitely seems like they're not going to have a lot to stop at least the general Kai trick that isn't with just those EMPs. I'm looking more towards the plat wall. They want to get that open first and have somebody either play in lobby again with the Zofia or have somebody out on the balcony with grenades. But only one set of grenades and only a set of flashes, it's going to be very challenging to actually have enough to burn through all the ADSs and then kill the bandit outright, if not just break his battery. So the util game, at least in terms of secondary gadgets, looks very little here for Akron. And again, they're just relying so heavily on this EMP game that it definitely does lead my mind to a lot of worry rather than actual, I would assume, a contempt here moving on here goes the first of many bandit tricks at least one of the two walls has get opened up but still something is better than nothing for both converse and acra you've got a side of the wall open as well which might just help with kind of getting a bit of extra pressure on top of the cade he's not able to play so freely there as the entry comes early in the round against thunder the jaeger did he die in bottom garage i'm not even really sure where he fell away from Oh, I think, I think I see his gun at the garage door, so that must have been what happened there. I guess he tried to get aggro, tried to go for a peek. Anyway, here comes the EMP grenades on the other side of the wall. Now they're going to try to deny this with lifelines. I like the idea. However, in execution, it's going to work. The Electro Claw unsuccessful this time, and the adaptation, I think that might have been more so on the timing of Ice Cold and the second EMP grenade being enough there. With the Selvas having destroyed the wall early, Arv had enough EMPs, and they will not be able to keep either of those two walls fully closed comes the transition as well by akron already having the main advantage they want to remove any presence in this first floor and then they can just slowly work their way up for both platform wall maybe actually hopping in through red as well depending on how much utilists still have to spare but maybe it's more or less just going to be that default garage play as well a good crossfire that gives avian a refrag on the imap but still a lot to be done here in these final few moments and jetcon now finding their second does bring back the advantage in this final minute there's Ice Cold. He's still kind of hanging out inside. Rafters finally will perish. Three versus two. BDA left uncleared. This is a free kill against the Thatcher. What is he shooting at? BDA, I think he might have just flicked his mouse or something. Anyway, does kill Arv. Should be able to recover and move back to the site. Lucaria with two babes left in 40 seconds to try to hold back. Jobu does not have breaching charges, though. And he can't really make an entryway beyond that window, which should be in full view for the Valkyrie. BDA rotates below. The C4 will be crucial here. But in the same right, Jobu also dropped down in a curious change of positioning. Got to be careful how much time you allot to certain decisions. Jetcon monitoring the cross, making sure nobody moving up from inside cash. And he might try to step through the breach here. Killing the Valkyrie would be crucial. Things get tough, but the Sophia does shut down one. And there's the second from Jetcon as well. Akron so potent in the first half offense. And they will garner the 4-2 as we move into the second half. And although some of the intel game was a bit off once again for Akron, at least they had the overall gun power to get their way against Converse. We had Jet Con just picking the perfect mold to go for those swings on every single occasion. He got the first blood, and he just continued that exact same pressure. Even having the concussive blast to stop a K-trick, and by a hair, it was quick enough to make sure they get that garage wall opened up. With the general breach capabilities not being a problem anymore for Akron, they had much more to work with and didn't have to put all of their eggs in the basket of just a first floor clear, which was very dominant for Converse in their last attempt. But sides finally switching, Akron now the defense, Converse on the attacking side. We get to see Jim in bedroom as the first site in defense for Akron now, funny enough, and not the default of Church and Arsenal. So I, I like the decision for Akron. Go here, Jim bedroom is... Uh... You know, it's it's got its advantages over CCTV, certainly. One of those being you can extend over into cash. When you play CCTV, you can extend into master bedroom. That doesn't really always help. No, not when the attackers are doing a rafters clear. And unfortunately, that's just the reality of things here. Jim is a little bit easier. The offense, they can't ignore cash. I mean, some, some teams certainly will do it. Just open up jacuzzi and kind of go simple into the gym side. However, that can pro... Um, prone to 
Catsock. That can prove to make your sight kind of a little bit weaker because there's a long angle you get on the gym window. If you don't have the coverage and you've got somebody in CCTV, yada, 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 you can kind of get exposed. For Converse here, they're thinking up on the rooftop initially. They've also got Avian. I believe he's over on the CC wall. He's created kind of that main entry point. You will see this a lot. Teams just open this wall, get the sight line, and be done with it. Up and a decent time, too. Again, having the Thatcher, it definitely does burn through a lot of the time crunch that goes about of doing a normal Mav trick, having the Zofia open up the wall, and then still having to worry about another wall like either Jacuzzi, which what Avian is opening up right now, or having the uh, the garage wall when you're going for more of a of a CCTV attack, of course. But currently, this being gym bedroom, that's something to not worry about for the moment. So at least the hard reach department is still looking good for not only Akron on their first half, but Commerce on the second half. And the opening kill is going to favor the attack once again as Locurio gets rid of Arv early on. That really will help you out here. Converse has not been nearly, not even close to as successful as they were in the entry department back on bank. Things were fairly even. Um, there were, I, mean, I would say, slightly favored to Converse on Chalet. Akron have been in the driver's seat for the majority here, and JetCon trades out Locurio. That was the alibi just sort of walking up the main stairs and taking a battle with the player out on the jacuzzi belt. JetCon tries that for a second time, and this go-around, it's unsuccessful. Ice Cold putting one in. Hennessy tried to come back through. Surprise, surprise, BDA is behind the desk. He's on a killing spree. I'm at will gun down one, and he gets a second here. Things looking winnable. Ice Cold attempting to play it. The coverage should be no trouble at all. They're going to play this one extremely passive from the post. And things become very difficult for IMAT, who needs to win a majority of these gunfights and needs to really do it in a quick fashion as well. No time to dawdle. BDA prone out on the balcony. As soon as IMAT steps, it should be clear. However, the Sophia will kind of give up the gambit. The Jaeger might be able to race across the hall. He won't try it. And Converse have the first round of attack. Second time as well, having the LMG be just way too suppressive there. For the defense, we had the opening kill favor Locurio. That was fine. There was eventually a trade, but we had to see that rotation still happen by Akron, and they weren't quick enough to do so, and they just got caught at a bad time. Then we saw BDA just kind of walk into Logi, whether it be through the hatch or hopping in through Khan. I believe it was actually the former, not the latter, and he was just holding down M1 and winning those gunfights. Two versus one at that point, and it actually was a 4v1, then turned 2v1, but it had to be a retake still against the LMG and potentially a sledge who's either sitting outside of the balcony or playing underneath the hatch for a grenade play. Yeah, that is just too much to handle in any given circumstance with the way Converse were set up. Now heading in towards CCTV and cash room, it's going to most likely be up to Akron to try to make sure they don't get themselves in a vulnerable spot to let that post plant position uh, happen once again because Converse are almost always a team that can lock out in that post plant position very well, even against Akron. I think it's worth discussing you know, the differences that you have here between the way the Converse defended this and the way that we see it held here by Akron, they have swapped out the Jaeger as well as the Bandit instead bringing in an operator like Cade and Thorn, or not really the Cade, he was there too for Converse, he was a big operator then, but the Thorn, um, the Maestro, I don't think we really saw in that defense as well. The Thorn is the one that sticks out to me the most as... Jetcon, is this just a comfort pick for him? I get it. You got a shield. You know, that's helpful to have below. Um, the utility of Thorn, the Razor Blooms, is something I have kind of gone back and forth on. I feel like if you use it right, there is a use case. You know, you can. What does Ice Cold know? I know you're there, Matt. Where is Matt? Is he in dirt or something? And on some on some rat angle? God knows where he is. In the <laughs> oh, basement. He, was. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been dirt. Yeah, that could have potentially been it. 1.5, definitely optional. Oh, Arv's going to fall back. And does he have time for the K-Clip trick? Nope. He was expecting someone out near the uh, the breach. Or not the breach, sorry, CCTV window. So, yeah, the wall's going to get opened up immediately. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But that's the pressure I was talking about. I mean, Akron did it a different way. Converse went for the more, uh, the standard take. It still worked, though. Walls opened up at a good time. So, nothing to complain about here for Converse. Yeah, it's really hard to trick that when you're trying to go for Cade. You've got you know, hard breach on both sides of the wall. You've got EMPs coming in as well. just becomes tremendously difficult. The fact that the first Selma actually broke the Cade Claw as well and allowed the full opening. I mean, look at that wall. Only a slight portion of it is reinforced. And Locurio leads off. He eliminates R from the balcony. The Cade exposes himself to that breach angle 
one of the crucial flaws of this defense and one of the big kind of no-nos that you're not supposed to do when you defend CCTV and cash. Let's see how well BDA can now do potentially with the LMG. So far, it's not needed. Ice Cold gets one. Nate is thrown. Nothing to deny Jeez. it. Hennessy full blind. Yeah, a bit overkill. Avian even finds the frag before a Nate ends up putting in Hennessy six feet under. But still, five versus two. Jack Khan eventually finished off, leaving just IMAT and Jobu. IMAT may find one, but it's still a very daunting task to accomplish. But Jobu... Maybe able to find something here. Slow walking down red spots out the arms of somebody, but has to retreat as the toxic canisters are very valuable for these final 40 seconds. Shouldn't be too tough for Converse now with 40 to tighten their grip. Oh, crucial missed shot. If I'm at it, one that three versus two looks possible. Now you've got the opening. A C4 comes out. It gets one and it downs another. Nobody is there on rafters to revive immediately getting Thunder back into the fight. So a two versus two is about to be had. BDA with the LMG knows the smokes up here on the stairs. And another goes down as well. The backside of the smoke spotted. Somehow BDA has not yet killed the smoke who pops up and running out of ammunition with the shotgun. But on the assist, I'm Matt and the smoke clutch up. How did they just lose that two versus five? It's something that happens quite frequently in those final few moments, not gathering information and not understanding how much utility is left for Akron on that defense. A nitro cell and a few smokes are all that you need to dislodge an entire push like that. That's all that was required, especially by IMAT. He was really doing wonders just by himself on the mute, and Jobu just kind of there as a public figure, I suppose, as the smoke. More or less, he was trying to pretend to be public enemy number one when it was the other way around. It was the other SAS operator in that dynamic duo. But still, everyone just kind of jumping the gun. Oh, 40 seconds. We've got the wall open. We can go for plant. We have the coverage. You really don't because no one's there to truly flush out the mute because they have a C4 they can play with range. And Jobu has the toxic smokes as well. Although we did have somebody in lobby, they were too slow to push up and just outright whiffed when they were given the opportunity, allowing a crossfire to be established. And I'm at to completely flush out Converse there. And now they're looking to potentially find a match point if they get another round in their back pocket here for Akron. Things are looking as close as they've ever been in the best of five with that trolled round on CCTV. We're going to go to Jim. We're going to see if the chaos can be tamed by Akron. It wasn't really last time. Jetcon tried to do too many things. He was sort of juggling positions, and uh, it was really on BDA who dropped into logistics and was just uh, being a, a, a terror. I mean, they could not shut him down, and... All the players trying to rotate, they were just walking into the LMG, ultimately made things terribly difficult for Akron to finish that round out. It's not a match point situation yet, and Akron, they're going to have to prove to us that they can outlast you, that they can fight us into map number four, and that Converse will not complete any kind of a comeback. Looks to be a replication so far for Converse's play style, but for Akron, they've got a bigger setup stacked near it looks to be both cash and cctv room i feel like they gave away a lot of map control for free in that department so it does make a little bit of sense they want to hold out inside of a cash room for a bit longer perhaps and then fall back but still it doesn't seem to really impair converse all that much they get the jacuzzi wall opened up they already had cc wall opened up too so everything going according to plan still for the offense as akron will now have to once again try to readjust and see what they can get away with in terms of trickery and it's just really about kind of being patient, playing your own game here on this gym site, which is so tentative. You know, you can lose, you can win this site in an instant. Here comes some burn. They want to get rid of that deployable shield. They're going to do it with the Selma as well. It's just actually kind of a creative choice. Save those nades potentially for something you might be able to do with them later. Now you're not going to have as much cover. Arv is still hiding behind this table. IMAT will join him as well. Ice Cold is in the bathroom. The Sledge has just sort of entered and made his presence. No, the Thorn will walk right into it. It's got to be so frustrating for IMAT to just suddenly realize, hey, there is an attacker in here with us, and Lokirio cleans up onto Arv as well. Jobu is in a really tough spot. How can he play inside Master when he's got an attacker waiting for him in the bathroom? Hennessy on the rotate on over, Jetcon trying to hold off this below. However, the attacker will sneak on in, Lokirio beginning the plant. There's no explosive for Jetcon. His chances to deny the plant are going to be off game sense entirely. He will not try to deny it from below. 
Now in a two versus four post plant position, it's looking quite dire for Akron. Doesn't seem like they'll be able to get match point just yet, but maybe with the DMR, no, not the DMR, but just in general, the weaponry they have could be enough to get rid of Thunder. Doesn't seem to be the case though. He's still quite comfortable in Jacuzzi and he's gonna find the last two of the round, the exact opposite of what I had maybe tried to guesstimate there. The Alibi not getting aggressive enough and that will give Converse another chance to stall out for match point. But in general, that last second shock calling there, Reese, I got to admit, was so impressive. I mean, I guess they figured out that there was still a lot of that extension happening over in Cash Room. They could not extend over from Con into Master quickly enough, which allowed Ice Cold just to hop in the bathroom, get the opening kill. Lokiri was there to join him, and then instant. Five versus two, nothing you can do in that spot. No denial for the plant. Tons of coverage by the offense. That was basically just a round over and done with once we saw Ice Cold hop in the bathroom, Reese. I agree with you completely. Ice Cold won the, that round, no questions asked. Just jumping in, like all the defender positions are anchored solely on not losing bathroom. You know, behind the bed in the corner, the rotation from gold, everything is dependent on not losing bathroom. So when that goes away, it's, it's game over, nearly. Uh, your ability to respond is just so slim. The rotation was too late. You can you really blame the players? They were told to hold cash, and the bathroom player didn't do their job. Yep. So, although it's not going to be an advantage for Converse just yet, at least they're not looking down the gumbrel of match point. And funny enough, depending on if they actually counted their util and changed up their playstyle a smidge on CCTV for their attack, they would actually be in the lead right now, theoretically speaking. But with that not being a reality, it's still Akron to have that small lead up, and they are going to try to reattempt Jim in bedroom. I don't think we've seen them place church yet. No, they have not opted to go church yet, funny enough, for Akron. I really want to know why, but I guess they want to try to get all of the weaker sites out first and then play the basement. That could be it, perhaps. Well, we're still waiting on a few things to finish up there, and so we're going to continue to pause and we're going to continue to talk. Converse, I think, have started to gain some of the momentum. I was thinking about this in the first half, right? You know, we discussed the fact that generally your club is going to be a little more friendly to the attackers, and just with the way that both of these rosters have played, don't get me wrong, I have loved the way that Akron have played on club. It's been so refreshing to see them very dialed in, working together. Things are not as isolated as they were on bank. And now we've got... You know, the second half, Converse are starting to get into some of the motions here. They haven't completely made the comeback yet. They're still in the deficit. I think there's a realistic chance that they might come in here. It's on Akron coming back from the pause to shut it all down. It's a good chance of that. I mean, again, sometimes Converse can be a bit of a slow starting team. They need to truly understand what their opponents are bringing to the table. That can be said for a lot of teams. And we saw that. Roughly in the first half, we had two rounds immediately by Akron. Then Converse kind of clapped back a little bit. Then it was more of a back and forth than what we had seen in both map one and two. So far, Clubhouse looks to be a bit more even footing for both teams. And I mean, we did see almost a fifth map last time these two teams played in uh, the grand finals. I mean, things did get relatively close on Clubhouse for map four. And Villa was actually that win for Converse running up to bring us to a fourth map the last time. So maybe that's why we had Clubhouse earlier. Maybe in case Akron could get the uh, the 3-0. and They were expecting to dominate Converse once again. I can't blame them for that. But so far, that has really not been true. Even now when they have the advantage, it's only by one round. It's nothing too shocking. It is just a very close matchup between both Converse and Akron as of now. Yeah, they've been kind of fighting neck and neck, and they've been trying to hold one another back. Akron have started to slow down a little bit. I think it can be attributed to the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, they have not really been very successful in the rotation when they lose an advantage, which it kind of reminds me of some of the problems that they had on bank. When they would lose the advantage, they would really lose it. When they would hold on to it, it looked kind of fine. That's been similar on Clubhouse, except for the fact that they have really pressed the advantage when they've held it. It hasn't been underwhelming whatsoever unless they lose it and they start to kind of roll down the hill. Well, like we mentioned a moment ago, Jim and Bedroom as a reattempt. This site has not looked good at all when it's been in play for Akron on their defense. Maybe having more of an emphasis on the breach denial, though, that could maybe change it, perhaps. They have both the Mute and the Kai this time, so it could take more seconds for Thunder to actually do his work with the EMPs, and also that could allow for Lokiria to not be able to do his job as well. But Arv does have a K-Claw in the back pocket, but not in the position to actually K-Trick 
just yet. He tried getting aggressive to maybe kill somebody in Lodgy Hatch. That Nitro is going to completely miss, so he'll change places. And now he could try to maybe trick the back wall. But still, Seeds TV is already opened up. So now it's just one portion of the map that Converse has to worry about for the time being. Again, we'll see the relationship between the EMPs and all of the different hard-breaching assets. It has been just impossible to stop this so far. Avian. Did Avian just lose an exothermic because he was too he was too quick putting it down? I think that's what happened. It's kind of unfortunate there. And that might have just trolled the hard breaching entirely. That's rough. That is really you can't do that. What what he tried to do was when you're when you're K triggering the wall with the thermite, you kind of have to chase it almost. You have to like start putting it down on the wall as the Cade is still electrified, and then the EMP grenade kind of it, it comes up and it stops it. And there is the timing you have to work with there. Fortunately, it misses out. <laughs> They're out of EMP grenades. The good thing is, as long as you can waste the Surya Gate, you might be able to get some kind of like a nade back here. And otherwise, I don't know what you're going to do without it. Looks like that'll be the option here for Converse, but Arv has a Cade Claw still. Depends if we're going to have a second nade immediately tossed. That's the big question here, oh. and it might have happened, but Ice Cold still dies, and no. That was not the outcome we were expecting. We had Ice Cold die with the second nade in pocket, but at least there was a trade. Still, not having Jacuzzi Wall opened up, you can kind of play near that highway position here for Akron, and that gives them a lot more to play with here in this final 50 seconds, but it looks like we have Converse trying to find that four versus three, maybe killing Hennessy, but it doesn't look like they have a full understanding of where the is playing at up until now. Here comes the chase. BDA really needs this kill, and if he can get support from Avian as well, the Aruni running out of ammo, showing the drawback of that Roni weapon. Hennessy perishes. Jetcon and Jobu, despite the fact that Akron did the best job possible in stopping the breach, they ultimately just get absolutely flattened. Jobu left in the clutch. BDA surging forward. Locurio completing the objective. The Echo forced out into the open, has to rotate, has to try to make his move. He's got the bearing nine. He's got the close range potential, but he's shut out by Thunder Converse despite overwhelming odds, despite the Util going absolutely awry, still win the round and they tie the score. The wall just simply not needed. Every now and again, you'll see a round where it's just going to be down to how well you can win your gunfights. And that simply was it there for Converse. They had crossfires established. They had multiple people pushing in from the same direction and Akron, were, once again, very isolated. That's the problem we have seen them run into time in and time out throughout this entire series and some of their other matches as well outside of the Collegiate Championship. And we have Converse, once again, just punishing them for that sole reason alone. CCTV and Cash Room, now one of the last few sites we'll get to see here on Clubhouse. We are edging towards the uh, final few moments here of the regulation stand-up. There is a good chance we see overtime, but if not, I mean... Probably one of the only few sites we will get to see. And once again, Reese, really shocked that we don't have Church in play for Akron, and I can't quite put my finger on as to why. I wonder if it might be Akron thinking the bottom floor is just such a direct take. All the sites on this map are very one-dimensional. Like, you approach it so simply. The thing is, about that bottom floor site... You know, we have seen a great job done in that pass round with the hard breaching. Akron have had a good round with the Cade Claw, with the tricking and all that. Converse have had a good one too. But also, on the other side of it, you go down to the basement site, right? How can you realistically stop the breach? You know, it's going to happen. You can try to impact trick it. You know, we saw that in the, in the grand finals of CR6, the match we keep referencing that happened last Friday between these two rosters. You know what happened? They just brought a fuse. They just sat the fuse <laughs> down, and they shot it off, and there was no defenders below, of course. They didn't want to get blown up by the, um, the, the cluster charge, and, and that was just that. That would be my uh, thought for why we haven't seen it yet. No wall denial for Platt, and Hennessy is not K-tricking. So this is going to be instant, uh, I guess, instant destruction for Converse in both battles. Maybe not checking for Jetcon, though. I think they just droned him, so that's not going to be a problem either. So immediate intel, immediate wall breach. Everything is looking phenomenal for Converse in the early game. And now Jetcon's got to make that decision whether he wants to fall back or not. Looks like he will eventually fall back. He thought about it for a moment, but 
figures it's better to play behind the shield maybe stop somebody from pushing in from lobby and garage wall and that could be an even more powerful position there for akron but ice cold with a brilliant nade gets rid of jaeger and once again it's a five on four favoring converse and the offense here for the valkyries has objectively been better in the utility department they have just been delivering results across the board. The hard breaching is hard to stall, you know, other than that one gym round that we have, which was sort of the fiasco that we'll ignore moving forward. Because we're thinking about CCTV and we're thinking about the victories that have been taken by this Converse roster. Still have Hennessy on the rafters. You've got support from Jetcon below. This is a hard-hitting weapon. Ice Cold gets in, and unfortunately, the Thorn might have missed her moment. Thunder has just ran in the breach. It just sprinted forward and eliminated Hennessy. Thunder now choking on the toxic gas. Spots the smoke Ooh. on a sliver of health. Will win the fight, not making another one happen. But Jetcon has to come up with some kind of play, and Converse are now on championship and title point. An even stronger position as well, held out by Converse Akron, letting them get away with a lot more stuff in that round. It was, like I mentioned, it was in the first minute or minute 10, we had Converse open up the wall and get a grenade kill to have the five on four. And then after that, they smoothly walked into sight because nobody expected somebody without even clearing out rafters or even lobby to push the breach. So they forgot about it, and that was the golden opportunity for Thunder to not only find one kill, but two. A lot of your denial for the plant now gone, and a lot of your man advantage or player base is completely diminished to nothing at that point. You basically dwindled down to atoms at that point, even less than that. And at that point, Akron couldn't do much except get aggressive, and they were met by several different gun barrels, all by Converse, waiting for them to just get out dueled at that point. Match point and series point, like you had mentioned here for Converse, they need one more clean round. That's it, but it's on considered the best, if not at least one of the best sites here on Clubhouse, Church and Arsenal. One black sheep bomb site we haven't really gone to so far. I mean, that's if you would uh, help go along with me here and ignore what is far in stage, which is just not getting played in the series. <laughs> for the basement, I don't know. Converse have just been so quick-witted with how they've removed utility. They're not going to use the fuse. They have two sets of impacts. I'm mad and Hennessy do have the potential to stop some of the hard breaching. And you've got Hibana banned here as well. So, excuse me, realistically, it's going to be the ace and the secondary breaching equipment from Avian. That's up to stop it. The good thing is you might not have fuse. You do have the Candela's. Fellow, it is considerably more difficult to impact trick when you can't see what you're throwing at. That's a good point. Maybe we'll have that be some sort of way for Converse to get the walls opened up, or they'll ignore it. Maybe go for more of an aggressive type of play. But with Ice Cold playing for Vert near Kitchen Hallway, I would assume they would actually want to go for more of a push leading in towards one of these two hatches. Maybe more or less a moto than triple wall with a good chunk of players stacked up in blue that could be it maybe they don't want to risk it hopping down through the area of kitchen hatch perhaps but two secondary hard breach that could allow all the hatches to still be opened up even with a cage trick on the board so there is really good options for every single thing except maybe even more vert pressure because ice cold is the first to die via the hand of R. got started and it's a big round for Akron to score the impact kill in C4 up, but it's caught on the rim of the hatch. Oh, if that had gone got a, up above. He's on mute. He'll be joining back shortly. There he is. That was uh, very possibly... That might have made this disaster for Converse. That C4 just caught on the rim, just barely almost up to the top line. However, for Akron now, they're going to have to do something beyond that. The kitchen hatch is dormant. They might not try to apply the pressure here. They might try to go for more of a church pressure. I don't hate this idea. Got the Salmas coming down. Locurio monitoring the wall. In the deficit, though, Converse are going to have to figure out something. They've still got a player confident on the flank watch. EDA just sort of holding the line over on that blue side. Some intel off to work with as well. Avian not really having a fantastic game. It would be a big round for him to get active in. Here go the Candelas. Starting to send him down. Joe Boo, oh, he loses his life. Jetcon is there on the trade. Such an important kill to stay alive with. And Arv comes in as well. Arv for three. Avian is last alive. Things are going to overtime. 
And on a map to do it as well, I expected this one to happen. And now we get to go pass through the plus 12 position just simply based off of not enough pressure, I suppose, lying in through blue and the late usage of those candelas. It took a long while for Converse to properly position themselves to actually be able to flush out Akron in a meaningful way. And because it took them so long and because they weren't aware of our general position, they lost way too much life to continue onward in an advantageous position. Akron essentially stealing that round away from Converse because like you mentioned, they even killed Jobu, yet it was not enough to even stop the Kaid from just winning his ones. And to think about it, maybe even having Ice Cold with no grenades to flush out anybody playing super close, that could have been a small thing that went a long distance there for Akron to hold on and now go back to Church and Arsenal for a second time in a row. Sort of saving this for the crucial moment in the game, and despite the fact that it is a little bit of a close round there and Converse come to the execute and they looked prepared, ultimately they're stopped dead in their tracks by the good play of the Cade. An operator we won't see chosen by Akron as they go back down to the bomb site. I, I don't really know why that is that you would choose to swap off of him. Maybe they feel like the hard breach stopping it is really not going to be entirely up to the Cade. We know those claws are so easily cleared. Maybe you're just going to sort of rely on using the impact grenades alone. Well, we didn't have a major emphasis on the kitchen hatch breach, so... Not too sure how well the impact trick is, is going to be required here, unless Converse completely change up how they want to play this round in particular. But they do still have the option to get all three hatches opened up. They've got Avian with secondary breach, this time on the zero, because again, he was not banned. So now Avian kind of go for the, the comfort pick, and right now he might need it. Currently three and nine. Hasn't been all that alive in comparison at number one and two. Maybe that could be something to help them out. C4 pre-place. That could allow another opening kill to favor Akron. And just that little nudge in the right direction really turned into a huge gain of momentum. But it gets triggered too early. Ice Cold will survive and continue this vertical pressure. Having zero in here for Avian as well. Even the cams. None of them he's set down yet. I don't know what he might be saving them for. Maybe some use in the late game. Avian will come in, quick pressure against the hatch. Don't even really need the EMP grenades here. There's nothing to stop it, but they're ready for a trick even if there wasn't one. It's good discipline. Now with the Moto hatch open, we'll see Avian transition. Get that blue pressure as well. Don't want a defender to just be sort of lurking below. I'm out is forced back. I would watch out for Converse maybe to try to use, I would say some late pressure through dirt, but... I don't know. That's not really something they've got available to them right now. With one of the walls open, Locario does have a remaining Selma he could use to develop that. You'll remember earlier in the game, there was the round where Imat crept through the back of dirt and ultimately just cut up the side and won them the round in that first half. So, Ice Cold still searching. I think he's looking for a Valkyrie camera. I haven't spotted it just yet, but time is running low. I think we had both the impact trick on Kitchen Hatch and also Arv shooting some of the Selma charges. So no vaultable hole. Jobu can still play quite close on triple wall. And honestly, the great heads up play by Akron in both walls is going to be quite favorable. Jobu even wins the entry duel as well. Things are looking phenomenal for this team. But at least Thunder is there to get a refrag. Four versus four in the final moments of this round. Lokirio gets rid of Jobu and that's a big opening leading in the site. Here's your moment. BDA onto Arv. That LMG, that sufficient power, but Jetcon comes in on the close range bout. 35 seconds. Two versus three pressure. Will the defense be able to outlast here? Locurio thinking about the plant, thinking about getting in towards Black Box. They've got the deployable as well here. Defender Utility working ultimately against them. And Ice Cold will TK. He shoots Thunder. Hopefully that's not going to troll the round. Locurio. Does successfully get the plant down. He's got that potential. Trying to keep away from the LMG. He won't do it. And so Sledge taking damage. He's forced to back up. But killed by Jetcon. An expert retake between Hennessy and Jet. Ultimately pushes Akron onto match point. Being able to kill the player in blue. Isolate him out. And then a team kill. To give you the heads up, you know somebody's still on the plant because it didn't get denied via the team kill, and you know someone will probably be in the middle of main stairs, if not huddling up next to that player on the plant was just enough information for Akron to get aggressive and still win those gunfights. Fantastic team play by the defense, but I cannot say the same for Converse. Although they were able to quickly adjust, get the back wall opened up to go for a plant, 
they really fumbled the bag by not having anybody try to play for Moto, having someone just dogpile onto the ace planting and then getting in the way of ice cold. It just seemed like there were maybe too much comms that were cluttering everything. And that changed up how Converse were going to play out the rest of that round because they had the man advantage and they knew somebody was in blue and maybe a person stacked up near dummies, perhaps working in towards main hall. That really should have been a round win there for Converse yet. They just make one silly mistake and it just, it's a blunder out of all things to have. That's just not the right round for that to happen. I mean, you cannot afford to let that mistake come in such a important round. What a blunder there by Converse, who might have just given away their moment to step on a match point, and it might have allowed Akron the opportunity to bring us on to Villa to go to map number four. Though Villa is Converse's pick, we know comparatively Akron are still a strong team on that map with the cider being left up to Oregon. Who knows how that one will end up going. Avian is back on his bandit tricking. We'll see what he might be able to stop up here. It's going to be difficult. We've already established that. The EMPs have been absolutely on top of it so far. We'll send a drone in first. Avian sort of trying to bait things out here. Tennessee prepared for the exothermic. There goes Avian. Ice cold as well. So they could trick the wall completely and with there being a barricade too that's going to stop the lifelines from connecting so at this point you you need somebody to go and play probably across the balcony but again akron have been avoiding that position like the plague i matt finally might change that derivative though here comes the emp avian breaking both bandit charges can now go for the selma it gets denied he the might second have thing this. as well the exothermic he might have it he does a big play for avian and just again the coordination just somehow not being there for akron they jumped the gun once again that is not the round to mess up the simple concept converse i don't think i've really gone away and done that the wrong way in oh. the bandit tricking department and now a selma lost as well you're reduced to just uh, just about zero hard breaching. If Hennessy has left one exothermic, that's going to be your only tool to accomplish this job. And the Habana ban, ultimately coming in here for Akron, not having the extra breaching equipment, and combined with Converse, the fact that they have cut away Maverick. It's such a common ban, but one that's had such tremendous impact. Here goes the EMP. They're going to try to sort of fool the Cade. Hennessy detonating on the exothermic creates that opening. Ice cold is down first. That helps to make up for the failed trick. And at least the bait with the EMP worked too. Potentially full garage control. 50 seconds remain. Converse will back up besides Thunder. He has a bit of info fed towards him, but the same thing can be said for Akron. So Thunder will go for the wise decision of falling back. But BDA does the opposite. And I don't think they're aware of him in the middle of oil pit. This could be a great way to kill somebody as they walk up those stairs. Jobu might have the intuition to go and swing for it. Arv gets downed off screen, but no one's aware of BDA's position. He misses the fight though, but at least Thunder and Locurio find something in these final 30 seconds. Those Converse picks are coming in so clutch right now. Thunder alive and working his pressure. The Bandit untamed in the middle of the bout. Jobu tries to jump in, looking for the fight, but Hennessy will shut him down. Massive pressure for Akron here. They need to win these last two. BDA working the flank. Hennessy has the bomb. He can go for the objective play. They're going to be able to pinch out the Jaeger, and it's ultimately Hennessy, the clutch master, who will push us on to Villa. 8-6, hard fought is the only way to describe what just happened on Clubhouse. A very close call and a very different story from what we saw in both mat number one and two, but a well-needed change of pace and scenery for Akron, that is for sure. Finally getting a win and not being sent home with completely empty pockets here tonight. They get one map win so far against Converse, but they need to keep that transition over into Villa or it'll be all for not Reese. Well, with the way that Akron came into that second half, just kind of changed the way the game was played, got into overtime, ultimately Converse's mistakes adding up to a lost map and forcing us to go to Villa this one feels like it has the potential to maybe for the first time go all the way here. We have not seen a map five in any of the grand finals for this collegiate R6 ecosystem so far across the preseason tournament, the three stages of, C of CR6 and CEA even as well. As we look next to Villa, this map could make or break the series. We'll see you after the break.
An Akron roster with an entirely new vigor come up against a roster of Converse Valkyries who have never played Scrappier. Welcome back to the R6CC Grand Finals. We're here and we're getting ready for what is going to be probably the toughest map in this series. It's map number four. Both of these rosters have something incredible to fight for. And we did talk about this map a lot, expecting to be the third one, not the fourth one. But now we get to go here and reiterate 
all the stuff we mentioned a few moments ago, Reese. This was the one map in the entire Grand Final series that we had Converse actually beat Akron. Believe it to be 7-5. to five. I don't think we went to overtime in that matchup, but still a close game nonetheless. And we got that exact same treat on Clubhouse, so I'm not expecting anything different except maybe who wins that matchup. It might be Converse to take this 4-1, to or not 4-1, to one, but 3-1 to one in the fourth map. Might not see a fifth map, but it's definitely on the drawing board, especially after what we saw in Clubhouse. It's going to be really on Akron. If they want to get to the decider, if they want to regain that opportunity to go for the three-peat, to win in CA, to win in CR6, and to get the victory here in R6CC, they will need to prompt us onto Oregon, and they're going to have to fight their way through Villa, which we know can be a good Akron map. It really depends if they've got that same vitality that we know got them through Clubhouse. It was missing as we started out on Chalet and Bank. Something happened on Club that has turned their play style around and I'm looking at I'm at and Jetcon to really set the stage they are going to be so important if they can be successful on the entry here they can really shut up Converse well as we go into Villa of course with both teams now being ready we could take a look at the bands perhaps in terms of operators and uh get to see what's on the board here we might get to see funny enough the zero band once again although it was not a thing on Clubhouse you don't need a general flank watch on a map like Clubhouse, um, except with just your drones, of course. So on a bigger map like Villa, where that roam game can last basically the entire round, maybe getting rid of the Zero or a Nomad could be an option here for Akron, but we'll have to wait and see. No, it'll be the Flores instead. Very default ban, very good ban, but not the Zero that I was potentially expecting tonight. Yeah, that does kind of change the way that this might work out. We've got Converse up next in the veto structure. Let's see what they take out. It's probably going to be something like maybe Habana and Valkyrie. It's actually Thatcher that they will go ahead and remove. I was uh, glad to see that Thatcher really made things kind of interesting on Clubhouse. Not an operator you see come through all the way. And I love the dynamic that Thatcher allowed between the attackers trying to clear out all this utility and the defense, the Cade Claws, the bandit tricking, the attempts to try to stop that very breaching on the opposite side there's your valkyrie i would imagine akron are going to go with what they usually do and close us down here with amira that would be expected well my is a good ban and we have seen that a lot tonight that could be an option here and it won't be you're correct on the mira although it can be quite easy to deal with her if you're just a team that likes to play for vertical it is uh, better safe than sorry, as some would call it. But the Wamai, that's going to remain an issue here. Especially for Aviator in games, you can bring out so much denial, whether it be both the Chanka and then the Smoke and along with Goyo packs, or you just bring out the Jaeger Omai, still have the Smoke as well. That's an option, which is what Akron's bringing here tonight. So it's going to be a lot of stall here by Converse. And if they begin to just slow down and they don't look like how they played on map one and two, this could be a lot of easy stack up rounds here in the first half for Akron. Well, as we get into the fourth map, we just got done with overtime. All these players, you know, they got it was fairly, fairly easy days, you know, on the first two maps. We got done only 10 rounds then you had to struggle through 14. You really had to fight hard. And, and the big thing that we noted about Clubhouse, right, comparatively to the first two maps, this should seem pretty obvious. Club was back and forth. It was tit for tat in a lot of the different moments there where Converse would pick up around and Akron would strike back. That needs to be here on Villa as well if Akron don't start off on the right foot because if they lack that stamina, if they can't get in, deliver those fights, have IMAD and JetCon doing their usual shebang, Converse are going to respond with a lot of ferocity. For Akron, again, they're just wanting to go for more or less a... Uh... Proper main extension, but still having the Rome game. I'm at is playing Kaid on the Rome. If you're not going to K trick, I guess it makes some sense, perhaps. But being such a loud operator, it definitely does seem like you could be vulnerable to a couple of different double peaks, perhaps, depending on how Converse want to approach this. Especially Locurio in the basement, actually. He could just sneak up on Kaid as he's running away. He might just be in a bad place at the worst time. And oh, yeah, that might actually rain true. But he might have heard thunder. Or pardon Locurio, actually. Walking up pantry stairs. Isn't fully aware, though. Just kind of expecting it. Now repositions. But it looks like both these players have somewhat of an idea as to where both of them could be playing at, but not a full confirmation as to the direct position here in this first minute. An uneasy stalemate between these two. Cade will not rotate through Kitchen. He'll back up into Memorial. 
and the Nook will continue waiting. I think Lucurio has finally started to move forward. He'll go ahead and clear off the rest of the angle. But so far, otherwise on the map, a battle for control of study as well as the main stairs will have to ensue with plenty of util to stop it from happening. This time, you get here on Villa, and you do have both the Jaeger and the Wamai up. Not one of those operators will get taken off the board. BDA hunting for the pixel. Here comes the flash, signaling the start of the burn. BDA will be the one charged with trying to clear this deployable. He'll instead send it towards the vert. Explodes, but Arv was plenty in safe cover. It's on top of the bar top. Just waiting for someone to overextend. That could be the first of many kills to come, but no, it's actually Hennessy, and there it is. Jobu finds one on the Thunder, but there's a quick response, though. Still having the smoke top of main, though, finds now a triple kill on the round, leaving just Lokirio across the map, looking to find three here. Doesn't expect Kai to be so close, but maybe spots out the arm to sneak up on him. No, he's got no idea, and that allows IMAT to get one of the freest kills in this series. Akron take the first round once again, like we've seen countless times before in this festival to five they started off they understand what they want to do and the smoke player at the top of those stairs ultimately being the biggest cog in the wheel for akron and one that kept moving flawlessly so as we look forward we'll go to trophy and stat with akron clearing off the first check mark in their rotation they're going to deliver us onto trophy with a boyo strat this has been something they have really introduced for a lot of their extensions where they will put the Vulcan, they will start early. A lot of times, it's going to be that Goyo player over by study. So you're wondering to see where all the Vulcan packs want to get used, not only to, to stop out any clear ha happening through study, but also general site presence. Pop them up near also Astro, too, kind of around the window and also stair position. Yeah, that denies basically the entire portion of this walk-in. Two deployed as well. I don't think an explosion via the Vulcan actually detonates the other one. So that's 40 seconds total just stopping out in Astro. And that's one of the key locations that attacking teams will like to push in from. Even if they want to go for a study take, at one moment, they're going to have to late rotate into Master Balcony. And one of the only few ways you can get past Master is either through the hard breach slash brick door, which both those can be kind of risky depending on the positioning of your opponents. Or you walk in through bathroom heading into Astro. So at some point, there's going to be an attacker most likely trying to contend that position. I think the next thing to question would be how are converse going to clear this are they going to try to go completely you know over from that study side and encounter jetcon and try to deal with him from their initial positions that's what we're going to have they're going to try to clear this they're going to get in the way however he did have thunder kind of holding the flank below i don't hate this idea he's now spotted out the goyo for real jetcon will fall back not choosing to try to battle with thunder it's a smart call as the fink immediately steps in the building Giannis got control bda moving forward Thinking about a player towards the bottom of the red stairs here. Akron need to be careful not to get isolated. They're going to have that Astro stairs as one route back. But Arf playing in the basement, there is a question to be asked. Is he really needed down here when he's not got a C4? We've got Thunder waiting in Mudroom. Could maybe detect the mute depending on where Thunder wants to move in these next couple seconds. I'm at not too far behind either. A trade game is potential, and I think BDA can hear or at least the other way around. IMAC can hear BDA pardon actually directly above him the other way around, unfortunately. And IMAC might have expected that, but the audio doesn't seem sufficient enough for him to actually work on this. Almost walks up red, but thinks better of it. Lokiri losing a bit of HP from, I believe, some gunshots. Either that or maybe a Vulcan pack. No, it was Arv playing vertical underneath, but no headshot through the flooring. So he'll still remain alive. And now IMAC's position has been given up. He'll fall back. The entire basement floor to rotate everything seems pretty normal as of now with Converse really not able to make any leeway against the defensive hold so far by Akron. And they've really taken their time. BDA looking to get a grenade down range. It's ineffectual against Jobu. The Surya gate up and active. Here comes one player starting to step forward. Hennessy in the entry and Jobu's got BDA's number as well. The Zoe now looking to apply her pressure, but Jobu for a second round in a row is such a crucial piece of the defensive puzzle. I'm at eliminates Ice Cold Thunder is left. He's taken damage from the Vulcan. He's forced out of things here, and Converse are so slow going in the way they have started off in these first two rounds. And that style is not going to get you much territory on Villa. They never tried to rotate over towards Master, open up that triple wall, decayed claw. The denial effects stoic. Somebody's going to drop down. It's the shotgun. 
Look at Arv just waiting for Thunder. Eventually rounds the corner and gets an easy kill. That marks two in a row for Akron, who have started off Villa with a spirit. And like you mentioned, the lack of a proper rotate, but also a huge self-stall by Converse. Something I'd worried about, especially now that we have a lot of Utah to play with here for Akron. Goyo, very viable in the current meta on Villa, despite him no longer having shields. Well, my and Jaeger available, and that only just scratches the surface. Castle's still really good right now in the meta. Aruni's available too. She's always phenomenal. So having all of that to worry about, not just the Utah, but also the Rome game, Converse never even tried working against that for a good moment. They gathered the intel to force a fallback, but never truly cleared out the Rome game. They didn't try for vertical. They didn't try to go for grenade plays. They had one person late rotating up Astro when everybody one. was dead. It was just not a good strat at all by Converse. And again, if they just focus on one key point in Villa and that's it, they will not see any success in this first half because of how gigantic the map is and how much team coordination you need to get more than just one step done in that list. A lack of dynamic pressure is just such a killer on Villa. You fail to do that. You fail to come in at multiple different angles. You're going to see that self-stall. Because what do you do when you're standing on that red balcony? You've got immovable defenders. You've got no way to soften them up. You really have two options. You rotate towards master. That's the easy option. Open up the wall. Get rid of the Cade Claw. And now all of a sudden, you know, all those angles in the skylight, you can't really play so freely in the back of Trophy. And you're forced to rotate. Then you have to play an Astro. Boom. Now that you're back in Astro, you've got that pressure the attackers tried to work, but ultimately didn't accomplish anything. Other way you could go about it would be to go below and maybe try to use somebody like a Buck to open the floor or nade it. Akron were prepared for that eventuality. They played a Rome downstairs. Converse, when they go back to Statue, will need to do things differently. But it's going to be a little similar here, John, because we're attacking dining, but you've also got the extension up above the Rome that you're going to need to clear, treading the very same ground as the previous. For Converse, though, they are going to try to get master control early, although it's very important to have that vertical. And, oh, I think we at least expect somebody close to the Statue doorway. That's not correct, though. It's the Nitro I think, maybe in pairing that Surrey game, or I could be completely wrong, but I'm at, out of nowhere, shoots Avian in the back. The Lion going a lot of instant information off the board, but Converse don't seem to be phased. They're still trudging through this top floor, spots out the Aruni, but there's the crossfire. Hennessy springs up. Nobody expected him to get that aggressive on the castle, but it works, and now we're in the five versus three. Akron still taking the charge. Hennessy now being punished by Thunder, but still a great position to be in nonetheless, and Jetcon still remains in this top floor, but finally falls down almost a third, but the hip fire is not sufficient. Things looking really rough for Converse. It's a tumble take on the top floor, and eventually they have to recoil to the bomb site. Here's your pulse below, gathering the intel. Haven't seen many successes on the C4 so far. We already know they did have that one earlier by the uh, statue door. I think kind of messed up the lion. He thought there was somebody close, when in reality it was the explosive, and then he got flanked and shot in the back because he was so passive. Now another target isolated. EDA and Thunder versus three. Don't count them out of this situation. But with 60 seconds and with such passive positions, an explosive goes up, gets called in. No dice, no kill. Thunder still worried about it. Again, you can see that strangely open Surya gate. Arv has minimized one. Getting through this doorway, BDA will quickly waste it with the Gemini. So looking for that player below, just down inside Tetris. Covers the bomb. Thinks about how he's going to make this one happen in the one-on-three when he's being shot up by Arv through the floor. Vaults the balcony. He'll approach from China. Make this his entryway. However, the Banshee really starting to slow him up here. The Iana having no luck in making it through this doorway. So many defenders constantly watching, monitoring, pinging, shooting, fighting, keeping BDA away. And the default cam is up. No wonder he's getting Z-ping. No wonder BDA can't make it through from China. Eventually, the pulse goes down. The headshot comes in. But can BDA realistically do this? He has control of the bomb as he makes his way through the rotate. If he predicts Jobu, this becomes realistic here, but he can't close it out against Jetcon. So close for BDA, but just the same as if he failed the 1v5 as a maestro, he loses it as the Iana. The sloppiness once again by Converse, though, not having any intel for the flank, not having the Nomad, and just general information was just simply lacking by Converse. They didn't expect anyone to flank them via 90 or map. They didn't expect anyone to reassert themselves into Astro Stairs. They were uh, just straight up blinded 
by their own self accomplishments that they weren't expecting any bite back by Akron, although we know they can be rather aggressive and can go for those make or breaks, which was a constant on that round. We had the Aruni of I met, I think it was just playing up there for such a long time before eventually dropping down. They almost found three and they had backup as well by Hennessy on the castle. And it just, it really seems like a whole new structure by Converse that just is not working. And now it's the other way around with Akron able to punish Converse for all their mistakes, which is again, not what we saw in the slightest on map one and two. Troubling to watch the defense running away with this so far on Villa. And this is the, you know, energy that Akron really needed. They've started to kind of reach the potential and Converse look in some ways lost. Their ability to coordinate right now is uh, kind of in the same territory as was Akron's when we were attacking for them back on bank. They couldn't really coordinate too terribly well, and they were constantly getting isolated. The same is happening here as well. If Converse can't figure this out, we are looking towards the potential for a map five. That would definitely be something that we don't want to have hacked been here for Converse because we know how well Akron can play on Oregon and maybe the map selection at the end of the day was more or less able to enable Akron for a, a late round comeback perhaps maybe the choke here could occur for Converse but we are getting a bit ahead of ourselves I suppose the map here in Villa has not even ended just yet haven't even had a decisive victory yet on Oregon to begin with and we have seen change though Kyrgyz is now in the Nomad that's going to deny a lot that the defensive Rome could get away with in previous rounds and we still have the line here available for Avian so still a bunch available in terms of information game in pretty much any portion of the round for Converse depending on how aggressive they can be and how well Avian can pop those Lions games. Well, the thing that went wrong last time for Converse when they approached this objective, it was losing so many people to Jobu on the main staircase. He was going huge. I'm out with the C4. It goes up. This could be two kills right now. It goes. It goes. Oh, and it's got one, but a down as well. Thunder will pick himself back up and into the fight as he narrowly escapes death there. I'm at it's such a common C4, one that you should be expecting if you're the Converse members not droning it. Ultimately, is their own undoing. BDA on the tall angle, hoping the Jetcon might round the corner, but such a blunder to get underway with round number four. Still have to worry about that. Hyde as well could be a big problem. Ice Cold's got the info potentially if someone walks out in Red Hallway, but right now that's not going to be the current predicament. BDA is in 90, but no hard reach in sight. Ice Cold's still in the drone. That's not going to allow Hunting to be opened up, and they still need to break the Cade Claw, which currently is placed actually on the vault doorway. So if we do not see control all the way down from Deep 90 Hall leading into Bar, this could be a huge issue, but I think they, nope, they haven't gotten rid of it, so most likely it'll still be a funnel in here for Converse in the final 40 seconds. Gonna be an ugly one, but BDA helps to soften the blow. Grenade kill against Arv. That's probably your heaviest hitting long range defender. Hennessy sort of forced into the engagement here. They are struggling with this hunting boat wall. And there's a flank working from IMAT as well down bottom of red. Avian is probably gonna lose out to this. The barbed wire may have revealed IMAT, but it doesn't matter. The down is still there. The kill is still made. The player is still isolated. Ice cold in the one on three. 20 seconds as he is waiting. No control of the bomb. And looking like get one more round and Converse already realized the conclusion and what the loss of this fourth round means. Their inability to defend, or excuse me, their inability to attack will require a timeout. And again, it's just a, I, it's not even just stalling at this point because we have seen Converse slightly change that up. It is now turned into more or less no information and still having tunnel vision. It isn't full-fledged. Uh, just having a full-fledged stall. It's just only focusing on a singular thing and not expecting anything else to happen at the exact same time. They weren't anticipating someone to have a nitro cell placed near statue doorway, leading in more towards the red stairwell slash bench area. They weren't expecting anybody to go for a flank in the final 30 seconds. They weren't expecting to be punished for not having anything to break the actual cake claw. And it just, it forced in eventually that bottleneck inside of av and even then they like didn't even enter the site essentially they just got stopped dead in their tracks where they even entered the room so once again it's been great heads up plays by akron and we're still not having uh, converse try to really adapt in any meaningful way except maybe change a couple operators but even then that doesn't get the job done 
And their adaptations on Clubhouse and earlier in the series were probably the biggest credit to them. They would change the way that they played. They would adapt. They would come in with a different look. And the fact that that's absent here on Villa is just, it's, you can't allow it. You have to fix that up. Let's hope the pause allows the rest of the members to kind of think a little more clearly about this. You know that Thunder is there. He can be the explosive leader to change the way that things are going to be played here on Villa. You want to get this 2-4 half. We have talked lately about Villa as being such a defender-sided map, so hard for the attackers to get in. However, that being said, Converse are doing themselves a disservice with how they're playing right now, not arriving to the execute at full or nearly even full power. A lack of utility, a, not an understanding. That Cade Claw, it's never going to be on the Hunting Vault wall. Why would you do that? It's going to be on the other side. This is basic level stuff that you need to be prepared for. And Converse have kind of... It feels like they've they've kind of tabbed out. Definitely seems like it for sure. No general change like you and I both have mentioned. Could maybe seen a twitch or just someone having an aggressive nade tossed. Nobody has been going for lower level vertical with those grenades as well. It's been a little bit odd, especially with both the Finca and Ayana almost a staple here for Converse. They don't want to go for the full effort of clearing out that middle floor, getting potentially that opening kill, and then reaping the rewards of that not only by having an advantage, but also being able to go for those grenades, which not only could find yourself a kill, but also break a lot of utility. We've seen Goyo in the fray here for Akron. We've seen a lot of shields. We've seen just in general, tons of utility, yet Converse aren't trying to change the way they want to clear it. They are just kind of running in it to immediately and then being, oh, we need to clear through this, but by then it's already too late. They're already in a 5VX not favoring them, or they are just uh, low in general resources to even properly clear out that piece of util, or they just don't do it at all to begin with. Something that is a little worrying to me is Converse have got Avian on the lion, and that has not been really their best operator. Their Nomad has been more effective, I feel like. And uh, if you're going to bring one of those operators, do you really need him? Is the lion really going to be what changes things here? The E1Ds haven't really done enough that you've needed them to do. And Converse, we're back to Trophy and Statue. The conversation we were having about this bomb site was you need that dynamic pressure. If you're not coming in from multiple different angles, you are going to lose. Do not try to force in from one or two different spots. You really need that triple wall open. It's kind of mandatory at this point. Especially since you have something that's very easy to go and clear out the roam game, like the Lion along with the Ayana Geminis. You don't need to sacrifice a lot of your drones early on. You have other options for intel, and you still have great guns. Although we haven't seen Ice Cold really pop off, just yet he has been on that entry roll a couple of times or has been on a operator that can win those gunfights quite feasibly against only SMGs, yet we don't see Converse really taking that initiative. They are playing rather reserved, which hasn't been working out by Akron because they always have more than one layer of defense against that kind of slow play style that we've seen by Converse. And although we have seen a timeout, nothing has changed by Converse as of late, and this could lead to even more damage dealt towards them and maybe a fifth round here for Akron. Yeah, this is not very promising. Converse need to do something. Find a way to get extra leverage here. You don't have anybody monitoring Jetcon. He's just allowed oh, to hang out in Master Still waiting bedroom. here for the eventual push to happen by Converse. There goes the first of many kills they'll need. Hennessy finds one as well. Jetcon to respond. Four versus three oh. as the push is just a requirement at this point by Converse, oh. but they're not going to win the gunfights. Viable for it. Jetcon able to secure a second kill. There goes the Lions game, but it's far too late. BDA springs up at the right time, but Case has now been relegated to the floor. It's only BDA left, Again. and Arv whips out the SMG 11, and that's the round over and done with. Akron take a fifth as our worst dreams have now turned into a reality stick. Timeout hasn't really done anything to get you that extra value that you needed, and... Just, it's difficult to watch Converse do the same things, die from the same issues, not come in from Master. It's impossible for them to attack from that direction, apparently. They just will not do it. They refuse to try to come in from a different angle. And when you walk through two choke points, the defenders have what they want from you. That is the most basic way to understand it. And of course, Converse just, they just fail. The Lion didn't do anything there. He did not lock any defenders in for a kill. Converse have been fairly foul in the entry department so far, have not been getting those starting kills. 
You don't have Ice Cold, Avian, or Locurio doing much of anything. And, um... Oh, even though BDA has, like, come close, he's almost clutched some rounds. It's always an almost. It's always a, well, better luck next time. Because Converse aren't supporting him. They aren't enabling him right now. And if they lose this last round, we are going to go to Oregon. It's a guarantee. And again, it's a map that suits the play style of Akron much more in comparison to Converse. They don't play a lot of Oregon. They like to go for more semi-aggressive maps. It's funny enough kind of being in that, that weird range of it's kind of 50-50, almost a gray zone of you can be aggressive depending on how you play. But with what Converse is attempting, they haven't been able to enable their, their true play style here on this map. Very slow. They don't gather a lot of information. They don't like to face their fears head on. And I don't know why. Because it worked so well for them on map one, on map two. You could even argue map three because it was a very close matchup on Clubhouse with Akron just being a little bit better in some some minuscule aspect. And, and that was really it. But here on map four, it is a complete decimation here with Converse just not able to scrape away a morsel of an advantage. Just a lot of close calls or complete blowouts. Well, the take here definitely looks different than normal. Here goes Locurio. Going to quickly go for a grenade. Fails to get the mute jammer. So, back to the drawing board there for Locurio. Ice cold is prone in laundry. Converse look lost right now. Whatever they're doing, it's not working. Their top pressure, it looked like they tried to go for horizontal. It just got players kind of everywhere. VDA is in living room. Avian is on drone trying to monitor the flank. So, at least these two are kind of working together. But I don't really understand what Ice Cold's objective is here in laundry. He's waiting for the Mute Jammer to get cleared. Thunder would hopefully remove it from up above. And BDA leads off us to get Hennessy. Finally, hoping that this will be the start that they need. Now they know they've got a defender on the flank. Maybe this is the time to call the execute towards the site. Well, they don't. Well, they do have a lot of time here. But so does Akron to go retake that top floor. And it's not going to happen just yet. Jet Con just waiting for the fall down. And he at least gets rid of BDA. No grenades left on the playing field. A couple of flash grenades and the vert is still an option. The Nitro Cell will get tossed. Nowhere close to where Thunder's opening up this floor hole. So that's not going to find a kill just yet. But still equal footing. And the only sustenance gathered by Converse has just been this vert. They don't have a man advantage. They get the wall open leading for a Tetris plant, but there's still plenty of angles held by Akron to stop this play from actually working. Things are really just kind of slowing to a crawl. Converse are worried about a roam. They're worried about getting flanked and shot in the back. Ice Cold has got his entry point here, but the vertical is not really established enough to where you can realistically assume, okay, all the defenders are kind of pushed out of where they should be. In no reality should you have Arv inside China, and another player in Memo. These players should have been dead long ago, and you're going to see the impact of a failed vertical play by Thunder as the Converse members crumble. We've only got two left, and the defenders not even presenting themselves. Avian will get one on the entry. The bomb is down in laundry, though, and recovering this is going to be an immense challenge. Akron go flawless through the first half. Converse are just looking out of it. And although we had the top floor clear be successful... It looked like Converse had completely forgot about a lot of teams liking to go for that lurk play style and not just committing to a full roam on the top floor and then a complete site presence after the roam game falls. You have people sitting up near living room, near the mud room position. You could have someone playing around near piano if you really want to get frisky or out near the bottom of red to go play in the basement for that basically just traffic free rotates you get on the defensive side converse had completely skipped that step of gathering info info they jumped the gun once again and they're going to pay the ultimate price of losing six rounds in a row don't get me wrong we have seen countless one-sided halves being two one-sided halves immediately after but to such a degree where it's six rounds in a row for Akron, then the same thing to fall for converse just to guarantee overtime i don't think that's going to be the case tonight reese i think we're going to see a fifth map that's my conclusion as well. Um, Converse, last time versus Akron on Friday, they had managed two attacks. They got a pretty decent half, but their defenses were better. They were five rounds better. They're not a flawless half. They're not that potential. And there is going to need to be an extraordinary change because Converse, the way they just played the first half, is just not how you play Villa. That was just something completely different. The timeout didn't help them at all. 
and their play style suffered from the same issues, Akron have completely turned their gameplay around. Not for the better either, or at least for Conver Converse's sake. Akron have been doing fantastic, but hasn't been a lot of, I would say, a lot of bite back here for Converse in the slightest. The defensive side is a bit more favorable, but again, a 6-0 and o favoritism here. Not too sure about that one. Conference looked to be going for a heavy extension, though, leading into Master. A lot of castle barricades, tons of Wamai magnets, a Syria gates, a shield, you name it. They've got it placed up here. I'm at going in for a, a cheeky talent shield to actually break the barricade while not allowing anyone to get shot by Thunder. Kind of a smart play. Now here come the flash grenades and the Syria gate actually oh! being burned. It allows Thunder to find two huge nitro cell kills. A bit of an inadvert mistake. Done by Akron now leads us five versus two for Converse. For once, they're looking at the top of their game, but this is just one round at the end of the day. They cannot get ahead of themselves after this round ends. Fortunately, there for Akron, a botched attempt to burn this deployable. They do get it eventually, but after the cost, losing so many players, Hennessy and IMAT. Time is where you need it to be, but utility that you're going to have to clear is monumental. Dealing with Avian, sitting in the bathroom tub. Converse should have no trouble closing this one out. The first round that they need, to say they're going to win five more is such a stretch. Hennessy will isolate Lokirio. Lokirio has just had nothing in this map so far. And not even the best looking round from Converse is one in which he will get a kill. Well, a minute left to go. Akron have time to gather intel, so if they really want to scratch, or pardon, stretch this out, not just scratch it away as a loss, can maybe go for one for once. That is an option, but they are still locked outside of Master, so it is a lot to ask here. But, you know, it could still be doable, depending on how much Converse are willing to throw at the problem in an improper way. We've got a nice stack up here in Master Bathroom, so it's going to be a very tough decision, or a very tough task, I should say, for IMAT to actually come out on top here alive. There's the flank, and Thunder gets the final one as well, leaving us a 6-1 to one score line. Still match point, though, and still a very challenging position here for Converse to claw back from. Now, there's going to be five opportunities for Akron to close this out, and it's an overwhelming situation for CV, and no other word really describes it. They break the six-round streak. At least they don't get 7 0 would here on Villa. But the chance that they come back from this is so extraordinarily small, is such a minimal possibility that it just makes you think we're already on Oregon. But with that being said, you know, Converse are going to continue fighting. I think the more rounds they accumulate here on Villa, the better they feel going into the next map. And, uh, for the next as well, should we eventually get to the next map of Oregon. I wanted to look at the um, the sides that we've got, because that kind of informs to you how things are going to go. They would need to be decided, um, I think, on coin flip, basically, on uh, the round differential and all that. So we'll have to wait for that. We won't get to look at it just yet. But Converse are going to continue to trudge on in their rotation in uh, next is Aviator. But for a quick moment on Oregon, can be a very momentum-based map. So depending on what Converse can get away with here throughout the rest of Villa, I would agree that could be a very big boost moving into the fifth and final map if we get there. But Converse still, of course, have to play here in the Italian countryside for at least another round longer, depending on what happens here in these next couple of minutes. So far for Akron, they already have a couple of drones pre-placed. Maybe they want to go for more of a first floor approach. That would appear to be the case because they already have people stacked up in the middle of main entrance. They've got people out in the study balcony. So at some point, they'll have to have a person most likely late rotate over near red stairs or the 90 window. But that is if they do not immediately find two opening kills because if things turn to a five on three like we have seen in the past for Akron against Converse, they might not need to do that extra step. They might just be able to approach the site almost off the bat. We did not really get many chances to look at more of a front take when we were in the first half. It was almost always you know, pressure from 90, uh, aside from one round where Converse ran into a shotgun and gave it three free kills. Coordination will need to be better than that, and I expect it to be better than that from Akron, who have been through so many villas in their history as a varsity program. 
Grenade goes up and no oh boy. Thunder backed right into that one. Talk about pure timing. Ice Cold working the flank will hope to maybe snatch one up below. You do have IMAT sort of monitoring the stairs, and so it's the moment of Ice Cold to shine. He's got one, nearly makes a second, and he does get the down as well there. BDA shut it down. Arv, we're going to see the final player on these stairs choke from the gas. Converse looking like there could be a little bit more gas left in the tank, and that Villa defender sided narrative really looks ugly right now. Potentially eight rounds in a row only on the defense looking like that. Not much left here for Akron. They've got two lion scans, tons of drones and time, but no flashes. So nothing to really breach past the ADSs or the magnets and no smoke canisters left by Avian, but he already did his job in the main stairs. Not a big problem. There goes the first of many lion scans. Hennessy expects somebody close, but only half peeks it. Funny enough, Locurio wins the fight, getting his first kill of the fourth map and a second one immediately after. Another round here in the bag for Converse, but how long can they keep that momentum? Well, I suppose now the conversation shifts to what are Akron doing that's preventing them from closing out these rounds? Is it true. solo challenging, you know, walking into some of these fights? That was such a good grenade onto the player uh, inside of AV, or excuse me, in games to start this one off with. But that's just what it was. I mean, Ice Cold had su such good timing on his flank. I mean, that was perfect. And Akron, you start to think, okay, you know, they didn't monitor that. They didn't have a cam to watch the flank. It's just, you know, you have to put so much attention on that main stage. You need to give it a lot of respect. But you also need to think, okay, you know, there's other things that are at play here. And the possibility of a flank is one of the largest of those factors. Wondering if we're going to continue to have the same problems here for Akron this time as we did for Converse. A lot of tunnel vision and not fully aware of your surroundings. The situational awareness right now for Akron hasn't looked the best. They kind of fell for Thunder with the Nitro Cell early on in round number seven. Round eight, they just got caught by a, a greatly timed flank by Ice Cold. Now we head to Dining Room. Looks to be a, a very heavy extension on this top floor and maybe some late pressure in the mid lurk, perhaps. But Converse, they currently have four people up above. If Akron read into this, it could maybe go for a rush. It's definitely a good option for them. But if they actually go for it, that's kind of the big thing here. Yeah, I would be shocked to see a rush. It would certainly be exciting. And you do think of that as, okay, maybe a possibility here. Let's go quick and close it down. But they're going to go for a full top clear and not try to pursue any quick push through pantry or something like that. Would be exciting. The chances of it are relatively slim. So on the full top clear, the first battle looks to be between the castle and all the oncoming players. Ice Cold does take some damage. He makes it back. Can't say the same for Avian, who perishes on the early conflict. That's the leadoff kill for Akron. Now all they need to do is trade it out one by one and get it down to that last player. But Locurio who was so quiet, who didn't say a thing on the offense, already has three kills, and we're barely getting going on defense. And on map one, he was basically screaming. Maybe he's trying to remember the good old days of bank, perhaps. So <laughs> hopefully we can see that happen here for Converse as they are able to equalize, like you had mentioned. Akron, though, don't seem to be that worried. They were looking for maybe some... some Cheap kills and thrills, perhaps. And now they're going to focus solely on this top floor for a little while, besides Jobu maybe late playing around near lower bathroom to go hop in and potentially add something near Mudroom, perhaps. Yeah, he's already inside a Mudroom, droning out with Hennessy, more of a lateral take. And there's a cutoff. Great angle by Hennessy being held to give the man advantage back for Akron, but still need to worry about this top floor. It's not all over just yet for Converse, but things are slowly getting worse and worse. Now in the two oh. versus four and a 1v4, BDA, the last one to stand, looking down the gun barrel of match point and a potential fifth map. He's got to go huge, but not much intel to work with here. Might be expecting one at least down the regular red hallway near grandfather, but Jet Con is there on the swing, catches BDA on the side, and map five will be a guarantee. It's tied up two to two in the map scoring. Like I said earlier, after we got done with such a closely contested clubhouse, the possibility that we would go to map five has finally eventuated for the first time here in this circuit. We will go to the full distance. It's such a good feeling to get there. And Oregon, as we've already talked about, does seem like a map that could work for Akron, who are slowly gaining momentum, 
towards a possibility for a reverse sweep. We'll tell you more about that when we come back from the break.
one map race one map and that is it oregon between converse and akron that's all it's going to take to prove a victor here tonight we have gone the distance we have seen a lot of very one-sided matchups a singular close call that went to overtime almost a full 15 and now we get one of the most basic maps in the comp pool reese this is looking to be potentially a big choke here for converse unless they manage to repeat what they had in terms of success on both bank and chalet like I said, a lot of storylines at work here, not only looking for the three-peat is Akron, who have won CEA, who have won CR6 most recently, and are now looking to get R6CC under their belt as well ahead of the UCC, but also to complete in series the reverse sweep that winning Oregon would mean. And after we saw how hard Akron fought and how hard Converse fought on that clubhouse map, it was crushing to watch as Converse could not muster any attacks. They couldn't win a singular attack. No offense round wins on Villa. And fellow, they start offense on Oregon. Not a good sight to see. I mentioned for a quick moment, heading uh, or while still on Villa before we head into Oregon that the map of Oregon in general is very momentum based if you can get a lot of early round wins or if you're just a better attacking team that will be the make or break now we've seen both Akron and Converse thrive in well at least the defense that's a given but on the attack it's been a rather different story I would have to say but on the most defensive side of matchup we have seen so far that being Villa it just took one attacking round for Akron to send us here to map five with them taking a second map victory so that could be all that they need tonight to actually get the reverse sweep like you mentioned and potentially star themselves up for a grand slam setup here in the collegiate scene right that's something we didn't really touch on we've got the three-peat on offer if Akron win here and they look towards the UCC as well. That's the national finals for the entire circuit that we've been going through so far through the fall and spring semesters. We're looking now into Oregon to see how this one will pan out. You've got the Ying Band starting off from Akron. Definitely changes the way things will work out here. We saw a lot of Ying used by Converse. It was mainly Avian who would bring those Candelas to bear and would use them to soften up defensive targets. We close down Valkyrie and Mira. Things are pretty standard, even including the Ying, for what you expect on Oregon. Very good at opening in through Big Window on Kids. Great at clearing out E-Box, hopping in through Pillar. You name it. Ying can be a, a very good bunker buster, I guess, and not having to use all that much effort, especially for a team that can stall quite often in their attacks. That would be a really good way to um, redeem yourself, even after wasting a lot of time is having that Ying. So for Akron to immediately ban that makes sense to me and the rest being default, like you had mentioned. So will the site selection be? It's going to be basement. Pretty standard. The lineup, not looking too shabby either. No one am I, funny enough? but still a good amount of utility, more or less information-based with both the Evil Eyes in the hands of the Maestro of Hennessy and also the Banshees being deployed by the Malusi of IMAT. Just some light information, and it could also slow down Converse, which again, they are a very slow attacking team. So the more seconds that can be burned in the early parts of the round, the better off Akron will be for that eventual site execute denial. You do have the Hibana swapped into for Ice Cold, just another exhibit of what the attacker repick can do for you, allowing you to bring in that extra bit of hard breaching. When it comes to removing the hatches, you're not really going to need the therm. And so the Hibana will go ahead and lock in, and we look down to the basement as one of the strongest objectives on this map. We all know what happens down on Laundry. Things become so troubling, the attackers waste so much time, as you just mentioned there, and CV... Their attacks on Villa were all about wasting time. It was as if their motto was to spend most time away from the bomb site and less of it actually on the objective. Also not going for a Ooh. lot of singular or pardon multiple clears. Ice cold, a very important fight to win. I'm at someone who can really change how the entire pace of a round will play is now relegated to camera duty. A fantastic start by Converse, and they're not going to go in for any type of multi- or they are going to go for a multi-approach par. They're not going to go for a lot of funneling. They are actually clearing all the way through Big Tower. They have somebody waiting near lobby, and they've already started working their way in from Shower Hallway, now into Z. 
already hopping into Freezer as well. Someone's droning out for Locurio. Great way to enable a lot of early map pressure. He will be spotted via the default cam, but still, tons of map pressure already established by Converse. Such a great change of pace, almost night and day from Villa so far. Yeah, things are fairly quick going here. Converse have completely forced the defense back onto the objective, and so now they get to kind of focus on playing their own game, but in that right, Locurio steps to the bottom of Freezer and fails in the long-range duel against Jetcon, giving back that entry kill, and however much that had meant you know, for towards the attackers. And so Converse will now have to look to a way to recover from this. Seeing that the Maverick is in play here, you will have some tools to get rid of the Electroclaw pressure. As Hennessy tries to push back on this as much as possible, tossing up impact grenades to try to halt the progress of the Mav. However, given that they've only got the Mav, they don't really have many other tools towards getting rid of the hatch over inside E-Box. You might be able to just open a hole big enough to watch. Getting the hatch open entirely will be a game of its own, and so we will see Avian do that, drop a nade down the hatch, and have the Habana come in on the assist. That's one thing I was thinking of, is if they have a grenade, then that would allow the hatch to be opened up. 50 seconds remain. Not the worst position here for Converse, and they still have a lot of regular utility to work with, too. BDA, three adrenaline surges, tons of drones left here, but it almost looks to be an immediate drop-down attempted here by Converse once they open up that hatch. They've spotted out that pillar's clear. This could be an immediate power play by Converse in the final 30 seconds once that smoke is removed. Try to get the engine going. BDA's first in the drop. He's supported by Ice Cold on the hib. Jobu trying to play highway pressure. It's not going to work. He dies to Thunder. Arv is next in the connection trying to play from back of Florida, but it's the Maestro actually doing the work from deep in Freezer. Arv tucks himself into the corner. Ice Cold thinking about the potential for the plant. In the meanwhile, the Maestro will give up Freeze. Avian on the cut delivers Arv, however, traded immediately by Jetcon. It's a one versus two. Ice Cold sends it forward, but Jetcon coming huge with the quad kill to save the round and although it was a very close call once again it was just a couple of key gunfights that were had by akron in the final few moments still having enough general denial to have some isolation again that's been a big problem by converse and also just still having that man advantage even though they just lost freezer they were able to bounce back immediately and it was a bit of overextension i'd have to say probably by converse they had some default angles still being denied but Maybe expecting a C4 to get tossed or more toxic canisters. They had to get aggressive to make sure that wasn't a problem for their planter. But it, it came with a great price of having such a high risk involved. They lost those gunfights, and that allows Akron to still prevail. And now they get to go kids and dorms for the round under their belt early on once again. Yeah, and uh, it is very similar to Villa. I will remind you, Converse coming close to a victory, but then being sort of pushed onto the back foot and Akron clutching up to save the round there. Huge for them to really get going in here and CV needing to slow their roll a little bit. I get the time was low and, you know, suffering that trade back. You did get I'm at early, but it came at the cost of Locurio, who tried to come down Freezer. And, you know, as the Sophia, sometimes that does happen. You kind of uh, get a little bit too quick for what you can really make happen. But, you know, you're thinking I'm an LMG player. You know, I've got all these bullets in the world. I should have the advantage in pretty much every fight I take. Well, having IMAT back on one of his personal favorites, the Oryx, could be a very good way just to, again, have that self-enable activity, I suppose, when trying to uh, go for these one-for-ones and maybe win the opening duel instead of just uh, getting first picked off the bat and being uh, basically in the background once again, which is a problem we had seen, especially in map number one and two. He came more alive in map three and four. And now it's kind of the make or break, I guess. Really early to call it if we're going to have the same storyline of the first or second half of this grand final. But now having that 1.5 optic on the T5 can play for longer ranges, has the high mobility to hop in through hatches or just the general Rima dashes. That could be a phenomenal way to just be in a place that really the offense did not expect to begin with. And no Nomad on the board either, no flank watch. This really does seem to be a, a paradise for I'm at, depending on where he wants to position himself and how aggressive he wants to be. Hennessy tossing out an impact grenade. They're not really doing enough to stop the exothermic. I'm at, of course, that roaming phenom on the Oryx. Locurio does have the flank drone. Looks like it will get immediately shot. So suddenly the realization is there is an Oryx below, and I should at least pay some attention to this. BDA looking for a nade, seeing if he might be able to get some utility. It comes in and downs Jobu. 
who now is trapped in a really uncomfortable position. You've got the Thurm maintaining the pressure as well there for Converse. Now hoping for a second grenade that will confirm the down player. It should, no questions asked. And that's the leadoff pick to get Converse going. Oh, and IMAT's down too. Got the Evil Eyes to work with and some Vulcans as well. So you can stall out Converse for a couple more seconds, but that's really it. They've got the five on three. They've got multiple positions to push in through. It's really only a matter of time before they see this plant being attended, but only having Addict and the main wall from Closet. This could lead to a lot of long angles being held by the defense. That could be their saving grace. Will for the first as Jetcon shuts down the Finca. You don't have that extra boost to kind of kick you forward. Jetcon coming up on the flank from White. This will be crucial. Converse are not going to... Go too quick about it, though. I think they're going to have a player try to maintain that pressure. Locurio could get a freebie here against the Jaeger. And Zo really needs to play this one precariously. This is such a crucial piece. But it keeps the Jaeger sort of tucked back at that bomb chassis. Arv's position now revealed. The drone comes in. 20 to go here. Converse careful not to waste time, not to bungle it up like they did last time. Ice Cold misses his opportunity onto the Jaeger, who now rotates into the sight line of the Zoe. And so the Thurm will rush deep. You still got that pressure from Jetcon. The C4 is good. It stops the plant, but Thunder on the immediate response. Hennessy killed by Avian. Converse will close it out in the close second. And still having someone positioned up near Kid's window that did allow a small moment of relief. And then the great transition happened once again by the rest of Converse. Charging in through the wall, knowing they couldn't just sit out there and bait for a long amount of time. And having your attic players as well get aggressive was just enough to break through the armor of that kid's defense and give Converse their first round on the attack. And again, this is really a battle of inches, especially on the attack. Depending on how much you can really get away with here, Converse on their attacks, that's going to be the huge deciding factor on most and probably this Oregon game as well. If we have Akron just outbest them once again on the attack like we did see on Villa, funny enough, and like we saw in Clubhouse 2 as well, this could be a great moment for them to still win out this matchup, but it is only round number three, and we still haven't seen how Akron want to play on their attacks yet because we're still in the first half. And uh, the Zips will choose to repeat on Dorm, seeing something... Maybe that didn't go entirely to their favor. You know, they did lose two in the early game, and that one came down to 20 seconds, and Converse still, you know, it's a two versus one. Their advantage, if they hadn't lost, for example, I'm at early, maybe that would have been a win in the Akron column. And it's close things like that that do sort of make you lean towards the idea of going back here, trying this objective once again. Jetcon and I'm at are playing below this time, hoping to deny any pressure that might come, any grenades, of course, you don't want to have to deal with that when you're the player in dorms who's trying to hold back some of the attic pressure as well as maintaining coverage on the big window as well. Nothing much has changed for Converse in their attacking lineup. They're bringing pretty much the same as they did in the previous round. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Although it did seem to be a bit broken at points, we eventually saw the adaptation that was required, getting somebody on that kid's window to at least allow some more openings to be found by Converse, because essentially having just Addict and Master Wall Control sometimes is not enough, especially when it is a, a fairly even situation of that 4v4, or even a 4v3. So at least we saw that change by Converse, able to readjust and get the upper hand once again. We've got IMAC going on the same roam attempt, even opening up the floor to maybe have a vertical hole once that attic wall gets opened up and exposed. But Lokiro just spot out the Oryx. They're completely aware of what he wants to accomplish here in these next couple of seconds. So now having that insight, they might be able to try to actually hold that exact same angle against him, go for a pre-fire, or just challenge him directly on that first floor. Well, even despite the attempts of the Oryx, the wall gets opened up anyway, business as usual for the Mav. Converse are careful to pay attention, knowing that Imbat is such a lethal quantity with how he plays his roams, but so far, he hasn't been that player. Nil for two, there's Hennessy from the early game, Locurio trades, and Imbat now nil for three. He cannot get his game going. Arv should feel the pressure soon. Converse are starting to move in, and that Vulcan is going to really prevent him from kind of being aggressive. All you need is a simple grenade, and that should be enough to work the pressure. Avian would be the player to facilitate that. Zofia kind of hunting below. I wonder if she's almost waiting for a cutoff. Ice Cold, he may step in here. The flashbang, maybe to burn that first ADS, and there goes the detonation of the Vulcan. Converse are starting to tighten their grip as they gain more and more map control towards the bomb site. Pulling that Vulcan trigger too early. Good job by Lokira spotting out a pre-placed Nitro Cell. It's not going to have any effect. It's been destroyed. But Jetcon on this Rome game. He just waits with great patience. That could be a kill on the Zofia. 
An angle denied. Spots on the back of her. There's the first one. And there it is. Advantage back in the favor of Akron. Plant's still going down, though. Is there any denial? Doesn't seem to be the case. BDA caught in a bad spot. Hennessy finds a second on the Maestro, but it looks to be we're now in the post plant. Hard ping comes in through with second now for the Maestro, leaving just Avian currently engulfed by some toxic smoke. Has to charge through it, but Jobu's there to greet him. Plenty of time left to defuse, and Akron on the reattempt will win this top floor. Well, just as the gas chokes out the final player in Attic. It serves as a metaphor for that attack. Converse go up in smoke as they try to execute. BDA got totally confused. I think the death of the zone below. I like that call. It was gutsy, but you have to realize, you know, there's defenders, so they could be anywhere. And the Zofia, I think she sort of lingered for too long. You know, you, you, could, you could nitpick that all day, practically. Maybe what she should have done was just go to the white window and cover the rotate app. That would have been probably a safer call you would have had a surefire knowledge of where those players were rotating from. Converse not even coming close on that reattempt. So they will have to try a later time as we have the basement back unlocked despite the fact that IMAT had perished early. Round number three and round number one were fairly close in how they played out. Converse got two ahead of themselves. They tried to execute. There was really still plenty of guns up for the Akron roster and... Uh, the Zips filed through, mainly thanks to Jetcon, who was having a superior game at the moment. Having plenty of stall, though. I would say having the Vulcan opened up in Attic was a little early, but it does guarantee no one can help out with that plant coverage. Besides from the Master Wall, especially now Zofia died from White Stairs, or trying to walk up the White Stairs via, I believe it was Jetcon, out on that Goyo. So it does guarantee you have to look down one direction and that's it. And that did give a great advantage there for Akron, especially since they had the man advantage to boot. But now heading back in the basement for Converse, they found the opening kill, but they did end up kind of stalling. Despite they had great time management at the beginning of this round, they had once again a 5v4, yet they missed out on the bigger picture of the round. And already looks like they are getting their hands tied just on one lone Kaid who now falls back scot-free. You have to be careful how much kind of respect you give to your opponent. You don't want to be slowed down because you are so worried about Akron and what they might be doing. Twitch picking from Thunder. This has been kind of a niche operator so far this series. When it's been brought, though, it's had some substantial impact. The Twitch drones were so helpful back on the first map of Chalet in getting rid of some Electro Claws, moving in, destroying Util, and really stopping the defense from protecting their walls. It's most important. This time it'll be in the context of the hatches, even though, despite that, we still got all of the different Cade Claws in Hennessy. We'll try for one more time. Throwing impacts to dissuade Avian, it won't stop him. He'll continue with the torch. I have any damage being dealt either. Under once again with this Twitch drone. Spots on an evil eye, but wants to find the Cade Claw. Gets shot, though. Still one more in the pocket. Could potentially break that Kaid Claw to open up the hatch at an earlier pace. We only saw that hard destruction be completed with about 40 seconds left to spare. If we have the Execute being teased by Converse with about a minute left, that'll be a much better standing for them. It looks like that'll be attempted, but Arv gets the opening duel. Avian now gone. That's your Maverick. Only Habana left for that hard destruction. Now your resources, a little bit more limited, having to operate with Hib and, you know... Ice Cold, who is needing to really show his stuff. We have been pra uh, praising Ice Cold really all season long because he has been a standout player. He came to Collegiate and he started to show what he was made of. And the time is really running out for Converse. They don't have much more to think about this one. They're going to send the flashbangs through. Hennessy stunned by the Gersmont. Oh, he on ADS is at the wrong time. Opens up, but BDA traded out by the 416. That marks the second for the Jaeger. Thunder trying to creep in amidst the smoke. Ice Cold can't really go for the plant here. I'm at stepping down the hallway, has the down against the Twitch, and Locurio really needs to go. Him continuing to cover this angle is doing nothing to assist the roster. Now being peppered with bullets by the MP5. I'm at fully inside freezer on the prone angle. This attack looks like it's really not going much of anywhere. Ice Cold has the knowledge, but not the recoil control enough to stop Jetcon. And I'm at for two more. Will finally choke out the second defense on the basement as cv cannot attack it and the fact that we didn't have either one of those twitch drones find the kaid claw and destroy it it did force a complete change by converse they had to go for a laundry and also that freezer push but they just had too much utility to worry about once again akron really focusing 
on just having those anchor positions and only having to worry about, you know, a handful of locations that the offense are pushing from. It does allow for a lot to be uh, gotten away with by Akron. Three rounds here on their defense. Don't get me wrong. So far, a relatively default split just based on the round scoring. But the way we've gotten here, it still reveals a lot of issues that have been had by Converse throughout this series. And it looks like these old habits have just refused to die off. Oh, yeah, it's really rough to watch. Converse have got to fight harder, knowing that, you know, there will be no excuses after this game. They won the first two maps in such dominant fashion, languished on Clubhouse, came close to it. I remind you, it was Converse who actually got to match point first on Club. They got to 6-5, failed to close it out because they got clutched on, and then they got into overtime, and they got clutched on again. And then Villa, we won't even talk about Villa. That map was... Uh, the biggest embarrassment of the series. And so now Converse really need to figure out, okay, where can we get some more pizzazz? How are we going to get started on the attack? How can we get into these defenses that Akron have, which are so ironclad? How can we upset that? It has to be with working together, and that execute power needs to be here again. Thunder is going to be tested this map. Definitely seems counterintuitive, but maybe focusing on just one small thing at a time and then dwindling your resources away, not allowing for those one-for-ones to be so reliant for just Converse because Akron have a strong chance of winning those out. Then you can begin to diversify yourself once you have a guarantee of some level of an advantage. We've got Thunder already looking down a soft wall between meeting room and actual back of big tower. So far, Jobu and Arv have been able to hold this down pretty reliably. So. Nothing to really harp on just yet because a little bit of HP being lost, but those adrenaline surges can heal back up the players that need it most. But so far for Converse, they still have a lot to accomplish. They only have big tower control. They are getting open the addict wall, but I think they're still waiting on some soft destruction to happen, which they don't really have. So I guess the exothermic charge will be required to get that job done, but at least BDA finds somebody overextending perhaps, and they'll be met with an untimely demise. And Hennessy had, for the first few rounds, started to be kind of that mid-round anchor, that threat you always needed to worry about. Now they know one's on stage as well, but Arv able to isolate Ice Cold, and so now you've lost one of your crucial players. The talent shield comes out. Locurio caught it. A bit of a beating there, but a bit of recompense is Thunder from rear stage. They're going to put this grenade on the position, forces the mute to rotate. They have the full intel here. Just the last sort of edge of shrapnel is enough, and Locurio puts away the shield, brings out the PDW, and earns the confirmation. But now Jobu steps into that position as well, and the Maverick is out of grenades. They'll need to get him in through Avian. Oh, he gets two! Thunder on the assistance as well! Jetcon is the last one left. The meeting room site looking so close. Another nade out from Avian. They're going to go for the drone. Try to play this off the back of the intel. We know Jetcon. This is well within his capabilities. The 1v2 to put Akron in a three-round lead. Thunder finally getting his source of intel in. He searches for the last player just inside split doors. They know where Jetcon is. Converse relinquished the bomb. They're still kind of continuing to drone it out. They want to play this safe. Now they've spotted the Wamai. They know where he is. The bomb's recovered. They're going to go for a kitchen play. This is a smart call. Don't open yourself up. They're going to make the move for the plant. And Jetcon will have to soon realize this. Careful of the drone hold, though. He might be able to spot Thunder through it. He'll try to search for it. However, it's much too late. They get the bomb down and into the post plant. Versus two, like you mentioned, could be possible for Jetcon, but does he have the information to work with this? That's the big one. Maybe expect somebody right behind Big Tower, but again, not 100% sure. It's going to be a very high gamble, but both these attackers are very isolated. Jetcon could go for the swing and maybe win it out. He's caught in the crouch. Thunder down. There's the Keratos with the finisher, and now plenty of time to reload and just face Avian, but this Maverick has got a much better position in terms of HP. A few shots, that'll be it to secure this one. That's all he'll get done. Avian able to win the one-for-one. One. Converse take their second round on the offense. Much needed pickup there. They outlast, they prevent the clutch from materializing, and the meeting site does prove fruitful, but not for the defense as they might have hoped. But that's kind of the back end of the rotation. Up to dorms, we'll go play kids, and we'll see how this one does. Because Akron, I mean, their dorms, the first time they kind of, they did screw it up. They went back there, and they fixed it. 
They only dropped a single player. Converse, their coordination against the player in Attic was not enough. Their pressure through the top of tower wasn't really what you had hoped it for. And the main thing is, CV, get that opener. It spurs them on. The fact they killed Hennessy last round was so crucial. Now hopping back into kids, one major thing we have seen by them is a general lack of re, I guess, late round extensions that actually go off without a hitch. We've had a lot of solo takes happening from kids' window that did work out, but almost didn't. We had a lot of attic pushes being stalled, and we had a white play that was completely denied because nobody was aware Jetcom was still on a very heavy roam leading in from freezer stairs. Again, that slight lack of information has been an issue from time to time here for Converse. And now dealing with a very forward extension once again by Akron, that could be something to give the upper hand for the defense. But this is probably, I don't think this is the first time really that we've seen a lot of pressure being applied here. The only difference now is that there's a bit of util and some reinforcements they need to boot as well to potentially prolong that play near meeting room. Another note is I'm at actually on the mute. He's not playing that traditional roam operator he was using last time of the Oryx. Maybe deciding that they need kind of this extra utility. Let's stop the drones. Thunder's got an idea of a possible flank in motion down below. He checks for it. No defenders in that area, though. And so with the coast being clear for now, they'll return to the rest of the play here. It seems like this is going to be kind of your traditional split take as it has been the entire time so far. Grenade in. To get rid of the mute jammer and the exothermic soon after will deploy. Detonate to open up the sentry way. For Converse, still working the pressure. Jetcon, what can he do differently this time? Maybe? Think about the C4. You've also got, look at this, the Jaeger, so hyper aggressive. Playing for that open hatch. This could be all or nothing for Arf. Just feeding intel. Procure's got the drone as well. Could expect a flank to happen. There goes the Maverick Trick C4. But only about five damage on an avian. Nothing to really wow. be that concern for the Maverick. And now Jetcon falls away. It is just the Jaeger player of Arv playing so aggressive. Even extends further. He has the hatch drop if needed. But oh. there's the cross by Thunder. A nice duel to win here for Converse. A big one at that as well. And now all they've got to worry about really is just maybe this roam by Jetcon. But it's just the Vector in a dream at this point. Maybe hoping that Jetcon can do something. He's sort of chased out now as avian steps in. Looking down the hatch, peering below. Jetcon has given it up. He's going to go for the rotate. He fears that the execute is on the way. He should. The Vulcan detonating. As soon as that fire goes away, that might be the signal to start to push in here. The first swing by Hennessy is unsuccessful, and he gets taken out as he repeaks it. Ice Cold has so much of a mandate here. The flank from Jetcon, I believe he's down in the lobby, but he's not going to make it in time. Ice Cold will complete the plant. And the vert play unsuccessful. Ice Cold is down. Jobu steps forward. He does get that confirmation. But Converse are in a much better spot than they were last time. Check out the prone angle from the player just inside. IMAT shuts it down. Now things start to get a little dangerous. They know where one is. In the back of Attic as IMAT tries to step forward. And the toxic gas will once again force them back. But the Ooh. grenade Jetcon walks into it. And Jobu leaps up into the waiting arms of the Maverick. One versus two. Thunder will finish it out. Converse come into the dorm site. And they execute perfectly, closing down the first half. A well-needed 3-3. Three three. That is for sure by Converse. Something to not scoff at in the slightest. That's something I was honestly not expecting full-heartedly. Converse could not get an attacking round to save their life on Villa, but they must have had a long time to discuss what went wrong, and they were able to improve quite drastically, at least against the play style of Akron. Able to not at the least stop a lot of opening duels from being a win, but stopping a lot of that aggression that could have found so much damage. That C4 by Jekon was well read, well read pardon by the side. Of Converse, they were able to evade it almost perfectly. They forced back Jetcon. They isolated the Jaeger. And because Arv took way too long to fall back, Thunder was there to greet him with the LMG. That's an instant opening duel. And from there, it was just that constant momentum game. Now we'll have to wait and see if they're able to keep up this momentum in their second half, Reese. Yeah, they're going to have to kind of play off of that and try to use it. You mentioned we know that this map, it does get a little bit of kind of that extra down the stretch energy. You need to stay ahead of it. You need to stay kind of involved and, and not ever give up, right? 
You fight on for Oregon. It's the map that we've all played. Oregon, I mean, I think it's Eclipse, probably Clubhouse by now, as the most well understood the map, the most well played map, the one that everybody should know how to hold out on. And they're going to introduce the Warden here with Ella as well. Converse coming in with kind of a specialty lineup. Well, maybe just having that element of surprise could be what they need to at least set the tone here early in the second half, perhaps. And they've got the Rome game, too. So it is a lot to potentially waste time if Akron, for say, do not have enough intel with those Inox scanners. If they can't detect somebody near that third floor, near Big Tower, at least, that could be a good potential for a late round flank. There's no Nomad on the board. It's a lot of forward-facing information to maybe deal with this realm early on and not have it in the back of your mind to deal with later. But again, if IMAT doesn't have enough intel to play off of here early on, this could be a huge issue for them once they have to only focus, or once they can only focus, I should say, in this basement floor. Yeah, you kind of have to direct your attention forward and pay the full respect as we start off in the second half. Not going to really do the same thing they did last time, where for so long, you know, they dealt with that Cade Claw. They had to kind of get past that. This time, you don't got the reach denial. Things are fairly quick. You shouldn't have to fall back on it. It, it, it is kind of strange to me that Hennessy would bring in the Therm rather than, you know, maybe something like the Hibana. I mean, I, I would generally think for the basement, you're always going to want the Hib. But Hennessy, I mean, I've seen great things from him today on the Thermite alone. Be just having the. Comfort, I guess, of the 5.56. Five, Definitely a good gun to deal damage with, but besides that, it does seem a bit odd to not want the Habana, maybe for the fast detonation time, perhaps, but I guess we'll never know. 70 seconds left here. Converse, all five players alive, and I think the Rome game could still be afoot, too, in the back of Big Tower. So, again, the element of surprise, it's there in the final minute. Got that power to kind of come in. Oh, but Arv, look at how much health he's just lost. And Locurio has the hose, as it's known. The Scorpion, the ability to just lay down targets. Such a quick fire rate, this weapon. It's got a mighty recoil. Converse, I think they might have just called for a rotation. The pressure they were working on the front take just really wasn't enough. It wasn't getting them where they needed to be. But you've got Ice Cold working on the Lurk. I mean, look at how close Bedfellows are, the Maverick and the Jaeger. Definitely doesn't seem like a good place here. Oh, and Jobu has no idea as well. Of where Ice Cold's playing at for the moment here. Avian gets the first of many. Hennessy dropped two for the shotgun player. He gets even more aggressive. BDA finds one into Arv. Now only a five on one. Avian scores a third. It's just IMAT left in the middle of laundry room with not much left to spare. So low on HP. Thunder cleans him up and Converse take a flawless round in their first second half. Yeah, I mean, wow. That is just a total turnaround. Getting those three attack rounds is so big for you. Gives you that extra energy, allows you to come in, and now you've got one. You're starting to build up your defensive repertoire as well. Things work on the basement. We'll go to kids' dorms. We'll see how that one will work. We'll see if Akron have the power to come through. They kind of got slowed down there, and, and it does take me back a little bit to bank if you can... Think all the way back to when we were on bank. We had that bottom floor execute where Converse were thinking about trying to go for server pressure. Something spooked them, and they had to rotate. They tried to go down in the vault, and they just got slaughtered. Pretty much the same thing happening there, but this time it's Akron forced into kind of that shaky rotation. They go the other way. It doesn't work out. They get trapped up by Converse, and the Valkyries have the first one there on the defense. We'll go to Dorms, and BDA will introduce an operator. We have talked a little bit about it. It's the Thorn bringing that deployable. The only um, operator who really has kind of the ability to introduce a good medium-range gun, a trap, a deployable shield and a, a mobile defender, really. Same concept as Alibi, really. Just having a good gun, a shield, and then something that can gather information. I guess in this case, not just gathering intel, but maybe getting a kill. That is something nice to have. And it definitely has suited that, I guess, the more of the intel-based playstyle because the Razor Blooms are almost guaranteed information where you don't always shoot those Prisma devices on the Alibi, and sometimes it's not a full-fledged requirement here. But for Akron... They're going to require at least a couple of attacking round wins because the default was not set here in the first half. It was 3-3, three to three, so depending on how weak Akron are in this second half, that could lead to disaster and maybe not that three-map win storyline that we had begun to brew up after we saw the comeback set not only in Clubhouse but also Villa. But 
I mean, there is still a lot of room for change and also a lot of room needed to get this hard destruction down too. Both the Maverick and Thermite have a lot to work up for here in these next couple moments. Even though Converse are leading right now here on Oregon, you ought to be careful not to let those back-to-back -back map victories, the secured clutch up in overtime, and the dominant securing a Villa turn to ashes in your mouth. You have to still kind of play and ride high. Locurio almost taking a few shots from that player over towards the garage. R will fall off, not continuing to apply that pressure. Defense still kind of speculative right now. Akron haven't really devoted much to any specific take. And finally, after a minute and a half, I'll go ahead and open up the main wall. Thunder is active inside Attic. Locurio below. You ought to wonder what's going to happen between him and the other SAS operator here. Nades being thrown. Trying to move some util before it becomes that problematic here for Akron. Still having Locurio on the roam, actually. I'm not too sure if that's any position well known by Akron here. That could be a huge flank to once again just be that element of surprise. We saw how effective that was earlier for Converse. Let's see if it works out for them here in round number eight. Got the drone, got the intel. What is going on for the Wamai? He's just sort of raced towards this player. Thunder somehow kills Hennessy. Things are completely turning on their head. The bomb is down in an awkward spot. And Avian has, he's come all the way through the walk-in closet and he guns down Arv at such a massive distance. Things are turning so sour right now. Ice Cold has one on the Jobu. And Converse are about to come onto the threshold of match point unless I'm at and Jetcon. That so long tenured entry duo can come in with their dual LMGs and try to upset things here. Jetcon rounds the corner. BDA a little slow to get in here. Jetcon doesn't even know. There's a defender in the back of Kid's dorms. And so IMAT is left solo with 20 seconds. He's got defenders peeking him near every direction. And now the thorn slinks down to the bottom of the stairs. IMAT's got the bomb, but the shotgun reaches out to the distance and it'll be good for the dorms win. And you don't think that it's got that good a range, but Avian has most certainly believed in it tonight and also the heads-up <laughs> play by the smoke to go for the aggressive swing inside a master. He stopped a full-fledged plant execute from happening, and Akron were scrambling to find some sort of redemption arc there, but they were completely slapped away from it by Converse, and they now not only have a slight advantage moving the second half, but twofold had they been able to stop Akron from getting really any leeway in those final 40 seconds, and now... Things are looking phenomenal here for the Valkyries. I mean, the, the way that they have changed their play style has been so fantastic. And of course, we know $5,000 is on the line. You win here, you're in the money. Both of these two rosters will get significant prizing. And of course, we know, fellow, you know, this match, as much as it's exciting and as much as we're, you know, counting on this as such a big high point in the season... We know that the national finals, which is going to be an event entirely unique and of its own, you know, uh, pretty much a first national competition between, as I mentioned earlier, schools at the collegiate level, schools playing at the JUCO junior college level, all different competitions in the ecosystem coming together to bring us the best of the best for $20,000. And that'll be later down the line. Of course, before that, we've got the wild card tournament for the last rosters trying to earn their qualification through. And we really don't have to wait too long for that. We're here on Tuesday. Wild card starts on Friday. Yep, so not that much of a of a long await for it, like you had mentioned. So we can get right into the action there pretty much following the, uh, the late end of this week, I suppose. But speaking of action, looks like Akron already want to dive in head first to it. Go for maybe even not just a full-fledged dive, maybe a cannonball and being correct on that call. There's a drop by BDA. I believe he's now in the middle of meeting room, having backup by Thunder. We're seeing more of a split take here for Akron, which is not bad on paper, but it does leave a lot to be desired from for most teams, especially if you cannot have those cutoff angles established and if you still have to worry about that top floor. That could be something to maybe allow Converse to get the upper hand once again, but IMAD is on the Nomad, so you've got the air jabs for your flank watch, and you've got somebody in Z. So currently, it's not a problem for Akron. Everything is covered. They're trying to play this style where they don't allow any sort of moments of weakness. A little scuffle there, kind of a scrum between Avian and Arv through this security doorway. Things are becoming tense for Akron. What are they going to do to try to push forward here? You've got Jetcon kind of wrapping around on the coverage. 
Think of maybe he's going to go up towards the top of the stairs. <laughs> Got the Jaeger up there. Who knows what he's doing? Looking down through the vert, seeing if maybe he'll spot a player below. But the plant's coming down from Hennessy. The execute is upon us. BDA can't do a thing. Converse are taken by complete surprise. Lokirio gets in. He might have stopped the planter. Arv does not need to take this fight. He needs to get out. You're already in a man disadvantage. And Jetcon drops down Avian. I'm at taking damage. But there goes Ice Cold. The plant is here. And Lokirio trying to play for this. The long haul. Look at that perfect crossfire. Thunder in the one on three. Doesn't have nearly enough of a chance. With time already running slim. Acro. They look languishing, but they come in and they get the bomb down, and that's the end game here. It's all's well that ends well, and IMAP gets the final long shot kill to mark it as an attacker victory much cleaner than when Converse went to this tertiary site. And besides Arv, we saw little to no overextension at all by Akron. They just played in a couple of key areas and just held their long angles. They just basically had the better weapon read a boot for long range. They, that's all they played for, especially having that plant go down. If we were to see Locurio a smidge faster, that could have been a very different story. Arv would have had to recover the case, go for the plant, and there still would have been great denial by the defense. But because it was just a small amount of timing, that was dropped away from by Converse. They're not going to have match and series point this early. They're going to have to contend for a couple more rounds, both in laundry and most likely kids, since they didn't do a good job of holding that tertiary bomb site. Really just shock and awe there from Akron, and it's successful. That's the problem that you run, the risk of playing that objective. You know, it's such an isolating thing. One of the best plant locations in the game where your teammates can be fully supported of you. And even though Converse dropped two men, it was too late. I think he probably had to have some utility, probably waiting for that. It just wasn't there. And uh, it'll be a lesson learned for the next time we see Converse defend that objective. It's a lesson every team has learned. You get rushed by Akron, you're going to change. You're going to change your strategy. So far for Converse, no real general strat change. They've got the Ella once again by Lokirio. They could still have someone play aggressively near big tower and yeah that will be the call made by converse once again and across the ways for akron they don't have a thermite and as he's now in the habana so we now have to question the role of the fbi operator here we've got just the regular japanese one here to go for the hatch play along with jobu here to back up on the maverick so all is well starting out on round number 10 but again if we do not have these just random i wouldn't even say rat plays because they're fairly normal attempts by converse we just don't have these over aggressive positions dealt with at a fairly decent time frame this could be lights out for akron they would have to look down match point once again and they would have to at the very least guarantee overtime on a half that just isn't looking that favorable for them simply based off of what position they're on in terms of their attacks yeah uh, we come back to the conversation of how much value converse having gone three three on their defenses or excuse me on their offenses adds because you know you have that even playing field you come into the second half, and it's really just about Converse showing us that they can play better on the defense. And Akron's offense has been kind of lackluster so far. You know, they chose to begin on the defense, so that's up to them. They couldn't perform up to snuff. They couldn't take that advantaged first side. And so they have to kind of pick up some of the extra slack that they now face in the second. Last time Akron tried to come into this bomb site, it was such a tussle. So much back and forth, so much utility being exchanged, and ultimately, I think, leaving Converse up in the late game, not able to properly put those grenades on the positions is what cost them the, lo the loss. Still having tons of util, though. Six grenades in total. This should not be a difficult task as long as the coordination and at least the timing slash comms are there. There's Imet with the first of many kills, hopefully, for Akron. Now removing that key place near closet as well. No one can safely rotate from that position. Lokir is getting aggressive. Has some information. Beautiful headshot. Jetcom will fall. There's at least the equal trade, but still. So much more to worry about. The Toxic Smokes as well now being deployed by Avian. Two more in pocket. Thunder goes for a kill and gets it. Jobu finished off. There goes the pistol as well for the Wamai. Now leaving a two versus four with Akron going on a reattempt over into Freezer, giving up laundry pressure. Not sure if this is really the best call, but what do you have left to try to call? Hennessy is in meeting. His teammate completely isolated, not even close by. This one is going to be so tough. 20 to go. Lose this. Converse back on match point, back on the opportunity to close out the championship title. 
Hennessy starting to step forward. He's going to have to take the damage. IMAT goes down in a trade situation there. Hennessy has seized forward, and he's going to have to try the plant, but he can't. He shotgun killed from the backside from Avian inside a freezer. And it is finally Converse who will move on to match points. One more round. They've got a little room to breathe as well. It is not six to five, just six to four. They can play here on kids, maybe even twice in a row. If they want to get frisky, potentially go dining room. But it looks like they will just try to stick this top floor site and hope they have a good early game like what we saw from them in the past, potentially. We had Avian go big with the shotgun. A lot of one-for-one -one kills that just favored the man. And a lockdown case next to Closet, and it just completely changed how Akron wanted to dissect that round. If we once again just have the exact same mistakes made and we don't have a lot of care being taken towards dealing with that smoke player, this could be lights out for Akron despite their attempts on both map three and four to bring us the full distance. And uh, we've seen Converse in this position before as well. I mentioned on club, they were the first team to get on a match point and there were, I'm certain, murmurings of, you know, the 3-0 victory for Converse. That would have been shocking, but... This is the match I think that these two rosters deserved. Such a classic scuffle between two powerhouses, the longtime giant in Varsity Esports of Akron. You know, the team that's got championship titles to fill up three trophy cases. And Converse, the new program, who is just getting started on the scene, but is already the crown champions of CR6 for Stage 1 and Stage 2 and are looking to add, of course, a face-it victory into that. And I, and I wanted to add on to this as well. Akron are the reigning champions of R6CC from the initial 2021 season, and they're looking to do so again here to add on to a second. It, it would be unprecedented, really, for Akron. It would cement them, you know, the official collegiate competition, the back-to-back -back winners. Still need two more rounds, though, to at least guarantee overtime. They've gone such a long way, but... They are not completely over and done with just yet. Gathering tons of intel, going for some Rotero drones play to maybe break a bit of utility or at least force away Avian from his current position. But now it's back to regular recon here for Akron as they are going for a rather separate put. Got Lokiro getting aggressive as well. Looks like Jetcon does detect him. Going to go for the spray, but Lokiro is just going to fall back. He does not want to risk his life on a round that is so valuable for his team. Akron, though, still not dissuaded about trying to break through this U-Till eventually to be successful. The position in Bolo has been completely cleared out, and now they can try to get this back wall opened up once they get rid of the Mute Jammer. That has still not been accomplished yet for Arbs. They'll have to relocate, go for the nade play underneath, and that can at least give one huge opening for Akron. They need something to let them in here. Grenade is good. Hennessy should have no trouble quickly moving forward. Thunder will replace the Electro Claw, though. So they will have to nade this again. Oh, that was such a risky thing for Thunder to do. Why would you try to challenge the angle? You know that you've got Lokirio below, and you're thankful that he trades you out, but that was needless for Thunder to try to peek there. Did not need to build any kind of advantage. Lokirio on the run out. He tries to chase this player from the Repel, and he should get pinched from stage. He runs right into IMAT. Such a callous decision for Thunder and Lokirio to cost them both their lives. Good reposition, though, by IMAT. Guarantees the advantage here. Now you can safely work your way in through Attic. Go for the default take, but I'm not too sure if anyone's out on big window, so this could be another fatal funnel. IMAT is playing underneath, though. You could walk up white stairs with Terror Drone to now break the barbed wire. Everything is setting up. It's the perfect storm scenario for Akron. They just need to win their gunfights. And as he has just lost his life to the toxic canister, at least DVNO'd in the meanwhile. Arv, oh, one, another shutdown from IMAT. It's a one versus four. Ice Cold can't do it. Akron will fight on for another round. They will push us to the edge of regulation. Such a good play there to close down the round by the Flores. As Akron, all they needed to do was just push Converse to the edge and eventually send them off the depths the final round. Really forced their hand last round, Reese, where it was a lot of overextensions occurring by Converse. They did have almost a chance to redeem themselves. It was equalized 4-4 four to four after we had the Kaid overextend against Jetcon, but then it was too much intel being gathered. IMAT was there, right place, right time, having to worry about just only a sprinting mute, could not get the gun up in time. That's a freebie. 
And then it was just the perfect positions held by Akron. Again, Attic, they had Master. They were able to revive the Thermite, still go for the plant. Have Iamat able to force out Avian because he had to worry about both the double wall breach and also White. Not even to mention Deer Doorway as well because that was still being pushed in by Akron as well. Really every position that Avian was trying to deny or at least was in the position of just uh, put him in a do or die. Had to at least kill one of those few players, but it was not meant to be. And like you mentioned, Another chance for Akron, but at the very least, get overtime. It's possible. I think we're all hoping for overtime. Maybe not the Converse members who have gone really late into the night. Talk about being tired last time in Collegiate R6. From the get-go, you're probably exhausted after the distance that we've gone. I'm at been a menace so far. We kind of didn't get what we... Expected from him on some of the earlier maps where Converse had dispatched him and shut down his kind of self-activating style, self-enabling. He's 15 and 8 right now. Look at the Converse side. It's a, it's a little closer spread. You don't quite have as many people lagging behind. You've got everybody kind of doing their jobs, but ice cold. Again, we will point to him as a player that we will need to see be so effective and look, there are so many opportunities right now to make a highlight play to put yourself in the history books. Yeah, Locurio on bank. Get three kills on the roam here for the mute play. But so far, hasn't been really make or break. Just a couple of opening kills here and there, being just a solid teammate for now, which is more than you could ask for. But this could be a good moment to prove himself once again. And a great way to at least guarantee that 5VX favor in Converse. We've got IMAT gathering intel. There's Kai Claws on the wall. I'll have to get aggressive. And oh. there it is. Locurio, the opening pick at the perfect time. Ash is gone. And now Akron once again begin to scramble as they have to worry about someone in the basement. It's not a good feeling to be in to know that you've got somebody that's lurking. You've got BDA far off by Small Tower as well. Converse, they were kind of aggressive with how they played last time. And though you could call that aggressive... All it does is really start you off well. And Locurio's roam, as you highlighted, so effective in that one round on bank. Proving to be substantial in this as well. Art of having difficulty finding the Electro Claws, and he's worried that if he continues to pay too much attention looking up through the floors, the hole in the floor, he might lose out on an opportunity. You see the Mavericks start to kind of perk up, worrying about the potential for the flank. Look at that Z-Ping. They know this is happening right now. Locurio does too. They're only 60 seconds. Still. Converse, a dominating position right now. No one's pushed out Thunder from White. It's a very slow and overall just a almost lackadaisical position here for Akron, but they need to pick up the pace. They need to speed into action. Locurio, once again, another flank. No one's on the drone watching for him. This could be a big moment, another time for the mute, oh, but no. shoots a little too early, but do they hear him? Not too sure about that. The sledge most certainly does. Arv equalizes, but now he's met with a smoke canister, and now they most likely have to only push in through the double wall and hope that there isn't another enough to stop that plant from happening. The championship is on the line. If Akron can't get past the wall of utility, Jetcon trying to force Ice Cold into the depths here. Thunder is down on top white. And Mark's a second. Hennessy is in for the plant. Arf tried to go a little too deep, though. He's DBNO'd. But in the meanwhile, Jobu Avian on the activity. Jetcon shuts down one and two. Despite the early death of IMAT, Akron are able to persevere, respond, recuperate, and ultimately recover as they will push us into overtime. It was Locario to set the tone to make it look like a win in regulation. He jumped the gun, though. Got two ahead of himself. Ants in the pants. And it costed him a refrag there by Arv. And not only was it a singular kill, it was several by Arv and Jetcon as well to bring that back and force a potential plus 15 round setup here between both Akron and Converse. We've seen 14 in total. Overtime has occurred on Clubhouse. We can most definitely see an even greater distance happen here on Oregon. And the defender side here for Converse, I feel like overall they've done better on their attacks, funny enough. It's been more of a, of a better position here for Akron when they were defending as well. So maybe these sides could really favor the opposers perhaps here. So a lot to be left in question here despite having so many notes to discuss throughout these past 12 rounds. Well, for Akron, you'll remember the other overtime we've had. It was Converse who prompted the end of regulation, who first got to match point, but failed to close it out there. Same situation here. But on that clubhouse, Akron, their only two rounds in overtime that they needed were played out really well, and Converse opened themselves up to some pretty serious mistakes. They did not really play at their best. 
and it cost them ultimately they lost that map they couldn't close it out there and we got to see the horrific thing that was villa but now we've gotten into a joyous very back and forth oregon with a conclusion as i mentioned the first grand finals to get that full five to really test the metal to show us what these players are made of ultimately that's what we're here to do now converse looking again to maybe have a choke on their hands would definitely be a very somber note to end off on. You've got the wild card to work with, but still would be nice to make sure Akron cannot get the two-timer here for the grand finals for our sixth collegiate championship, but still undetermined. Only the first minute has gone through. Akron still doing their due diligence, but Lokirio wins a big one. I'm at gone, your main fragger besides Jetcon here on the side of Akron, and that is a huge sigh of relief moving in these next two minutes. I'm at silent in these last two rounds. He's tried to get impact. He's tried to do what we know he can. But he's forced Jetcon to fill his shoes. And it's a really uncomfortable spot. On the dorm site, you can make do. Akron did make do. On the bottom floor, it's so challenging. We talk about Oregon as being momentum driven. The basement site is the biggest example of that. Losing this first casualty can become so difficult to recover from. NCSU... One of the teams already eliminated or one of the best teams at doing that. Arv sends it in through Psycho for two. He might look for a third as well. He's got that player over my elbow. Ice Cold and Thunder both put out. And Locurio now he's got that hose to try to spray down. He barely makes it back inside E-Box. A close contest here. Locurio turns his back. Still got gun up though, but he's killed by Arv. What a big round for the Flores. Still looking for more. Oh, but he gets down full blind. Avian doesn't know it just yet. Here comes the reconnaissance by Jetcon. BDA with the double swing, though. Two versus one. Looks for another, but can't get it. Jetcon, a big play to have between both elbow and waltzing in through supply. And now Akron take the lead. One more round, and they'll be crowned the victors for a second year now. Same situation that we just saw. The very last round of regulation, number 12, IMAT jumps in and gets himself killed. But somehow, it's not even Jetcon who fills it, shoot. It's Arv. We've seen Arv. We know what Arv can do. But he proves it to us there, and he just absolutely walks in like he owns the place. Akron, the first team to reach OT match point. They need one more. Converse, the hardest round probably of this entire series, will be to force it through this one. On the Akron basement defense, Converse have been pretty steady on their attack so far. You draw back to the first half, though, and the basement site was the one that eluded Converse. Even though they were able to find a couple kills here and there, it was the same issue we had a lot on Villa, the self-stall and lack of general direction by converse they were going for the default stuff but had too much on their plate to handle at the same time not to mention they didn't even find the opening win every single time we had a duel out ice cold got the first one around number one and then it was also our but to mention as well it was a lot of refrags too even when converse had that substantial lead it was just crossfire style by akron and really no uh, no proper pressure that was given by Converse in a lot of these positions. So if we have them fall flat, then there is going to be no chance of redemption against Akron. They beat them in CR6, and now they're looking to maybe beat them here for the grand finals for the R6 Collegiate Championship. Converse have to summon up a little bit more. Machismo try to get their style back. Try to get right with what they know they can do. Jetcon is really lurking here. A C4 toss, it goes towards Locurio, and he is careful to get out. I don't think the explosive would have reached him anyway, but Locurio just kind of playing it safe there. And Jet is really trying to reach out and play that very loose style. Get in the faces of the attackers, waste their time, force them to come at this slowly, and he gets it against Locurio! The player who was led in those rounds, who was the one to shut down and shutter, I'm at. He was the first to go down. Barely alive, but that's all you're gonna need. 
no nitro unless already pre-placed in some other position and still able to hold those long angles again that was something that was such a struggle for converse was able to slow down and maybe even just dwindle away at some of those locations akron were fighting for throughout the entire execution that was happening by converse now down a player and still having to worry about the e-box hatch out of all places it's definitely building up a very bad position for them but at least thunder finds something amidst all the rubble arv will go down and that at least brings us in an equal position but still the timer it's going to be a huge factor in these next 20 seconds especially after we see the great rotation happening by akron no longer holding an e-box and now having a much deeper presence inside a supply room so kind of hovering around that hatch converse you can really sense the hesitancy here they know how important this next kill this next 60 seconds will be it could define their contribution to the playoffs they can't fail this is a no fail situation here no shield in e-box right now i think they were maybe trying to rotate that nope they're going to close it off they're not going to extend here they're going to lock themselves away and hope that maybe if they don't allow that extra area of pressure It'll force Converse to slow down. They've got the Habana, though. Ice Cold could try to use that to create his main entry point. I think somebody just dropped down into E-Box, though. Pillar control has been had by Converse. The nade goes awry. It bounces off the top of the wall. That is not a mistake you can allow to happen. Jobu still waiting around the other side of the corner here. And Ice Cold, he can't move forward with the bomb. They've got another Toxic Canister left, and there's 17 seconds. I think the Habana is probably going to have to go deep. Again, she will try for the plant. The Gas Canister goes. Ice Cold is going to decide to stick it he's gonna have enough health to complete it and had he doesn't he doesn't no. get on the plant he doesn't complete it in time converse have fallen apart they're forced to go deep jetcon flattened on the rotation and i'm at left no. and he's killed by bda converse will fight for one more round the maverick able to recover the case and the coverage it was fantastic the one time they had to get aggressive it simply worked against akron they bled too much there in the final few moments and now we get to see all 15 rounds on the fifth and final map converse get to go back on the defense a lot for laundry and supply but man almost the smoke play by jobu could have been enough to actually guarantee an eight to six but somehow we have Converse be able to throw in another round of the ringer. Man, what a series to play here, Reese. My God, who would have expected this one after what we saw so recently between these two rosters? The storylines are clear here, fellow. Akron going for the Triple Crown. Converse looking to redeem themselves after they just lost out CR6 for Stage 3. They were trying to complete it with a back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Akron are, it's pretty much the same thing. Converse, we already saw them lose out on the back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. They couldn't complete the Triple Crown in CR6 alone. And now they're trying to make up for that by winning here in Face It. And, you know, there's still that, again, that old tale of Converse being the new kid on the block. Though they've had so much time and they've used their time well to practice and to harden their roster. They brought in veterans and they've made a team with an impressive level of chemistry. And for quite a while, Reese, the team of Congress, they've looked like a dark horse, someone who you would think has good potential, but maybe not able to fully finish out. Well, in season seven, they won almost all three of the stages, like we mentioned earlier, and now they've got a chance of maybe beating Akron again, having revenge potentially served out here on Oregon, but still a lot to be left up to here. Lion scan gets popped early by IMAT. Tons of info being gathered. This time, Akron, they want to deal with this elbow pressure head-on. They don't want to go for the original play of working their way in through freezer and laundry. They want to go for more of a back tower push, and that can maybe give away a lot of early map pressure, but not able to have the Rotero drones in a position to break the actual shield. Allows Avian to sit here for a little while longer, but Jetcon actually oh! charges in. Avian wins the fight, but he has to give a V-Box. A good sacrifice made by both teams. It looks like Avian will double down and maybe try to hold on here for a little while longer. What a pick. That one really gets your engine running for Converse right now in this basement. Avian is ready for another Flores drone. He'll shoot it. He'll get rid of it. But there is only this one member working this construction pressure right now. There are three attackers left unaccounted for who are on the other side of the map. So we're trying to focus in and steady up and get ready for what else they might be able to do here. And what we've seen tonight is one of the classic displays of Oregon as a team map. And we have seen these both rosters play together as a unit. Almost seems like Akron need the win at this point to prove something against Converse. But a three versus five. 
Looks very challenging for them. Final line scanner of round 15 gets popped, but to no avail. No intel to be gathered up. That's something you desperately need when you have to work for these picks. Converse, look at their positioning. They're in rat angles. They're looking to not get spotted here, yet they still have the passivity as a full-fledged commitment. They do not want to be giving up all that much against Akron because they know, even in the three versus five, they have a fighting chance to lose this. One thing is a conversation of utility, despite Akron in the disadvantage. CV only have one Toxic Babe for 50 seconds, and they don't have a Nitro. If Akron try to go for the plant here, that might be ultimately what avails them the victory. EDA has the coverage. This bulletproof camera is going to make things so challenging. It's starting to feel like this round is slipping away with no real chance here. And you've got that SMG. You've got Ice Cold coming into this round. He needed to have his impact, and he does. Joe Boo waiting the new player. The one who needs to really show his medal in this moment. The defender hiding in the distance. The cover is there. Converse are just not peeking. They're not opening themselves up to the angle. And Hennessy might be the clutch master, but he's down by Thunder. And Locario will finish it off. It's a flawless round. The Valkyries have done it. The new kids on the block are the champions of our 6 CC for 2022. It looks like the second dance of the night. We'll have a different tune and a different beat. This time, Converse win in the best of five, and it won't be a blowout. Instead, it'll be a battle to remember for the ages, a full five mapper, a full 15 rounder, and everything all came down to that single defensive setup. In laundry and supply, everything working out for Converse, and they take that victory in strides, Reese. The way that Avian played there, it just shows you the contributions that he can make the roster that they've built in Spartanburg is such a rock-solid competitor. And Avian, the six invitational attendee, being at the biggest event in Rainbow Six Siege, now he's won what, up until the Unified Collegiate Championship, is the biggest event in the collegiate ecosystem. He can crown himself a champion. But, of course, the UCC, the Wild Card Tournament, all of that good stuff we have left in the year is on the horizon. And both of these rosters are looking forward to it. It's a good day to be a fan of the Valkyries. And now moving into the, the final, the Nationals as well, that is going to lead to a lot of, of theory crafting, really, because both Akron and Converse, they've already qualified for that. And now we've had two different storylines where Converse have lost I wouldn't want to say miserably, but they def definitely did not put up a good fight in CR6. But today, on Oregon as well, a map that Akron have been known to be so strong on, they just inch out that victory. Now it leads to a lot of questions as to who you've got rooting for moving forward after today. Yeah, and it's an important question to discuss as well. You know, if, if you're a fan of the Zips or if you're a fan of the Valkyries or if you're rooting for the Wolfpack or the Boilermakers or the Chargers... There are so many rosters that you can put yourself behind, and each one of those has got an equal chance of making it through. Yeah, I, I mean, that was something that we probably did not expect going into this. I mean, it was almost verbatim the exact same style of what we had a few days ago, and in, in that position, we had Akron just completely just, I guess, team diff. Converse and and then the other thing happened. I mean, we had a two and zero. Oh. There were a, a moment of maybe overconfidence by Converse there on that series where they got ahead of themselves. They weren't doing the right basics. They just weren't playing good siege. Akron, you know, they got the one up on them a couple of times. And then we had Oregon where it was really no one is that decisive victor and a lot of, of different adaptations. People were trying new and inventive things. We saw the late rotates being almost spot on a lot of times. We saw the aggression to try to go for those one-for-ones, make or break plays happening left, right, and center. Man, I I'm hoping we see that exact same kind of series setups as we do uh, moving into the, into the national sets as well because, man, that was a, that was a series to remember. And we're going to move into our interview now. We've got a representative of the Valkyries to come on the horn and talk to us about all that happened today. And, of course, look at Ice Cold. Let's get the hot dog. Fellow, I'll let you take the lead here and discuss what we just saw. Well, might as well discuss the, the big elephant in the room. Uh, and, no, it's not the hot dog, although very good. I, li I like to see it here today, Ice Cold. The fact that you are, correct me if I'm wrong, you're not going to be – 
in the roster for very much longer, I believe. This semester is your final one, correct? Or I might have some secrets. I can't announce anything, but, uh, you know, I think we're going to stay as a team at Converse. All right. Well, I guess this will not be the, the final dance is what we had expected, but, you know, going into that potential thought process for a lot of your players until now, I mean, did that really, you know, light a spark potentially to, to let this fire of a victory happen here tonight? Oh, yeah. I mean, going into it, you know, we were confident, we kind of fell back a little bit, but we came back, proud of the boys. Um, you know, we had some iffy plays that we, you know, yelled at, but, I mean, in the end, we clutched up, we won, and I'm very proud of all of us. Fair enough, Reese. Well, I have to I have to ask you about this because you when you said it to me in DMs on Twitter, it kind of caught me off guard. You, you said coming into the CR6 finals that you were tired. What, what what made you guys so tired in that match? I mean, you know, just the whole entire um, if you're if we're talking about the um, the CR6 one uh, with Loki's PC crashing, I mean, it kind of just chalked our mail a little bit. Um, and going into this, we knew we had it. Uh, we didn't have to face foes though. And I think that was the main thing. But, you know, we ended up taking it and glad we won, man. Oh, my gosh. We should have had it so much earlier. But, hey, we'll take the dub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as much as it was a long one, we got a classic game on our hands. This is one of the best matches that I've ever witnessed. And there's there's something special, really, about collegiate season as well for the way that you guys have played. Um, I, I wanted to ask you, now R6CC out of the way, we're looking towards the Unified Collegiate Championship, you know, a once-in-a-lifetime, very unique type of event. What are your words? What are you thinking about? What's the consensus? We're going to come into it strong. We're going to prepare very hard, and we're going to win all the way through. That's what's going to happen. We're going to kill it out there. Yeah, it sounds like that's kind of what it means to be a Valkyrie. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, Ice Cold, I'm so glad you got to come with us. You got the hot dog outfit on. I was not expecting that, but uh, it's another <laughs> victory added to the Valkyries trophy cabinet, which is growing large in what has been less than a year in college siege. We'll let you go. We'll let you go celebrate to your team. If there's any shout outs you'd like to give, now's your chance. Oh, man. Well, I mean, first of all, obviously can't thank my team enough because, you know, I suck. And I mean, Oregon, I didn't do that well, but, you know, the hard reach roll. Uh, we really went through it. Um, I also like to thank, you know, my, my mom, my dad, my brother. Uh, even though it's been a little rough lately, and we're going to stick through it. And, you know, I'm very proud of all of us. And thank you to the, the Converse Esports, uh, our coach, Sheldon, well, our Esports coach, and everyone around there for supporting us constantly. And we're going to bring a lot more home next year. All right. Well, congratulations on the victory today. You played phenomenal, even if Oregon was a little bit of a tough one. I'll let you go celebrate with the rest of your squad, and we are very well looking forward to seeing how you play in the UCC. Goodbye. Thank you. All right. Well, fellow, that wraps our interview, and that wraps our night, but that does not conclude the programming that we've got for this year. There's something special happening starting this Friday. Yeah, and I think uh, I'm going to be there commentating it. We have got the uh, the Nationals here to discuss about in the upcoming future. But uh, for now, we'll have to end off for just a little while. We'll be back uh, much faster than what we had probably anticipated. Shoutouts to uh, everyone in the background, of course, Tangling It Down, running production, Nova, observing with us throughout the whole night, myself and you as well here uh, commentating here, Reese, and uh, as well off chat here to stick around despite uh, the league happening for a good chunk of the night until uh, towards the very, the very late parts of it. But with all that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your night and to see you all again very, very soon for the Nationals event.